What's up, everybody? Death Metal Podcast on a Saturday night again. So this is our um, this is our hundred and one hundred and first episode. Just to throw that out there. Last week uh, we had a, a, our hundredth episode with uh, Jill from Funerous. So tonight, though, is going to be um, this is going to be an episode dedicated towards uh, like I don't want to say anti top twenty list, but basically like around this time of year and end of every year. The last so many years with social media and, you know, people want to share. These were my top 20 releases. These were my top 100 releases. 100 releases in one year that you decided that those were the tops. Which is cool. I mean, that means you're a huge music fan if you have top 20, top 100. You're probably buying from the record labels. You're supporting directly to the bands. You're listening. You really got your ear tuned on because you're talking about your tops, which I respect. But let's be honest. Over the years, you know, the whole like top 20 thing and album of the year shit, my opinion, it gets a little overrated. You know, I mean, there's a lot of there's demos, there's EPs. There's record labels that get left off the list because basically they don't have as good distribution as others, but they put out more solid records than some of the ones you see on those lists. Also, those lists are put out by commercial entities, so you can't trust everything you see out there. So tonight, what I wanted to do, and I wanted to do this with the fans, is basically have a show just about the record labels of the year, and that way... Uh, those record labels a lot of times are left off the top 20 and top 100 list they're completely forgotten and occasionally certain lists do have it at the bottom and then other times they don't have it on there at all so you really don't you know what the record is but you don't know who put it out and the thing is with record labels record labels are the ones that made you hear that record to begin with so basically without that record label there wouldn't be that release There wouldn't be that entry on the top 100 or 200 or whatever you put out there. There wouldn't be that top 10 of the year thing, album of the year. It would just be, you know, I mean, I mean, I know there's digital media streaming and all that, but I even notice on there, sometimes it doesn't show the record label name. It'll say distro kit or some kind of crazy stuff like that. So I felt like we should do a show dedicated purely towards the fans and people who listen to music and their favorite record labels. So I've slowly invited certain guests on, and then, I, you know, everybody, this is not a contest. I'm gonna throw that out there first too. This is not a contest to say, this is the best, this is the best label, whatever. This is really about spreading information, and that's what Death Metal Podcast is all about. And I think anyone that watches this on the norm knows that that's what it's all about. So also, Everybody that tunes in every week, appreciate you. Teddy Tommy, Leslia in Paraguay, appreciate you. What's up, Andre from Germany? No Balone, uh, Francisco uh, Vengas, appreciate you, man. I always see you here. Zulima or Zulema, always big support. What's up, Sherry Screams, John Lincoln, Stink Missile. Five Shinobi. You guys are already calling out the names. Uh, uh, Nevermore Rules. Seed Murder. Who else did we forget here? Sorry. Evan Williams. Wade Capode. Appreciate you. Joker NYC. Brian Sakula. So yeah, tonight, again, this is going to be... This is going to be an episode more about guests and talking. And talking about record labels, basically. So I'm not going to get too dramatic playing music on here. Because YouTube also is like kind of stifling all our streams between myself, Francisco, The Witching Hour. You know, they, they don't, bands are copywritten. So like playing their music on these shows, you know, it sometimes it, it, it kills the entire show. But I want to, you know, open discussion between, you know, uh, what's up, brother? I want to open discussion between like the fans in the chat and then whoever comes on here and then we just talk about record labels and I'm on here to learn basically what's going on Frazier how's it going man so yeah 
Well, promotion, that's, and this is just to promote, yeah, this is to promote labels and small labels and talk about record labels and what they do for the scene. And, you know, album of the year is cool, trust me, you know, but like, it's getting a little played out over time, in my opinion. So I think there's a lot of cool small record labels and big record labels that put out a lot of good releases. But I think that basically the show's premise is about showing, you know, what's your rec what's your favorite record label you know like you would know too because you would basically see a stack of their stuff at your house you know or hypothetically on spotify or something you realize oh shit i listen to nuclear blast stuff constantly so or i buy from the uh, nuclear blast euro uh catalog or something you know so i mean you know you're gonna know who your favorite record labels are so i mean we're gonna talk about everything and then um, we got a guest on here. What's up, Jeff? How's it going? Hey, how are you? The first of my guests. Um, you know, I figured what I did is I I, I um, put a cross section of record label people, people in bands, fans. I felt that would be the best thing to do. What do you think, Jeff? Uh, yeah, I mean, because that's kind of that's what makes the underground go right. It's it's people like us who are spreading the word. We're in bands. We have shows, uh, all that type of stuff. And then, of course, there's just a lot of people who aren't doing any of that except just buying the albums, spreading the word, supporting the bands, buying the merch, uh, recommending it to their friends, all of that. So that's definitely. all crucial parts of the ecosystem, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, that's why I did this show, too, because I feel like this is a part of the ecosystem that's been, like, neglected. <laughs> yeah. You know, because you, I mean, like, like, I'm going to ask you too, because mm -hmm. I'm probably going to ask a bunch of people on here. Like you see a lot of those like top 20 lists and top hundred <laughs> lists. <laughs> yeah. And I was just talking about this, uh, on witching hour, but, and, and, and on my own podcast and everything, uh, there it's incredible. Now the amount of stratification there is where no two lists have to be alike at all. Like there's sometimes no overlapping bands. And a lot of it is the these metal outlets like uh, like metal injection and stuff like that who are clearly kind of, for lack of a better word, on the take. Promo and, machines. And yeah, and and they just anything they just they just put on there. I'm half of them. I'm going. This isn't even metal. Or this they, didn't know? make a noise in the underground because we know right. as fans what's making noise in the underground, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like I've never met anybody who listens to whatever band you know it, it it becomes like a hoax mm -hmm. you know and it's so weird because um uh, without getting into too much of a tangent i did an fm radio show at the beginning of my career with metal enema um, and we were getting hit by all these promotions companies that were trying to get us to play their stuff and it wasn't really metal it was just mm -hmm. I mean, this is in 1995 when everything was like pseudo grunge too so that was really terrible but what it <laughs> What it taught me is that there is this other machine industry piece that has nothing to do with the underground or, or legitimate metal. Yeah, yeah. Monster Magnet. That's the one they were always desperately trying <laughs> to get you to play. That I guess that was the timing of 95, Monster Magnet. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's this there's this whole um, there's this whole kind of sub industry layer that masquerades like it's part of the underground right and it isn't at all it's just pretty much promo people paying or incenting these outlets that are only there to be incentivized by those industries right. and it's all just it's all just basically a big paper and i mean i could say i feel like i could say some of the names on here like metal sucks or bla yes. you know blabbermouth back in the day yeah blabbermouth you know, like, Blabbermouth is run by Roadrunner or Road Racer yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, obviously, you know, even though they might put news of another band or something, there's a there's underlying things here, you know? Yeah, and, and outlets like Blabbermouth are exactly what I'm talking about because they are so industry obsequious. It's like, hey, uh, the bassist from White Lion made a statement today. It's like, who the fuck cares about <laughs> any of that type of shit? Um, so to your point, the reason I'm saying all this is to your point is that, yeah, to hear it from those of us who are actually in the trenches, for lack of a better term, um, 
is really where it's at as far as yeah. our formatting, what we care about, the fact that you, me, everybody we know, we're not doing this for money or for some kind of connect. We're just doing this because we care about it. So I took I the super chat off my chat thing because I felt that I could be infiltrated. I mean, in my yeah. opinion, that I yeah. could play and and have to play stuff that I didn't want to play. Yeah. So, you know, like, I was like, you know what? That's pay to play. So, I mean, I could see if it's a request show or you're doing it for a fundraiser or there's some reason to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at anyone that super chats anything or wants to see their message on screen or wants to have a band played, especially if it's, it, you know, has to do with the show itself. That makes sense. Sure. But I could see how that system could be abused a little bit, too. And then once I saw that, I said, you know what? I'm going to shut mine off because basically... I want I don't I don't want to be abused by that. I want to yeah. just come in talk about what I want to talk about and I'm sure it's the same for you with your podcast. Yeah. It's the same for you with your bands. I mean, you're going to play what you want to play and then, you know, you have a record label or multiple record labels I should say that do back you up too. Yes. So, yes. you know, like you know obviously record labels put a lot of work into their stuff. Mhm. Mm and then um yeah, I mean, Jeff, could you give the people an overview, too, of what you are doing? Because Sure. Um, just the quick version. Sure. Uh, I'm currently actively in imprecation. Uh, most of you guys, if you're watching this show, you probably know who they are. Um, they've been around since 1991, and I've been with them since 2014. Um, we just played Never Surrender Fest in Berlin. That was amazing. Uh, we've got the... Theurgia Goetia Summa, the compilation of all of the classic demo material. It's currently out on all formats through uh, Nuclear War Now and Go Throne Records here in Texas. So uh, that's what we got going with that. Um, I'm also in a newer band with Nick, also of Imprecation, called Trenchant. We have one album out on Gods of War, and now the LP edition is just now coming out on michelle rise records out of germany cool so uh we're doing another um wave of promotion for that we're going to play a series of shows all this spring and into the summer uh supporting that album and and quickly your podcast the podcast is called metal enema all okay. one word and uh <laughs> We're at uh, metalenema.com. It's completely um, just a dedicated site. Uh, no ads, completely free, literally a thousand hours of content. There you go. And there's people who want to talk to you on here, Jeff. Yeah. For Serrera saying badass shirt. Yeah, this is Sathagawa, band from Germany uh, that was on Osmos Records back in the 90s. Chris, uh, sick black metal, German black yeah. metal shirt. Yeah. Yeah. German Sado metal. Yes, they they're the they were great, and they've reformed. They've got a new album coming out on Osmos. They Sick to see Jeff talking on here. Hell yeah! Tell yeah. him how how was Imprecation live in Berlin. I'm sure he'll talk about that. Yeah, I don't want to hijack the topic too much. Yeah, uh, mag lists are stale as fuck. Paid for shill shit. I see good yeah, stuff yeah. on them. I do see good releases on there, but the thing That's is, a, I see it's a coincidence. Yeah, I see some <laughs> weird ones too. Yeah. So let me see what else we got here. Um, yeah, Frazier, hit the discogs. Yeah. Fuck those sites. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I think small labels are where it's at, you know? Imprecation rules, says Seed Murder. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for the comments earlier, too, Seed Murder. I think you said what your uh, label and favorites are. You could put them in here, too. Sherry Scream says, I'm just trying to get Francisco to put out. Uh, Craig Life, let me see here. Hail Imprecation, hey, hey. Doom to Obscurity. Okay, we're gonna get into the releases soon enough. Yeah, yeah. I just I wanted to preface this to um, you know, basically, just talk about first, just talk about what the show's about, basically. Yeah. And then there's gonna be other guests that come on. You know, the thing is, we're dealing with like a regional thing here. So you have people from California, you have people from Arizona, Texas. I'm in New Jersey on the East Coast, so 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Eastern to me is 8 p.m. Eastern, and then to Jeff is like 7. 7. And as and then, it goes on, you know? Yeah. So basically, hails to Brazil, definitely, dude. A lot of good Brazilian uh, record labels here. Absolutely. 
Tabajo. I'm here every week. I'm an anti-social and a Miss Othenberg. <laughs> well, I mean, some of us are, and you know, for some reason, I mean, I have chosen myself to go on camera, even though I am kind of that type of person. I can't stand to look at myself when I'm done with this for a day or two, <laughs> but I still have to go in and bookmark it up. Um, you know, I, I was just thinking of, you know, I always am trying to think about, like, what could I do to push up the scene, you know? And not so much my, I, yes, I run a small record label. But the thing is, my, you know, with my record label, I'm not really on that top album of the year thing. And also, yeah. I'm not mad at that either. Um, we put out shirts mostly, you know? So unless they start mm -hmm. putting top shirt of the year, you know? <laughs> And then on top of that, you know, I'm friendly with so many record labels. I had thought after I thought of this as a topic that I, I don't want to offend anybody on here either by not naming their name. But I figure I would name the names of anything I thought of that was popping in the underground in 2023. And, you yeah. know, and in a good way. And that way, also the fans could talk to the each other. What were the top shirts? <laughs> yeah, I wonder too. I mean, probably Sanguasugabog. Oh my god. Frozen band, Soul, Stabbing. I, <laughs> I would say those those bands all did good. I mean, that, just from my opinion. Um those I, were I didn't three. even know the Sanguasugabog band had an album or anything. I thought they were just a, a band based on merch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean that yeah, also that's the thing too, like with when it comes to like record labels. You know, this is kind of something I tried to write into my Instagram post to like encompass that into this show is that record labels don't just release albums. Mm -hmm. They put out nowadays, they'll put out a tape, they'll put out a reissue, they'll put out a demo of a band, and then they'll put out their album later. They'll put out a mini LP. I notice mini LPs get pushed off the uh, thing because they ain't albums, you know? So, I mean, I felt like, you know, we should try to encompass a little more of a, a little of everything, you know? Yeah, I agree. So, so anyway, yeah. Necropsy yeah. odor, for sure. Oh, top long sleeve. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> so we're going to um, play a song or two till some more guests join on. I'm going to put you in the back there, Jeff. You know how to put uh, You've been on StreamYard before. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're not going to play a lot of music tonight, though, everybody. I would like to see some talking. Like, we need to talk on here because YouTube gods have basically barred me from playing music. I know. It's so annoying. <laughs> so here's actually, here's a video from uh, someone in Texas who sent Chris Herrera. Hello, my name is Chris from Houston, and I'm going to show you the labels that I really enjoy and their releases. Mortville Records. Burt Bacharach Split with Captain Three Leg. Go Throne Records. Death Fucker CD. I mean, Cassette. <coughs> Bruin CD. Uh, Plague Transmissions Volume 3. Reduce from uh, Life Records. Originally from Texas, they moved to Colorado, which is pretty cool. Um, they put out the <coughs> Limprophidiac. Which is on everybody's 2023 20, list of the year. Really, really good stuff from Spain. This has the members from uh, Machetazo. From my hometown, Trash Mag, some toe tapping punk rock stuff. Makes you want to do some crazy drugs and smash things up. Gore Beyond the Cropsy from. Haunted Hotel Records from New York City. Acid Redux Productions. Subscrum. Uh, Grand Core from uh, Ukraine. Headsplit Records. Expression of Pain. Coronoid. Morgue Breath. With... Blue Holocaust from Italy. Killer Grindcore. And some stuff from Transylvania Recordings. Some nihilistic sludge called Band Called Surge. 
Brilliant Behemoth demos. Nasty Grindcore. Some uh, Death Rock stuff. New Skeletal Faces. Deep Cavity. Shit bag from Texas. And uh, from uh, Caligory Records right here. Scoliopornia, which is a cool band from Italy. Check them out. And uh, I have an Instagram page. If you want to check it out, it's Herrera's Dead Body. And I'm going to do a, a longer stuff of whatever I have later.
Death Metal Podcast is back. This now we have uh, Aaron Ooh. from Goat Throne Records has joined us with his kitty. What's up, gentlemen? Going on. What's the kitty's name? Uh, Mimi. Mimi. Oh, yeah. beautiful. She's a shithead. <laughs> That's what I say about my cats too. Nah, she's cool though. I'm like, oh, I love this cat. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> How are you guys? Um, we're good. Yeah. Yeah, cool. we're just starting a show, obviously. Um, you know, like, I wanted, you know, the purpose of this show, like, I, I mean, Aaron, you were kind of, you know, part of this in a way. That's why I even put you on a flyer. But basically, like, there's record labels out there that are putting out, like, tapes, hypothetically, that are not yeah. albums, you know? Right. And I feel like they get, like, neglected a little bit. Thoughts? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not everybody can like it, you know what I mean? No, so no, I mean, just, like, I feel like yeah. a music release gets neglected in the album of the year. You know what I mean? Where it is one of the friggin' albums of the year. You know what I mean? Just well, because I, it's a tape? Yeah, or like an EP or something. Oh. I think yeah. that comes through with the, the promotion side of things, too. If you don't have that machine behind it to, like, force it in people's faces. Like... I don't know. I think there's like a certain niche of people who just know. You know what I mean? Right. And then That's just, the underground. The underground. It, it's what it is. Yeah. I mean, there is a certain niche of people that know. And then, I mean, there are a certain, you know, there's a certain niche of like band camp fans only, maybe. Yeah, yeah. There's a certain niche of people that just fuck with like Metal Blade or your more, you know, suffocations and immolations and like. You know, like, like Suffocation put out a record this year. You got oh, a lot they? of bands out there doing big tours. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you got, you got, we'll see, you're like me then, because, like, yeah. I'm, I'm a little out of it. I'm, like, I'm more concerned maybe with, like, an extremely rotten release, or right. a Mia Sako, or, or like, um, uh, if I'm saying that right, or a Goat Throne, or, you know what I mean? So I, I'm more tuned into like the underground stuff, rotted life, or you know what I mean. For sure. What about you? Um, I mean, I don't want. I don't want. I. The thing is, the only thing is on this, I don't want to call out any guests and put them on the spot. So I thought about the afterwards. I'm like, fuck. Like I'm like, you know what? Like you do a record label, Aaron, a uh, Goat Throne. So right. like, you know, if I ask you, what's your favorite record label? Goat Throne. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd say that. I, I do have some, like, uh, labels that I really like right now. Right. <clears throat> um, you don't have to I name them. I'm just, I, I'm, no, I, 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 I don't I even want to name my favorite record label during this the whole time, basically. I, That's I, my I, goal. I, I want the I, chat to talk about it. Yeah. I kind of want it. I want to name a couple, though. Okay. So, I really liked what you've done. Dylan's killing it. Head split. Fuck yeah, yeah man. Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Um, let, let's go overseas. Um, nuclear winter. Yes. Mr. Dead Dead Congregate Congregation. He's he's killing it over there, dude. Um, Gods of War is doing some cool stuff. Yep. Iron Bonehead. I mean, just yeah, just standard. 
stuff like that. Uh, what was that label you said the trenchant was coming out on in Europe? You mentioned it was a good label. Yeah, I wanted to. I did want to take an opportunity to talk about this label, um, and not just because it's releasing <laughs> trenchant, but it's Darkness yeah. Shall Rise out of Germany. Um, they were primarily a um, a label specializing in tape only, like special box set reeditions of existing albums or, or discographies. Right. But they are now, as of this year, branching out to uh, new releases, CD, LP format, and tapes still. Right. Um, nice. Trenchants being included on that. Uh, Aaron and I uh, tried really hard to get um, someone to put out the features LP. Uh, in cooperation with us, and right. finally, darkness shall rise. Just quarterback the whole thing, which is really excellent. And Very the cool. os- ossuaries on there, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, they've been putting out a lot of awesome stuff. Didn't yeah. they uh, put out that that DSI discography that you worked on, Jeff? They sure did, and that's uh, that's one of the things I wanted to mention. That's one I think they're one of the best labels out there right now because that box set was just insane. The, the amount of care and love and detail and packaging and artistry that went into that right. was just I mean that's like from the nineties level finish. You know, there were certain labels dude. that had all the foil stamps and, and all the extra inserts and, and you know, everybody got cynical about it. The digital era I was like, ah, nobody cares about packaging anymore. But Darkness Shall Rise absolutely cares about the packaging. Um, they've got a catharsis box set coming out that looks as comprehensive as the Deicide. Um, mm book everything i just i just ordered it and um they've also got um re-editions from uh immortals demos uh out on lp oh nice they've, they've got they're doing the entire uh it looks like they're doing like this whole discography retrospective of master's hammer which i've got Ooh, right on. yeah and yeah. they do everything in house it's it's uh Denny and um, I guess his, I guess it's his girlfriend. I don't think they're married, but she is a graphic artist and she does incredible work. So anything they're putting out is going to just look like a million bucks and worth every penny. Um, they, yeah, they, like I said, they did the D assigned. They've got uh, licensed t-shirts for that. I mean, everything, you know, pretty much. Yeah. And record are- labels aren't just about 2002 recordings. I mean, 2003 right. recordings. They're, they're right. about- I just wish they had better distribution here, man, because the shipping to get that over here is just, I know. It's, a- um, it, it, it's all available through hell's headbangers though. Uh, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, that's, where I was, that's where I was directing everybody to pick it up. Like that DS said box that, um, it, I was pretty proud of that. Cause I went on, uh, Carl's witching hour show and overnight, you know, I was show, I was doing an unboxing and they sold 20 copies wow. that night. Oh, because nice. of that, so that was really cool. All right. We're going to hit the chat for a second. What's up, Evan to turn your phone the other direction. If you can. So, uh, Van records. <laughs> oh, all right. Aaron's got it. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, you got that? Yes, sir. Oh, wait, it won't flip to uh, horizontal mode, brother. Uh, hold on, let me see. Okay. Van Records, definitely. Who else Van, here? Yes. I got the debut from German warmongers Misanthropic War on Gods of War this year. Yeah. Gods Intuit of War. Intuit Records, who puts out only tapes. Only tapes. Definitely sick. Yep. Flaga Records. They have really cool box sets. Yes, they do. What's up, Human Human Brisket? Let me see here. Nuclear War Now put out yes. the Order from Chaos reissues. First time listen to them. Fucking great. CDN Records has some good stuff. Well, I have a video from Cam uh, that we'll show in a yeah, little bit. That's that Canadian label. Yeah. Uh, so Calgary uh, Records uh, puts out some fun stuff lately. Caligari, Definitely, yeah. dude. Yep. Caligari, sorry. Yeah. Let's see who else here we're talking about. There's a sheer volume of releases coming out every week, which makes it hard to keep track of everything. Very, very yeah, true. Yeah, I agree with that, too. There are a sheer volume of releases that come out, especially if you follow Bandcamp. Yeah, so you can't you get, listen to everything, man. Yeah, or you get those all those emails on a Bandcamp Friday, and your whole entire follow thing just fills up. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm at the point now where if the label's kind of like a half steady one for me, I just delete the email, which is not good. But um, <laughs> I usually look through them and see, you know. High Rollers, 
Yeah. Yeah. High Roller is a good one. They do a lot of cool reissues. What's up, James from Transylvania Tape uh, Recordings? How's it going, brother? Yeah. High Roller is a good one. They do a lot of cool reissues. You got an echo. Yeah, we got an echo. We got got it fixed. All right, cool, brother. How's it going, my man? Pretty good. Uh, Also, with you. Yeah. What's up, James? So, this is Jeff, Aaron from Go Throne. I think you know, right? Evan. Yeah. I Williams. also fucking love Imprecation, so oh, fucking thanks. stoked Thank that you. Jeff joined that project. Uh, that fucking Imprecation stuff, I'm, I'm really happy that it got reissued and is getting the proper treatment because, in my opinion, those are some of the best unsung demos. I, I feel bad calling them demos, but just like hey, what EPs they were, and releases from the 90s, they were fucking amazing, and I know... Great. For years, I was hounding uh, Imprecation to come out to California to try to tour with them, and and I I fucking love the project. So with Thank you me. joining the band, there's been a revitalized miss with the band where everyone's just been at it, and <laughs> it's fucking sick, man. That yeah. happens, Jeff. Yeah. Sometimes a, a member joins a band, and suddenly like they do feel a little more revitalized, you know? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, the Nuclear War Now deserves full credit for uh, releasing that uh, compilation again, but then this time with a complete booklet with right. all the, the the stuff from Dave had just a big file of all the demo uh, content and lyric sheets and everything. So it's all in there and it's just amazing. Yeah, as far as record labels, like as from the buyer side of things, I'm just going to speak for myself right here. I'm more into like the music than I am like the trinkets, basically. Yeah, so like sure. you throw pins and buttons and stickers and all this shirts even i don't give two mm. fucks about that stuff <laughs> but if you put in yeah. some unreleased <laughs> shit then i am fucking 100 percent vested in that shit you know yeah that or or say you put out something that's like say in previous years which we all know this like something could have been put out in like a kind of like a bad quality or you have a bad mm. quality dub but it's one of your favorite bands, you know? It's like, damn, I yeah. love this fucking band. But, my, you know, I have a dub from my friend. It's 20 years old, and now they're reissuing it, you know, from the master tapes or something. Mm-hmm. So, like, music, the music side of things are much more important to me. I mean, I'm going to go around the panel. I mean, how you guys, where do you guys stand with pack? You, I know, Jeff, you were talking about packaging. Yeah, I, I, I well... I'm an aestheticist and a kind of a self-taught graphic designer myself. So I do like the packaging when it's a band that matters to me. I've seen bands where I have no idea what it is and the music's not anything mind blowing and it'll have foil stamps. And, you know, yeah. And, and it's, it, yeah, it, it's, it, it has to match the scale of what we're talking about. Again, like that DSI set box, that was like an absolutely appropriate amount of packaging. Um, but yeah, it, it just depends on the band. But I will say that, um, I mean, I, I'm I'm granular with that stuff. I was pushing labels that I worked with back when I was in a Versafira to do varnishes and um, matte varnish coatings on the um, on the CD booklets and things like that. And, and the labels would be like. I don't even know what that is. Why does why does it matter? And then they would they would get their copies, and then they'd be like, "Oh my god, this feels like a touch." I'm turning the pages. Right. It just feels so tactile. And I was like, "Yeah, there's a magic to that because traditionally, I think uh, probably all of us here we would sit and like stare at the booklet while we were listening to the album. You know, Hell, and I'll read the it. lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, list. So, yeah, thanks, list too. So all of that matters, and again, you don't want to you don't want to overdo it, especially if you're you're a new band or whatever. But uh, I mean, not not that you shouldn't have ambition, but it's just like you know, deluxe packaging for something new and unproven is a little bit. Pretentious. All right, let's go to you then, Aaron. What where are you at with the packaging versus the music versus? I, oh, I'm, I'm with Jeff on one thing he said there about like a band that's overpackaged that sucks. <laughs> yeah, the music has to be there first. I mean, otherwise, I would buy it. What's up, you know? Jake's Metal Chat? Coming from the UK. What's up? Hey, man. What's up? I did. But like, uh, being like a set of something, like, uh, let's take that imprecation tape box set. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, that 
I don't know, man. The booklet, the pen, like I, I want that for sure. Cause okay. you know the music's there. It's yeah, solid. Yeah. Mm. All right. How about yeah. how about you, Evan? You're more on the consumer oh. side of things. Oh, dude! Like packaging and aesthetics are everything for me, man. Like I don't know, just like nothing is better. Like I mean, you you already know a band, right? Especially with like a reissue or something. But there's nothing better than like getting like the full package. You know what I mean? Like right. with the like with the imprecation reissue. Like you get the full package. You know, you get like the art. You get like they even made the artwork better. You know, because like yeah. I went and I compared it to yeah. my old CD copy from years ago, and like the Moyan artwork is cut off on the CD, mm. and like they got like. A full scan of the Moyan artwork and he like it. Dude, he the original seriously, artwork. man. And like I never knew that, you know, until like I put them side by side because I knew something was different. Mm. And you know, and plus, like you have the history. I mean, it's like a, it's everything, man. You know? All right, James. I gotta ask you. I feel like you're putting me in the hot seat because <laughs> you know uh, I do not give a shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Honestly, like, and this sounds really fucking stupid having a label and saying this, but like, we are the diehards. We care. Uh, most fucking people out there are listening on their phones. They're listening on fucking Spotify. They don't give a fuck what it looks like. They've never touched a booklet. To me, I see bands that like uh, come out. There's all these labels doing like all the bells and whistles, fucking doing full print shells. Uh, all that shit. I don't give a fuck about any of that stuff. If the music's good, that's all that fucking matters. The packaging is secondary to me. It could be a piece of shit demo <laughs> recorded from fucking FedEx, but if the music's <laughs> solid, I'm fucking there. Like, right. some of the best, like, artists and musicians I know are, like, uh, not graphic artists and they don't know how to put shit together and I don't want to like hold that against them um, obviously I like good looking shit but I grew up as like um, I don't know probably some of us here we would go out and buy comics and we'd buy like the coolest looking fucking cover yes. and you know that fucking trap the coolest cover is the shittiest comic always <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because they spent all the money doing the fucking cover fun. and then the inside is like fucking awful it's yeah. dog shit so i feel like a lot of bands come out and labels are putting like all the bells and whistles out there on releases and then um not putting so much focus on like the quality of the music the music but i think that that also goes into something that can go much deeper which is i don't think every band deserves to have a physical release i don't i think... agree with that yeah sure. i i think that it, there's nothing wrong with being a digital or like a demo band like it seems like everybody wants their demo pressed on vinyl now mm. and it's like dude yeah. you don't yeah. understand like it's okay <laughs> to not have everything be the fucking top of the top so when it comes yeah. to packaging and stuff like that i have like bands that of course i'm not gonna work with it like write me emails and they're like oh we have this fucking we want spot varnish fucking matte like all these fucking like super expensive vinyl things i'm like dude you guys have been a band for like six months mm. how about you guys go and tour you play some shows yeah. and you show me you're gonna be a band in fucking two years and it's then we can start years. talking yeah. about spending yeah, money there's on that. packaging for there's you there's that i put up big money for a band that broke up listen yeah. jeff i mean i'm um, sorry uh jake how are you on the packaging versus the music versus like what's you know um well, I like getting physical media. It's just better. I'm, most bands I get stuff from, well, mainly physical media. I go to Black City Records, which is here in Bristol, the okay. number one metal record shop here in Bristol. So if any of you guys do come over, uh, tell oh, David I sent you. you. <laughs> tell David I sent you. Um, yeah, I prefer the whole package thing. Obviously, if no band has any physical media, yeah, I'll download it. I know that's that's a shit thing, but 
Most, Sometimes you have no choice, though. I mean, you've got no choice. Yeah. That's the thing. But shipping's fucked. I, so. I am. A, I yeah. I'm sort of just sobered up from a gig I went to. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Yes. We all understand that. So let's I hit the chat pizza. too. Vinyl trend is dumb. Okay. Yeah. Vinyl trend. Vinyl is not dumb. Shut the fuck up. I want a, I want a big booklet with tons of info, more than postcards or something. Uh, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Yeah. In a box set, like unreleased tracks is and extras with cool packaging. Yes. Yeah. Legit, legit. Okay, here's me right here. I found many bands from Thanks List seeing their shirts that the band members are wearing. That's what I had to tell Dan Loker actually years ago. Oh yeah, because he he was wearing you think like that's a thing of the past though. Now, I think it is. I think yeah. with the internet, it's there's there's very little to discover on anyone else's behalf because mm, yeah. you can find it just as easily. It's not word of mouth like it used to be. Yeah, yeah. the <clears throat> landscape has changed a little bit. And people are fucking haters and they don't want to thank their friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's too bad. That's why they only want to thank the other commercial bands or touring with. I mean, is that what you're I getting at? That. I don't want to like have my evil fucking black metal project and have like, thanks, mom. My oh, yeah, friend. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I get it. But like, I, I definitely that's that's how you found out about shit back in the day when you would trade and support your friends. Now you can get like a Facebook post or an Instagram yeah, post. Facebook you're lucky. post, Instagram, Twitter, whatever the fuck it is now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Bandcamp thing for me has been like a godsend, I think, because yeah. now, you know, like I want the the um, you know the uh, what I was I wanted to say the drapes and the covers, but like. You know, like, I, I want to hear the fucking band, dude. I'm not going to buy yep. it without just looking at the cover. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It, uh, there's a lot of amazing covers. But it's yeah, like they the don't, music. don't reflect the interest in the music anymore. Yeah. Not always. <laughs> not always. You know? I won't even, I won't buy something or listen to a band until I see them live. Like, mm, I, wow. I'm, um, I'm so jaded to the fact You're that like me, brother. Yeah, I'm like, there's so many studio bands out there that can't play their shit live yeah. and i play in bands so if i see that it's like embarrassing and if i like their band and they suck live I, i'm just like no fuck this no you're so like I, me. I go out of my way to stay yeah. ignorant and be so, like oh, I'll cool go watch that band. So you're like oh you shit <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. i've been won over by bands live so yeah like, me too yeah oh, there's yeah. nothing better than that you yeah, know yeah there I've isn't seen some bands live and it's like cool or, like, or isn't know. it isn't it weird when you don't like a band on recording and you go see them live and you realize you only like them live? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. I, I, I've done that with a few bands. It's like, yeah, your like, your albums are cool, but you're better live. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, you like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's <laughs> that's that goes for a lot of bands, and and actually, I respect that. I'm like, you know what? That goes back to you guys just aren't good at recording, but you guys are a hell of a live band, and I. That's that means more to me, honestly. That's important, actually. Yeah. 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 One I mean, thing I in today's sorry, studio age of home recordings, it is important. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I was going to add uh, regarding packaging was that when I was in Berlin for uh, Never Surrender Fest, I also got to go to a few museums, and there was one in particular that had an amazing uh, Egyptian uh, exhibit, like two floors worth of that stuff. It was incredible. And they had full sarcophaguses with the mummies and the actual, I mean, the entire interiors. And you realize looking at those, uh, that those Egyptian sarcophagi used to have inscriptions all on the inside too, not on the outside, not just on the outside. And it was just like layer on layer on layer on layer. And I looked at them, I went, oh my God, the Egyptians were the original Die Hard box set. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you know, it's like, body. yeah, like, you know, the, the, the Pharaoh back patch and, yeah. you know, <laughs> all this. <laughs> the cool That's thing about Egyptians, not to get like too nerdy about it, because I fucking love that shit too, but they spend, they spent most of their life writing a scroll, which was like their, their scroll yes. of the death. And, 
their every waking moment was not every waking moment but their throughout their course of their life they just wrote about their ascension in death yeah and that's so fucking cool that they they in life they wrote only about death and then in death their journey continues on to their sarcophagus and yeah i fucking i love the egyptians they, they had books of the dead the yep. scrolls like entire scrolls in that museum from like front so front. Cool. It, was, it was incredible <laughs> pretty fucking death metal huh? what about yeah the, what is it they have mummies there too or no yeah they had mummies they had statuary they had artifacts they had like this really famous head of queen nefertiti um Ooh. statuary which was in this hilarious it was in this one rotunda right by itself it's only like you know two-thirds size of a real head in this case and apparently it's super super valuable there was guards okay. surrounding the entire thing and you could not take pictures of it or anything you could just walk up look at it and then just fuck off you know <laughs> <laughs> right. it's like yeah. you can look just you know i it's think like, i know that just like this too. Well, nope. I think it's because, like, the flash can, um, like, distort it can, it some of, like, uh, the... the pigment or the color or something yes. like that. So the same thing with when you go to, like, art muse museums. They're like, don't take pictures. Um, I don't know. I'm not a scientist no on it. But... With the yeah, it is, so that's the what they flash, tell you. Like, fucks with the, it fucks with it. Yeah. yeah. No selfies but in the last the 10 Lisa, years, they've found <laughs> so many new... Uh, bodies and and different tombs in egypt it's it's a really exciting time to be a fan of uh exhumation um, of history <laughs> we got to get some unboxing egypt. videos up you know oh, <laughs> egyptian <laughs> unboxing videos. Watch those. yeah <laughs> dude I, don't, I, those memes, don't drink the sarcophagi juice <laughs> yeah i've watched some of those that one lady you want, you want to know how we got this brain out well stuck this up the nose and take it out the yeah. only thing i find weird about the uh, we're gonna get off the subject in a minute but the only thing i find weird about the like mummies that like go to different like countries to be displayed it's like that's a fucking dead body that's someone's dead body you went in to file their grave then you put yeah. them out on a fucking even that even that fucking museum over there it's just like it's filled like in the back room they had like stacks of like dead bodies you know it's not like they the were cool carted <laughs> dead body around for several years on a fucking train <laughs> let's unbox some mummies so get into the subject any... at hand which is record labels i mean i don't you know i don't want to i don't want to flex any specific label but we will say that um my man from morbid seller Re records hit me up today uh tony he runs a, a finnish death metal page on um on facebook which is pretty awesome so I he said this is going to drop tomorrow. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. Which is a uh, 45 copies of Demolik on Cyan and 45 on Purple. So you heard it here. Very cool. And he put oh. out this too, which is members of Cadaveric Incubator. Uh, oh, 30 cool. copies. So shout out to Tony, man. I saw him in the cool. chat earlier too. They then, spelled Demolik right too. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And yeah, so he did that. I'm just spell it wrong. I was like, no, you done it wrong. <laughs> Even though we lost them, Go yeah, Throne this, Records. Hey. This was yeah. their band camp. You can see my shopping cart there with some stuff that I put in it that never bought it. But they put out a lot of good releases this year, and yeah. like, including Francisco's band, ETD, on tape. But you're probably not going to see that tape out in the wild on anyone's like top 100 list or top 20 list. I mean, I saw like a guy from Texas put it on there, which was fucking awesome, you know? But I feel like demos and tapes and tape releases, they don't really get the love. Even I put out a record from Dizma, and it was a mini LP. And they're like, oh, right, Dizma. That ain't a record. That's because Dizma's been canceled by the fucking yeah. douchebag. <laughs> That's what it's about. Uh, yeah. My favorite That's all labels, 20 bucks spin, Sentinel uh, Ruin, Calgary. Oh, Calgary record, yeah. Love uh, uh, me some Transylvanian, too. 20 yeah, bucks yeah. spin is terribly overrated they do have some good bands but then <laughs> everything on the label is so there are people out there who just become fan this is an interesting point there are people out there who just become devotees of labels and just sort of consume everything that comes out by them regardless of if it's you know on par or not and that was an easy thing to do back in 1992 on Roadrunner or 1993 to 95 on like Osmos or something like that. But that was a coincidence. They just kept cutting right. it, 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 it. I mean, 
I, I don't, I don't, I do not know why all the knit hat kids love twenty bucks spin so fucking much. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to put any shade on like maggot stomp, but they seem like they fell in that category. Oh, absolutely, and I, I. I, again, it, I think it's because in certain cases, it's great to support a label based on the body of their work. I, I mean, I do that. We all do that. Right. But to become, to make that your just convenient pivot point, like, I, okay, so what do you listen to? Whatever's coming out on Maggot Stomp, you know? Mm. It, that's, yeah. that's not informed. I mean, I, I look at the list I have for the best of 2023 that we do our podcast. And it's completely stratified. We're not even focusing on the labels because there's so many imprints and small labels and boutique labels right. that are putting out stuff. And I don't care about that as much as I care about the band that right. came out on it. It's We want to support the label by proxy, but it's band first, label second. And I think that's yeah. the way it always was. There's no band, there'd be no label. You right. Know? But you get scene kids and they get devoted to the brand of the label. Yeah. And it's fine to just say, hey, yeah, this label puts out good stuff. So if they're putting this out, it must be good. I'll check it out. But then, I, again, I think it's very, very easy to just make that a one-stop shop for people who actually just don't even know what the fuck's going on. And I find that annoying. Well, you have someone like Evan, though, who can straddle as a fan every record label there is. You know what I mean? You're Like Evan, you're here. And also Jake, actually. You guys are more like fans you know what i mean so like yeah. you're not in bands right jake I, I'm, I'm i'm in a band but it's not death metal i got gotcha. you and evan <laughs> i don't know maybe you were in a band or something yeah i have but i don't do anything now i got gotcha. you but you like you Good know from a, from a fan <laughs> side of things like you're probably consuming <laughs> your music through like every platform right like say like Bandcamp, yeah, spotify Bandcamp, physical medias yeah I mean, right it is like you spotify is when Either I'm here at home or I'm on my walk, yeah. basically. Yeah, I use Spotify. I use my band camp and my phone at the at work <laughs> and listen to my records and my tapes at the house. For sure. Yeah, you, um, mean you can't listen to many records in the car, you know. What? No, no, or no, tapes. Can, I can't even listen to a CD in my car. car. Uh, I'm curious, uh, Jake. You said that you don't play in a metal band. What? What kind? No, of it is a metal band? band. It's folk metal. What? It's folk metal. Funk? Folk. 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 Yeah, folk Oh, metal. like the, the rowing the boat in the mosque? Yeah, like that kind? sort of thing, yeah, basically. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So, okay. So I play Are you guys voice. Vikings? Well, two of us are. <laughs> me, and the, <laughs> okay. me and the mate Alex. Okay, we were, cool. We were, at, UK, a gig. Man. We were at a gig. In um, Cardiff, Wales, which is not too far from here in Bristol, it's to cool. see a uh, Pantheist, which is a funeral oh, doom metal band. And are you, what's the shirt you're wearing? Uh, Frozen Soul. Oh, okay, so you do dig death metal and shit, though. Yeah, well, that's my yeah, favorite he's got a genre. Channel. That's oh, my okay. favorite genre. Cool, cool. Yeah, he's got a YouTube channel, and uh, are you, Jake's well, been on here before too. So yeah, yeah, he came on. Are you the death metal guy in your band? Mostly, yeah. Okay, yeah, that <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I just chat about death metal, and people are like, for fuck's sake, how many bands does this guy know? He's like, I know too <laughs> many. Shut the fuck up and listen. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Where are you at, Necron? Hey, What's up, Necron? <laughs> Recuperating. Oh, shit. Is that Fraser eating on screen? No, that's Jake eating on screen. That's me eating. I haven't had much to eat today. 20 Buck Spin has a lot of good stuff, and people who run it are cool. They're kind of journalist hype label. Well, this is what we were talking about at the top of the show. Peaceful you know, Records. Did he mean Peaceville? Peace. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's the Peaceful labels. Records. I know Peaceville. Wait, wait. Seven Inches, um, Seven Metal Inches is another label that most people don't see stuff from. They're, yeah, they're pretty that's, good. That's, yeah, smaller imprint like we were talking Definitely about. But it's pretty, yeah, they pretty much do reissues too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they put Are out, they like, only doing Seven Inches? Um, no, they put out the box set of the Seraphic Decay stuff, and oh. then uh, they put out some tapes of, like, Entombed and stuff, and then they put out a lot of 7 Inches. Oh, because I, I know that right. doing 7 Inches are, like, super fucking expensive right now. It's basically the same cost as doing an LP, so I know a lot of, like, my distributors are like, 
don't don't even try to do a seven inch because stores don't want to buy them for the cost that they have to be right now it's yeah they're out of favor yeah. a little bit i mean even tapes i mean versus cd the production costs are ridiculous you know oh yeah i mean i'm paying almost two and a half to three times the amount for one cassette tape versus a cd right wow that's yeah. terrible. I, I saw that someone mentioned earlier on the chat that, oh, man, it's crazy that tapes are the same price as CDs or something yeah. like that. I'm just like, dude, you have no fucking idea that a cassette tape costs like 5 50 to $6 to do, and you can get CDs for like 2 bucks yeah. each per unit. <laughs> and I mean, so rec like, records, yeah, I sucks. noticed over the <laughs> last like 10 years, like the record price just was like... Yeah. We yeah. kind of used oh, to be like in that yeah. 20 22 dollar range maybe but now it's yeah. more like in the 35 dollar range you know oh yeah i i went and saw how much a record was last night and mind you it was a double uh like exclusive 180 gram record but it was 40 dollars, and i was like of course i mean if you can make that go for you but like fuck i feel bad charging a couple of dollars more than price but you know, it is what it is. I wish I can get some of that mainstream money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's but, a it's a it's a weird balance for the fans, I think. In a yeah, oh yeah, that's it. I don't want to alienate anybody, so that's like the fucked yeah. up part. And I have all these like punk ethics that like shoot myself in the dick constantly. Um, but you know, way she goes. Uh, demand for uh, skyrocketed for vinyl. Giant pop stars through vinyl runs and left the plant blacked out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a, a year or two ago. Definitely happening super hard. Yeah. Thanks, Taylor things, Swift. Things seem to have like turned around a bit now. You can get a record within six months now with yeah. most plants. Um, but the prices have went up dramatically. We're talking like double to triple the costs within the last five years, which is insane. Definitely. I mean, I was on a different episode on here, and um, we ended up talking about Seraphic Decay. And oh, yeah. the guy from Seraphic Decay is the one who gave me the, the tip-off to where to press my vinyl in 1991, 92? I guess 91. And um, it was like Bill Smith's Custom Records in Cali. And I think I would pay like 50 cents a 7-inch or something. Oh, man. Fuck. <laughs> so you know that's not the price now. Yeah. <laughs> CD is best. Okay. Yes. Memento Mori. Definitely agree. cool fucking label. Shout out to Raul. I've been busting, <coughs> I've been buying more CDs lately, whatever I can get my grubby hands on it. Yeah. Screw that vinyl. I won't buy vinyl too expensive. Just collect C D. Oh, fair enough. Um, w WT no, records. I CDs and vinyl and cassettes. I don't I buy what I can get, basically. Or if I feel like the band is, like, eternal for me. Like, say it's in something I really, really, really like, I will get the vinyl, too. I, and I say, too, because I'll probably get the tape and the fucking CD. Yeah, I, I, I did that with um, Crit Rooms last album. I bought the vinyl and the CD. Yeah. Uh, Crit Rooms, a death metal band from here in Bristol. Check yeah, them they're out. Killer. They're definitely cool. killer. Dirty disgusting i'm only buying Definitely. vinyl stuff of essential things like stuff that i feel like i have to have in my collection like yeah as far as new releases right it's yeah. all old stuff that i'm buying on like with the i ordered the new Desma from roy um but pretty much it's all it's all older stuff right i mean i think i'm 50 50 on that i'm actually a tape whore right now like I don't, yeah. I'm mostly tapes. He's a whore. Because there's more tapes, like the are cheaper basically, that's it. So I feel like yeah. it's the same theory as me going into the record store when I was like 14. I was like, can yeah. I get two tapes? I think that's what record? it is with me too. It reminds me of yeah, being a kid. Please. <laughs> yeah. Like, you really love when an album gets vinyl treatment. It's yeah, a I'm just, I'm must just buy. looking at the comments. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're, new yeah, Crip Room yeah, is it, sick. Yeah, yeah, it is the new album by Crip Room is fucking awesome. What's up, Mark Riddick? Hey, oh, Riddick. Mark. He, yeah, he did. He did my uh, logo and banner for my channel. So thanks again, Riddick. Awesome, brother. Yeah, Mark's awesome. I'm trying to get him on the chat. Yeah. But I can't. Mark's get Mark's him the best. I'm all about sales. My music addiction is pricey. <laughs> Thank you for the video too, Chris. We appreciate that, bro. 
All right, here's a good one. A uh, self-made god. Cool label. Definitely Obliteration Records from Japan. Proud tape horrors unite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, men I, I mentioned the Appreciate minute ago. Uh, <laughs> WTC Records. If, if, uh, they've got a lot of good stuff. It's it's primarily black metal. They are putting out all the current Abigor releases. What um what country? Uh, I think they're Germany. I want to. Is it World that. Terror Committee? Yeah, World Terror Committee. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, someone on here earlier mentioned Everlasting Spew. Yeah, I saw that too. I was going to mention them on this too because I think, you know, there's. And someone named uh, Nuclear Winter, so I was happy about that. I want to see people like talking about. Winter. Yeah, like Everlasting yeah, Spew, Spew Records yeah. definitely was cool. Uh, uh, good Rodell record. Records, are they still making records? Fuck knows. <laughs> yeah, because they're an old label. Don't they make those chopped tomato cans of chopped tomato for? Oh, that's Rotel. Excuse me. <laughs> that's that's right. Right. Yeah. All right. That's a record label. Saying, I usually go for orders. the CD first, then, then tape, tape and then the vinyl if I really like it. I think I'm very close yeah, to I, you, I'm, Mark. I'm with, I'm with Mark on that. It's like yeah. CD first, then tape, uh, then vinyl. I think I'm flipped with the tape and the CD though right now. Like, well, mine um, might be the other way around. They might go CD, then vinyl, then tape. It all yeah. depends. What I can yeah. get my hand on it first. Isn't Idol it, is a storage commitment, you know? Yeah. It really Isn't it is. interesting that as metal fans, that basically we will collect all three formats of the same Pretty fucking Pretty time, aren't you? Yeah. It's like, it's oh, like, I got the tape. I got the like, fucking record. We'll do four we'll formats because format. we do shirts. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, why have you got all three formats? And flags. Fuck you, that's why. <laughs> we also love to rebuy our favorite album over. Yeah. Oh, it's remastered. Oh, original cover art for Holy got this shit. Like, cover. It's like, oh, I got this band. It's like, what, what does that band say? What? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, there's people have looked at this t shirt of Frozen Souls. It's like, what does that say? It's like, mm. that's Frozen not even Souls. It's like, one. oh, I can't fucking read that. It's like, well, you're obviously not a metalhead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but even if they are metalheads, it's like, they'll see it like, Oh yeah, Frozen Soul, but then be some metal heads are like, oh, what the fuck's that? It's like, Frozen it's good to Soul. see people from Twitch on here. Head Appreciate split. the yeah, Twitch we support. Anarchy in Bedrock. Head split. Record, Cheers yeah. to Twitch. Bird oh, Flesh. Yeah. Cool. Bird Flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Cemetery them. Moon on DV Rules. Okay. Definitely. Cool. Well, patches. Make it five. Someone said. Don't forget the patches. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. True. True. And, and flags. You know, it depends on who flags. it is and what that's formats I buy. Things I love, I'll buy all formats. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I I do it over time, obviously. So I'll start with the one and then just move through them if I like the band enough, you know? Mm. And it, yeah. the only difference of moving through the formats nowadays is if you kind of are slipping a little bit. And things like kind of go a little berserk on your discogs or your ebays or whatever so it's like you know say you didn't get the vinyl when it came out and then like it was going for like i don't know 25 bucks or something then it's like oh man i want this on fucking vinyl man i need this new incantation on vinyl you know and then it's sold out but then you hit fucking discogs and it's like 45 dollars now it's like oh yeah yeah it was original you know get like 100 200 or something stupid yeah I won't pay more than forty bucks for a record. Smart I've man. set my I've set, I've set myself like I mean I may go over it like it depend if it's something I really really want yeah like yeah. it something but it has really to want. be like you know it's got to be like you know I don't know something yeah, I really, 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 really want patch really want but like forty like mummy you know you just pay more and you'll just pay more and then it's like yeah i set my limit for today but then you see a record that you really like and then like well you can have anything right. if you've got the money right, money, right. Yeah. so yeah. i'm but like so and kind of like i don't know like the hunt is kind of a part of it i guess you yeah. know what i mean yeah, yeah, like and so when you finally kind of get like i really, really want i like i had been wanting that shove nigger off uh compilation that horror creatures comp that came out like i don't know 10 years ago or whatever and like they only made a couple of hundred copies of it and it's been long gone you know and like it goes for like north of a hundred dollars like on discogs and everything and one day man i just it just popped up on there for like 30 bucks 
And like, dude, when I got that, that was like the best fucking day ever, man. Right. That band yeah, has the most fight starting his name ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. My old roommate bit. used to tell me, man, you can't say that in like in public. And I was like, man, fuck you. <laughs> Well, I mean, it means you were watching for it, too. Yeah. Discogs is insane. It yeah. can be. Yeah, we'll You've seen demo that. tapes for $300? Yeah, I've seen demo tapes for, like... I mean, I, I'll tell seen, you right now, I've never spent $300 like on a cassette. Like two, ever. 300 quid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know how to use Discogs, but I, I have some friends that one of their bands constantly was getting bootlegged in some of their tapes. They're like a black metal band and went for, like, between six hundred to a thousand dollars, and um, they've tried, and and they're not getting any of the fucking money, right. and they refuse to let anybody repress their music. Um, it's uh, the band Weakling, and like oh, people yeah. are just like constantly trying to bootleg their shit on Discogs, and I fucking hate that culture of Discogs where like these random pieces of shit are selling artists fucking music and making money off the bands while the bands get dick yeah, yeah fucking yeah. and if it's not even real that's even fucking worse yeah, yeah. Dude. well yeah. and that's the thing with weekly like they fucking get bootlegged all the time mm. and it, it's fucking you got one oh I'll tell you. <laughs> this man yeah. has come with the weak link tape no. Bleak. who have we got there oh, you got shit. a boot too yeah yeah it's the boot <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the fucking holy grail for a lot of people. Wow. Pretty sick. Yeah. I don't have that. Yeah. I, I mean, the I I love I I love uh, Weakling, but I like all of the Gossard stuff is really really amazing. I've been chasing to Spirit for fucking forever, but uh, I I personally love the Galt. The Galt is my favorite. That's the Galt. Yeah, the Galt's like the. The one, like right, everything else is kind of okay, you know. But like, I, I mean, I, I love Asunder too, and yeah. and the spirit. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about Asunder. Um, but uh, yeah, the spirit has like, fuck, they have like ten albums recorded that they just shelf. Like John Gossard is a fucking maniac. He records every practice, and they practice two to three times a week. And they've been wow. a band for almost twenty years. So, uh, <laughs> and they've done three cassette tapes that are all live recordings from their uh practice space so there's yeah. an insane output that that guy has uh, but he just won't put it out mm. a true diehard he only cares about the music nice. fucking really well, you really mentioned cool asunder just now are they they yeah. have some kind of connection to like weakling and yeah yeah it's same guitar it's the same dude okay yeah they have yeah. an uh, old asunder record you should fucking sell it dude <laughs> 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 it's worth some money <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've had my, I've had my sell-offs, you know, in, you know, like in certain like aspects. Like, I think I had to get my car got fucking repossessed or whatever, and I had to like oh, yeah. sell like a bunch of shit for like in two weeks, you know. Yeah. But it is what it is. I mean, I don't. I uh, but uh, Francisco uh, from Jamming Out All Badass, he was going through a seven-inch collection, and then he passed by the uh, Beherit Death Yell splits a seven-inch. Oh yeah. Like, Fuck. Dude, I had that. I still had that shit. You know? Special. What makes. What. That. What makes special packaging reissues more important? Yep. Yeah. Label shirts. I mean, Rule? Cool. Weakling definitely got that CD for 10 bucks from some distro. Cool. Do you have any label shirts? I have like five of them. Cool. <laughs> no, I don't have any. I have a carbonized shirt. I got the un Unsunder CD from Hell's Headbangers for five bucks. Nice. Yeah, I think it's the record that's worth all the money. I think only label and shirt I have was Victory. Oh, that was a horrible label. That the sucks. Spirit, <laughs> the Spirit most almost played the record store here in the Tenderloin, but it got shut down by the cops eight years ago. Oh, yeah, that was a... Uh, I like that. Oh, that's Rob. Okay, yeah. yeah. I played that record store. Um, <coughs> a big black metal record store in the heart of, like, fucking Skid Row in San Francisco. You go outside, a bunch of dudes in corpse paint, and a bunch of people, like, shooting up, doing real black death shit. <laughs> and fucking dying and shooting each other right next door. That was a cool club. <laughs> yeah. So Rob's yeah. saying, what's up? Got a Necroharmonic yeah. shirt? Cool, man. Um... 
shit was bad, but I love my 90s hardcore. Definitely, dude. I like their bulldog, I guess, they had. Yeah, they had a cool... I mean, I get. Yeah, man. I guess, like, as far as, like... You know, the, uh, also, like, uh, again, I want to get back at rolling with the record, uh, the record label thing. Like, I think a lot of record labels, they don't just put out albums, basically. So... Transylvania would be a good example of that. Like, you put out a lot of, like, non-album releases, you know? Yeah. Do you see that you're not in the top fucking 100 lists? <laughs> That's okay. Because I'm a I know that. I'm, I know that. I'm just asking because do you see yeah. that you're in it because it's not an album? No, I just think that um, I'm, like, not paying for PR and I refuse to, like, suck people's assholes. So, like, I'll tell people go <laughs> yeah. get fucked. And, like, if you don't like it, I don't really give a shit. It's for me, you know? Oh, like, right. and, yeah, 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 I think know, Jeff so was getting at that earlier. Like, like yeah, certain, yeah. certain, certain so like, just... top ten lists, hundred lists, etc. They're Those written by, like, for. PR places. Yeah, I mean, it's all paid for, so it's like, you know, I, I can't really fault people. If people are going to... For me, my ideology is i want people that are actual fans of music that genuinely seek it out to find it and if they like it then that's all that matters because they're going to tell their friends and it's going to be like an organic word of mouth sort of thing versus paying for somebody to spam email uh random people and try to put it up on these cocksucking websites that no one fucking reads and it's just like i don't like for me, I don't give a shit about what anyone's opinion is about music if they don't play in a band that I don't respect. So all these fucking people that have these top 100 lists, if you're not in a band that I give a shit about, I don't give a shit what you fucking think about music because you're not a musician. What about a like, fan though, like me? Like I'm not in a band. Yeah, well, you're a tastemaker. You've been around since the beginning, so I, yeah, I respect you've you. Been around for fucking years, man. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you know, like I, I do think that that's not to say that we don't see eye to eye exactly on everything. I don't expect anybody to like. No. I'm into fucking weird shit, oh, and I imagine stuff. you're into weird stuff. I know you really love your lo-fi hip hop and shit like sure. that. I, I'm not gonna be like, hey, Roy, you, you should check out this fucking goth band I just put out. I think you're gonna love it. You know, it's, it's well. I saw you put out like false figure or something. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I, I gave it a listen, and I was like, eh, it's not really my thing, you know. Yeah, but it's you like, have like, say, you put out like Sivorous, which I right, do like, right, right, you yeah. know. And I'm like, damn, this is. You have a very mixed bag label, which totally. is yeah. different because yeah. a lot of record labels are pretty. You know, there's a lot of like, I don't want to say just, one trick pony, but yeah, pretty fucking like a similar bands. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's that's what I try to go a, away from because it's like I don't know I play in metal bands I fucking been around for forever I don't just listen to metal um, I like other types of music so it's like I want to incorporate that into the label that I do and be an extension of like my own personal preference so I you know I like different shit and I think that that's kind of like um, alienating maybe to like uh certain like staunch metal people like you know like you you mentioned maggot stomp it's like they know what they're going for like they want the hardcore kids that just got into death metal yes like, that's that's their bread and butter and like that makes them money and that's great but if, like for me i i don't really i i really like scott and and i i appreciate what he's doing as a label a lot but like i don't listen to the bands that he puts out but i i still respect him and it's like it's the same thing it's like i don't want to just be this is me i'm a death metal label like i want to do other things because it just kind of gets boring you know and I mean, that's the only bad thing about me on here death metal podcast because like after right. <laughs> a while i'm like fuck i want to talk about horror movies i want to talk about yeah. you know like i can't talk about hip-hop on here obviously but no, i could obviously no. have no. to have its own fucking channel for it you know oh yeah i saw this uh the horrendous is on a lot of lists and I don't, I don't, uh. I don't, I don't know. I saw them live and, and, uh, they went on tour with some friends and they're, they're, they're wonderful people. Yeah. But everybody is in the underground. Everyone's a cool guy. That, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. well, that's no uh, measure. Uh, 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 cool. oh, the worst question I could get asked at a show is what do you think of our stuff? Like, uh, Ugh. I love that one. Cause I'd be like, you guys are really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I like if you I've lead with, asked that, it shows like, oh, what do you think of all stuff? It's like, uh, I've used that. Yeah, that's a weird thing to ask. 
Where well, is I think Caligari? that if you lead with uh, what the fuck would you ask they are in the first person? place. <laughs> Let's give a thumbs up to like Odin and Moribund Records for sure, dude. I don't know yeah. about this label is not in existence anymore, brother. No, no, no. Caligari is fucking wonderful. Like uh, his output is, he's up there with Dylan, in my opinion, with Head Split. Like, yep. it's it's hard to keep up with everything that they do because they do like I feel like I do a lot, but they do like 50, 60 mm-hmm. releases a year, and they're yeah. just constantly pumping shit out. But you know, if they're stamping something, it's worth listening to at least. Yeah, and it it's pretty quality. Like, um, and. And those two labels are consistently like if you're somebody that's just trying to find out about sick new bands, you should follow those labels, both Head Split and Caligari, because you might not love everything, but it's going to be better than some of the, like uh, like a fucking relapse or something like that, yeah. where it's got this like refined sound that's you know marketable. They put out dingy, disgusting. You know, so speaking of head shit. split, this is the this is their output for 2023 right here. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty fucking insane, dude. I mean, these and are that's a lot of just releases. one. That's only one page of it. Right. There's three pages of it. <laughs> and and it no, I think this is. <laughs> I think he split up into multiple <laughs> pages, but this is the total. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you have a lot of really banging ass releases on here. I could see at least three that I was banging out pretty fucking hard, dude, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, they, you know, like that Stenched, I liked a lot. And definitely Pestigore, I've been a fan since 1991. He put out out Depigus and and the Bog. uh, I don't know, it's it's, it's hard for me to see. Of course, (laughs) I'm fucking blind. (laughs) <laughs> so I mean there was a, quite a few things here Sequestrum <laughs> it was one of my uh, I was banging out in the car a few times uh, On tape was on there. Hemorrhoid, so Hemorrhoid. A, lot of good, a lot of good stuff you know Yeah Hemorrhoid. I think Hemorrhoid's his band <clears throat> where, is, where is yeah, Head yeah. Split on the live cast He's in the fucking chat brother I sent you an what invite What the fuck Dylan He's, He's probably working. like taking care yeah, of his kid Join us. Oh, yeah, It's a little early <laughs> Yeah we usually do our shit a little later with him Hey guys, I'm gonna have to get out of here, but thank you Thanks, for having Jeff. me. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate um, it. Later, Jeff. Real, real quick before I go, just to add to the discussion one more time, Werewolf Records out of Finland is doing a lot of amazing stuff. They've got two of my favorite releases of the year: White Death and Vargrav. Uh, so check them out too. They're on uh, Bandcamp and all of that. So it's it's where just spelled the correct way: W E Werewolf Records from Finland. Werewolf Records from Finland. Yeah, great. Cool, man. We'll check it. Great to see you guys. Thank yeah. you, Roy. Thank you for coming on, man. Take care, guys. Jesus. Jesus. Thanks. Jesus. Take care. Thanks, brother. Label Jesus. for the people. When I look at my 2023 new releases I bought, a majority of the bands are head split. Good man. Werewolf is fucking sick. Love the new White Death. What's Jeff, Jeff's YouTube channel? He said it was called... He said, I don't know, you have to rewrite it. It's something to do with... Um, it's a podcast. Metal Anus or something. <laughs> metal Anus. Metal Anima. Metal, metal Anima. Anima, that's it. Yeah. Metal nice. Anima. So definitely check that out. I'm going to check that out afterwards. Stenched, for sure. Stenched and Blood Harvest. Yeah, Blood Harvest is definitely a sick label. True. Redefining Darkness is a good label. They've definitely put out a lot of good, good stuff. Yeah, good Chaos stuff. is underrated. Yeah, the Mexican Chaos label, definitely, definitely. Yeah, he's put out some stuff I put out too. He's you cool. can tell Go Throne he put puts out a lot of cystic thought. That cystic album, right? The new cystic. You could tell yeah. Go Throne puts a lot of thought into what he puts out. Aaron's a good dude. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I know that dude. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Bestial burst from Finland. Cool. Yeah, it's Metal Enema. If anybody wants to check it out, he said they got the .dot com too. Brutal yeah, Death like, fans, new standard elite put out six shit. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Man, yeah, yeah, cool. dude, there, there's a, there is so much of that shit. In What's a, up, Francisco? In Thank you for joining our oh. album record yeah, label dude, of the I, year uh, show. Oh, I, uh, I'm doing. Show. I'm I'm that guy that goes to see a band that wears that band shirt to the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh hell yeah! I can honestly say I've never done that. I've never gone to let's say uh, I don't know mortician show and worn a mortician shirt, but I'm doing yeah. it today. 
I guess oh, way, yeah. I got like five label shirts now. Most of them were, you gotta be honest, they were just kind of given to me. I gotta go throw one. I couldn't find it, Aaron. Sorry, I couldn't find it. This is the, oh, you're good. This is the <laughs> first one I found. I wear um, whatever is on top of the clean pile, basically. I don't no pick shit. out clothing. <laughs> I don't Bro, know. you got a green screen in the back? Oh, me? Yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm a fucking professor over here. What do you think? What do you think I'm running some kind of fucking? What do you think I'm running some kind of fucking janky operation over here? Hell yeah. No, dude, it's a, all you got to do is all you got to do is upload a photo and Streamyard will do it by itself for you. No weak oh, shit. Wow. Numero yeah, that's uno. All you do. So Francisco, no weak shit. You're yeah, old record. Yeah, I haven't released that's anything in twenty years, but yeah, here we go. There we go. I mean, <laughs> you did release some sick shit though. I mean, you put out Dead, Gore Beyond Necropsy, Re- yeah, yeah, a couple things, yeah, a couple things. But before that was, they were known. Yeah, that was before. That was in twenty twenty three. So I wanted to kind of. I don't know. What, I, I was watching, but trying to get trying to get some uh, some uh, the topic back on track. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. I yeah, came in here to be a moderator. It's like, hey, man. Thank you. Hey, yeah, keep us on track, brother. We need that right now. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, dude. So I've got to start off with my boy Roy. I've known Roy for Appreciate 30 it. something fucking years, right? So Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. And uh, I saw your tape. I saw ETD on the top something list for uh, uh, you somebody know, from it, Texas. Here's, here's my thing on that, honestly. Yep. If it's somebody that... Like let like, like like uh Bill from Relapse. He told me he fucking made a list and it, it was on it. But if if something I release turns out on something I know nothing about, then I'm like, what you know, I don't know. It makes me feel kinda weird. You, you know what I mean? It's mm. like, eh, maybe I don't know, maybe I'm I don't know. Like and I'm glad it does it. Uh because I I, I, I try to stay as you know, you know I don't promote my shit on, on my yeah. own shows. But uh but yeah, I don't know. It's just it's cool, you know. People dig it. Aaron, I want to say Aaron from Go Throne has been doing a lot. Yeah, he released my shit, but uh, he's got a lot of cool releases this year, and I think you showed his stuff. Yep, uh, off screen we did that fucking Infestation of Evil release. I know he's wearing that shirt. I wish I would have. I wish I would gone to that show because that's that's like the most satanic logo of all time. It's got <laughs> like forty. How, did anybody ever count how many upside down crosses are on that logo? There's over fifty, I'm sure. Four. Yeah, exactly. So, but that band rules. Uh, he did that Wolf School Hexaea split this year, which is fucking great. Uh, uh, did that Ruin CD? I yeah. think that Chris showed in his video. Uh, that Porphyrion band, which I never heard, but I heard it. Uh, oh, you put out Porphyrion? Yeah. yeah. Dude, fuck yeah. Yeah, he yeah. put that out. That's pretty cool. Uh, and I'm trying to, I'm going off the top of my head, but, uh, Mike uh, Abominator wanted to say, um, he's at work too. And the best labels are, are, are goat throne and noxious ruin. Tell him I said that. So <laughs> cool. there you go. Oh, yeah. It's coming from Mike from ruin. Yeah. Noxious ruin put out a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he does those, uh, I know it's not, well, I guess it is a label, right? It is a label. Cause he puts out some limited shit. Some, uh, uh, this packaging is kind of crazy, which I know Roy is anti-packaging, according to this chat you were having earlier. <laughs> but uh, but I, it's funny hearing him saying that because if you look at the CDs that Roy put out, the booklets the booklets are fucking insane. So it, it's weird hearing him say that, oh, you know, you know, packaging, whatever. But when he puts a release out, he puts a, a booklet with like fucking 27 pages or whatever you know yeah. what i mean like, i mean which is cool it's a discography it kind of deserves a history behind it and i've actually declined to put out a release from a very well-known band who was on earache who was big and they're very well known and basically they gave me all their demo stuff and i i said well i need a history for this from you basically right and right. that stopped the thing dead in its tracks right there dude yeah because I, uh, I wanted a history straight from the fucking band dude you know yeah, and then uh, who, who else? Oh, uh, Rotter Records. I, 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 Rotter Records, Oscar's cool. He did yep. some cool stuff with you. Um, what was the other one? Vomit. Obviously, obviously, Vomit Records. Thank you. Thank you, Vomit Records. Optimo yeah. out of Mexico has done some cool shit. I uh, put up that, that Demon Eye CD, which is fucking great. If anybody hasn't heard that Demon Eyes, it's, it, it's like black death metal with Optimo and Gene from Angel Corpse. 
in the band. Reverence to Paroxysm. Paroxysm. Uh, Casa Lumbra. Those are good releases. Yeah, for sure. And he puts out like some uh, older, like super obscure, like Mexico bands, uh, like demos on CD or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. So Vomit Records out of Mexico is cool. And you can get you can get Antimo stuff through through Aaron, through Hell's Headbangers, through Head Split and all that shit. So because I know you were t- you were talking about how shipping is is nuts. So mm-hmm. it's always cool when U.S. distros do those trades so we don't have to. That's another thing about labels that, that people people don't fucking understand that it is a cool thing they do. It's like, hey, I'll, I'll send you 10 of my CDs and that way I can get it from, from Aaron and not have to order it from Spain or wherever the fuck, you know what I mean? Uh, so. I've been 50-50 on that and getting more back into trying to get more back into trading again. I've been very slow going with that because I got caught with a lot of fucking sinkers and door fucking holders over the years. Yeah, so yeah, like, oh yeah. You know, when you see a distro CD that you've had for 20 fucking years, basically, <laughs> it's pretty fucking crazy to have something that's, like, that old. What's up, Necron? Oh. To have something that old that laid around in your distro the entire time. And it's yes. kind of scary in a way, because it's Fuck like, that, wow, man. nobody likes this fucking band. Like, those, those are like giveaways. Mm. I mean, <laughs> that's the stuff y'all send me to give away. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were checking no. out uh, Hakovics earlier. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah a, that's a new, that's a new Hakovic. New Hakovics is out today too, or not today, uh, but it's Vic out Records now. Records put out good stuff, definitely, dude. Damn, Hakovics has been around for a while. They have been. Yeah, yeah. they have been. They have put There's a new one out this year. The Plague Transmission CD earlier today. Yeah. Cool, Go man. Throne. Yeah. Go Throne. Double What's up, disc. Ian? How's it going, brother? Ian. Oh, yeah. Which yeah, Ian there was uh, the layout. Yeah, Ian did that fucking Ian did the layout. layout. They could say that yeah. without everything, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aaron, are That's there any plans layout. for y'all to do that on tape? Um, not with me. Uh, but we'll see. What, a double tape? There's politics in the metal scene. Nuts decay. Nuts decay. Yeah. Um, How's it going, Carl? I saw a message, but I didn't get to read it. It said something like, I broke my hand. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, oh, dude. Yeah. Who were you beating up? A poser. <laughs> and, uh, but I realized I need to put some spikes on it. Oh, that, that yeah. neck boxer break. Hey, uh, can I, sign, can I sign it, Carl? Can I sign yes, it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to head off. Oh, you right, Jake. Thank you, for, thank you for stopping in, brother. It's like oh, um, really early in the morning here right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank Peace, you, brother. Man. Thank you, man. Is that really a cast, dude? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jake. It's a What's temp. I'm, I'm supposed to go oh, see a better shit. doctor. This is just like is emergency it? room shit. Is oh, it here man. or here? It's actually down here, and they said I'm pretty fucked because I might need surgery. All these little oh, bones down here. Oh, dude. Mm. Damn, dude. What happened to Dive bombs. Player. All the fucking dive bombs. Oh, <laughs> Too much tension on that shit. Did right? nice. Necro Wolf bite you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got, ra- you got rabies now. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. Was there a Cowboys game or what? Appreciate you, Jake. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. anyone oh, I, I, hear, I hear you, Aaron. Yes, I'm winning, by the way, too. <laughs> if you need an update. Yeah. Uh, I got my fat ball going on down here on my phone, so. Uh, okay. I'm updated. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not going to ask you how you broke it because it's your hand, you know? He was flipping posers or canoes. <laughs> <laughs> Too many canoe flipping down here. <laughs> Sorry to a see little, that. A little, uh, a little heavier down here in Texas. You know? Yeah. They're, they're, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The necro heifers, man. They got they got huge food <laughs> stores heavy. down there. Man. <laughs> whole fucking store. I remember going to San Antonio to fly in and like I go in the store and the whole fucking store was cupcakes and candy bars. I'm like, oh, oh, shit. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sounds like a good snack. store. <laughs> I mean, what what do you guys have? Fucking I mean, carrots or what? No, no, but I mean, it was like there was no regular food in there. It was just fucking cupcakes, candy bars, and fucking sodas, you know? I don't think going to a Bucky's. Roy's, yeah, I don't think Roy's been to a Bucky's. Hey, 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 we got Gatorade too. Don't act like we're oh, okay, <laughs> healthy now. <laughs> yeah, we got Gatorade. Necro heifers. <laughs> <laughs> So Carl, what about Carl? What about I don't want you know. know Carl. Let's talk to you about your mm-hmm. albums and you know like what you think about like record labels and you you know you've 
you've done some releases. It uh, came out on like uh, Dark Descent recently. Yeah. And then, um, you know, like where, you know, as far as like record labels and collecting and everything, that's what this whole show is about, you know? Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, there's just one label in Texas run by this guy, Aaron. Hmm. <laughs> I tell you that guy. It's so hard to get back to you. <clears throat> oh, hey, Aaron, what's up? No, actually, not. You know, you know, he put out our shit, but I think Aaron's okay. doing some kick-ass stuff with Goat Throne. He yep. is putting out good release, and I just, you know, heard what he's gonna be doing in the future. He got some Joe's band. Oh yeah, Necroblade. Necroblade. Yeah, I'm excited to hear that. Cool. I'm actually excited to hear the Morden Red album. I mean, it's I coming up. Morden, yeah, I want to hear that. That should be fun. Um, yeah, that's gonna be cool, dude. Yeah, and I do like the Infestation of Evil. I yep. love the Hexay of Whoops Gold Split. Hell yeah! Um, and of course, Roy. Roy, I know you're not gonna talk about yourself, but Caustic Vomit is one of my favorites. Hell this yeah! This year, the Disma, um, Hell yeah! Mendium CD and Bloodstorm Vinyl cassette. Which one? Bloodstorm cassette. The Bloodstorm yep. cassette, Have and of course, um, Cinder Witch. Ceremonium cassette. I'm sorry, Ceremonium. Where's um? Um, Skullface, old fucking disguster, man. Head split's been kicking ass too. Yeah. So, I mean, those are stuff I can think of off the top of my head. Now, I get stuff here and there, you know, from different labels. I like some Nuclear War now. Sure. Ah, excuse me. Got caught now. Nuclear War now releases are good. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's still a lot of good labels, but now good stuff. But I like if I had to pick a hot label, man. You don't, have to, you don't have to pick anything yeah. on here. This is just a, basically the show is just about like talking about labels. And oh it. yeah, and, um, you know, um, Invictus from Europe, man, they release some kick ass shit too. They do, yeah. Like Pius Levis, like Pius yeah, Levis nice and Omega man. Vortex. But I live like I got to get that new Militia. I mean Militia. I'm all Texas Militias. Um, Militia. Oh yeah, yeah. From Finland, I want to get that new EP because their last one destroyed. I can't oh, not Evan, see Evan what Evan is holding there. Bring, bring it to the screen, Evan. What does he have? What you got, Evan? Aaron's got all the heavy shit, dude. Yes, yeah, except that good Porphyrian. Oh, that Porphyrian on that. Uh, yeah, uh, Porphyrian. Yeah. Aaron yeah, put that. I don't out. know. You can't really see it that well. Yeah. Oh, well, and what's the Putridarium? Putridarium. Right, Split that Roy did. Yeah. Right. yeah it's yeah. buried over here. But this one too, Dylan put out. Fuck oh it, yeah, um, head split release. Yeah, what is it? Worm? Abysmal Worm. This shit's fucking grinding badass in this from Germany if you ain't picked this up, man. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Trippy Looking covered. forward to the Mordant Red. Aaron is good peeps with good releases. Stoked for both. Um, let me see here. Hope you feel better, Necron. <laughs> got, got Necron on solo. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, Hexa. 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 <laughs> Show the arm. <laughs> <laughs> It needs some spikes, right? It looks a lot cooler. Maybe when okay, I get the it's abysmal worm. worm. That's the release. Yeah, abysmal worm. Abyssal yeah. worm. Abyssal yeah. worm. Yeah, abyssal. Not for abysmal. sure. Thank you too for the chat. I mean, now we want to hear it from the fucking chat too, man. I want to hear mm. what labels you fuck with. You know what I mean? Because I know a lot of you guys are physical only. You know, <laughs> well, even if, if you're you not, did. even if you're digital or you're Spotify, like. I, did you guys notice? I mean, has anyone noticed this that like Spotify like will sometimes not show the record label at the bottom? Yeah, uh, sometimes the distributor or whoever put it up won't list it. I think that's fucked up. <laughs> I don't even listen to Spotify. I wouldn't know. I don't, know. I don't, I don't know. fuck with it. Yeah, I, don't um, fuck with it. I just want to say I know a lot of people were or they were sharing the Porphyrion or I I don't know. I'm ignorant. I don't know how to say that shit right. But uh, the drummer has this black metal band. I put out his new album uh, this year. Correct. Uh, Fork Tongue of Fire, Veruta. Nice. Really killer, uh, sort of second wave, uh, Emperor Worship. Um, kind of got some Magua, uh influences in there too. Pretty killer black metal. If you're looking for some new US black metal um, and you dig. Uh, we have a that really man. poignant Check question it. here. I'm sorry to cut you off, but how many labels are there? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> how many how many blades of grass are in Texas? What? Yeah, how many grains <laughs> of sand are on the fucking beach? <laughs> just like, uh, wow, Woo. Yeah, All too right. many. Hey, so James, you show's over. How many members? Too uh, fucking many. Too fucking many. 
or in Noroth? Uh, well, because Porphyrion is just a two piece, I think. So, uh, and Noroth is the same. It's well, Noroth is a four piece, I think, but it's the same two members. Yeah, okay. And then, uh, oh, I, I didn't know that. Was, yeah, I forget what their other project is because um, the the drummer that's in all those bands, he also plays in um, the Abysmalists and then um, Unearnment as well. And he, he also played in this really fucking killer, like, I don't know, everyone's pretty metal here, but I fucking love Crust, and he played in Sanctum, which is like cool legendary band, in my opinion. Francisco's uh, Crust. Yeah. So let's uh, yeah. the chat. Uh, I like the old, the old shit, yeah. 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 I, so so Sanctum was one of those ones that, to me, when uh, he, I'm just like, oh, fuck, hell yeah, dude, you were in that project, and now you're doing all this sick death metal? That's awesome. Okay, got here late, but I wanted to mention... Uh, I'll read it for you, Masako Unoho. Yeah, <laughs> and I spoke with oh, yeah. the uh, label owner from that label today, actually, and he sent me this, too, to show. Let me see here. This was their releases for 2023. Fucking so, solid. Yeah, this is a solid fucking release. Like, yeah. where's this from? Where's that from? UK. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, Undergang, wow. Snet, Split, yeah. that Sonic uh, Poison that you yeah. were uh, flexing, Carl. Uh, Morbific, slime, Cryptworm, Morbific, um, Transgressor. Transgressor. Yeah. Yep. Sedimentium. These are all Astro really Paris. solid fucking releases. The great. So he he put out Sonic Poison on vinyl. Yeah, he's basically the Dark Descent. He's their, their guy own. in the UK. Yeah. Right. Uh. So they put out like a lot of the same releases. And then he also does stuff a lot with Extremely Rotten as well. Uh, you know and he's got one of the coolest logos. That's super smart of those guys too, man. Yeah. Yes. As far as like break up the release. Yeah. You're not paying for the whole fucking vinyl press. Right. Right. And it and the spread is there, you know. Yeah, right. Totally. Hey, there's a there's another label, uh, Unholy Domain. Pretty cool yeah, European yeah, Unholy label. Unholy Domain. Oh yeah. Yeah, he does some good stuff. Yeah. He does new stuff and he does reissues. Let's, yeah. Let's, I want to yeah. flex this too. I forgot about it earlier. Oh, oh thank you. Got a show yeah. with uh, John McEntee, and he's going to make Sick. his uh, top picks. This is on January first, huh? Two thousand twenty-four. Yeah. Bringing in the new year with McEntee. Dude. Fucking a, dude. That was exactly uh, the face I made when I broke my hand too. Oh, <laughs> I mean, hopefully the other person's face looked worse. This is some, yeah, this is something that probably a lot of people saw over this past year too. And I mean, I saw it a lot. I'm not familiar with every band on the label, but this label seemed like they put out a lot of stuff. Is that Twenty bucks? bucks spin. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, they put out you know, um, Vastum. They Maul. put out the new Vastum, yeah. I bought the Send the Dead from them. Oh, is it Send the Dead? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that Send the Dead. Yeah, the latest was on there. Yeah. Two Mold. I mean, I see this uh, label's name yeah, pop up a lot. on there now. I need to check out the new Ruin Lust. I, I think that the drummer of that band is like one of my favorite drummers in US black metal, and he's playing death metal in that band, but he used to play in this band called the. Bell Voices, and then he was in Vord, and he's in Yellow Eyes, and uh, he was in Sanguine Eagle, and uh, he he's like this fucking just really, really, really crushing uh, drummer, and that's his like war metal band uh, with the guys from fuck. Uh, you said Ash drummer, Ford. so yeah, he's yeah. in sixteen bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good That's band. Um, I, I haven't checked out a lot That'd of the good drummers in hundred bands and... this year, but uh, I mean, I know that uh, the Mournful Congregation stuff's probably pretty good. Uh, Definitely, dude. The, uh, their name popping in the street a lot, you know. What's that yeah. label? I just thought of a label. Uh, Discordia uh, Records, uh, Columbia, Karachi Noise, Columbia, Exumer, RAC, Columbia. Cult Copsy Canada, all all underground digital and physical. Cool man. What, what's Never that? Yeah. Crucimentian's new label from Canada. Right. Profound, Profound Lord. Lord. Profound Lord. They do have some cool oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, who's that? Who's the label that? And maybe it's just the guys in the band, but who's the one that put that Ejecutador tape and that new Caveman Cult tape? 
because those are two of my favorite things I heard this year. Mm. Uh, it's alt alt m i a or alt m e a or I don't know how you pronounce it. But I they, think that that's one of the guys I'm, in the band, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's um, what's his name? The bass player for Caveman and uh, yeah, and, yeah. That's what I thought. But those two releases were cool. Dark Descend rules too. Twenty bucks spin, fun. constantly putting out good stuff. Undergang was killer. <clears throat> Fuck yeah. Uh, noise war, nerve altar, dismal ruin. We had seen a comment earlier. Hold on a sec. Um, da, 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 da. woodcut. Yeah, nerve altar put a out a lot of good stuff. And they won't tape on seven inch. So definitely woodcut records. Would like to check them out more. Uh, Stygian Black Hand, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good uh, dudes. For sure. Oh, Jesse. how can I forget? Uh, my boy Ralph Haunted Hotel, still going at it for many years. He put out a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah, also, we got like, an invite, like... so he might be on. Oh, okay, cool. Ralph does mostly grind, grindcore, hardcore stuff. Uh, but his distro is, he's got he's got a bunch of stuff in there that it's kind of like, you know those. Like when you find something like, oh, fuck, I can't believe somebody still has this kind of thing. There's stuff like that you can find in there. Uh, Dude, Clay too, man. Clay, Rescue Rescue from Life life also, yes. I'm glad that Chris mentioned uh, Clay, and I think he may have mentioned it on your show. That's some gnarly shit, dude. I got that Trescender tape from him. Do you guys like punk rock? Of course. Sure. I put out a punk release this year. No. (laughs) I mean, I like punk rock from 1970 to like you know 1983 maybe and that's it so yeah. i mean maybe the rest I mean, of you are we like considering punk. like hardcore as punk rock then yeah yeah i mean i don't you know for me yeah I'm not a huge yeah. punk fan that shit belongs on mars man that shit belongs on mars <laughs> let me get my fucking zebra suit on and tell you it more oh dude we're watching that video where the, those guys like totally fucking they found him. Put that guy yeah they put that guy him. on the spot and they said, do you yeah. still He goes, no, I gave that stuff up a long time ago. And they put, like, Poser. Poser. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the country music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's hilarious, dude. That was pretty uh, hilarious. Oh, one more. Uh, somebody that highly influenced me to do a label many years ago, and he's still going, probably for, like, 40-something years now, is Charlie Infection, uh, Fudgeworthy Records. He's put out some psycho stuff this year. He's still putting out some... Some like grindcore stuff, but another guy whose distro he had. I went in there, I looked the other day, he had some of Roy's out of print releases in there. So, mm. just saying, nice. oh, I seen that list. You're right. Yeah, I just mean, he always has. One. You know what? Back in the day of the maximum rock and roll kind of hitting the shelves out in New, in New Jersey, there, yes. I would buy maximum rock and roll only to look at Charlie Infection's fucking tape list. Yeah, or, or tape in seven inch list. He's a total it was like legend. Four dollars a seven inch or something. Yeah, dude, he used to get. That's why. I, that's where my seven inch collection uh, grew a lot because of him back in back in the early nineties or whatever. With you would could get a seven inch for three bucks. Yeah, I, he's still at four it. bucks. Yeah, and he's still at it. Still playing drums. Still playing blast beats. At he just turned like sixty two or something the other day. Damn. It's insane. Totally, totally. What is that? Fudge worthy records? Exactly. Yeah, fudge worthy records. Okay. Alternative okay. tentacles? Are they still around? I don't even know. They are. They're yeah, still they still around. do all the all Mark, the reissues Mark, and stuff. I don't know if they're still around. Fr- uh Frazier, you're like ten years behind your name. Clagmar. <laughs> I don't think Spine Farm <laughs> puts out any releases anymore either. Hey, I don't know if you guys paid attention. Six two five. There's a Chinese label, uh Han Kwan records uh, yeah. dude yeah they've been putting out they uh put yeah, out that oppressive album on some stuff yeah, yeah I, thought that was, too, I thought that was a joke at first dude when, no, when you said that <laughs> <laughs> francisco was making that <laughs> so, like we I had a successful there's another one so. there's another one the area of death isn't that from china or something like that i don't know they put out very asimilar releases so sometimes i wonder if it's the same guy you know Kwan Kwan. It now. Hong oh, there Kong. it is. Yeah. Shit was as I was typing, exactly. <laughs> Sharing music. Gotcha. Yeah. Do we already talk uh, about Carpet Nice? Isn't that no, a... we didn't I mentioned them, them but okay. we should. We should talk yeah, about we should them. talk about them. I like some of the releases. 
But morbid, morbid, uh, I'm a big Funeral Mist fan. I think they rule. Oh fuck yeah! The new Morbid Dawn uh, record is fucking wonderful. If Mortuous. you're into like uh, and Mortuous, yeah, I mean, but that's I'm biased on that. You live uh, with the guys from Mortuous, right? Yeah, yeah, we play in a band together too. <laughs> oh, so it's go. like, yeah. <laughs> we cut out that Funeral Leech. Uh, yeah, that Funeral Leech EP, right? Oh that yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Carbonize is sick. Carbonize still, is doing great. Still they, bearing hand. Still bearing hand, yeah. Uh, they put out the yeah, the, still seven inch, hand. Yeah. the kiss cover uh, as well uh, this year, and yeah, I mean, we we do an ad together. So I was going to ask: Is two are two labels run out of your house, or just uh, no, no, no it's just somewhere it, else. I live by myself. Um, it's just like we play in a band together, and we're like best friends. So it's like we 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 just been around each other since uh you know i met chad from carbonize when he was 15 or 16 so right. and we're in our 30s now so we've been just been championing each other so that's cool. good hey, I mean, is that's there any uh is there any distro only places shrill cries um not that i know of just because i barely have enough room for my own stuff so i don't know is that cheryl cries dude still doing anything a little bit a little bit he shut down for a long time yeah he shut down for a vacay i i didn't see dread records mentioned here they were pretty dope put out a lot of interesting did they do anything this year who dread yeah. He did something. I forgot what it was. So. He did something yeah, bigger just lately. He did yeah, a dying year, bride a, a demo on his cassette. I think demo. the year before he did like um, some like uh, a up. bunch of like funeral doom stuff. Like he did some evoking that Evoking's I was like, what the fuck? How did you get that? Yeah, but uh, it was cool, man. Yeah, I, I I mean I love evoking. So I was just like. How how did this dude that's never had a label land evoking? Also, Dissident cool. Records, we should talk about. They're cool. Yeah. Dissident Tapes, I should say. I think Dissident they're tapes. called. Yeah. Hey, hey, Roy. Uh, What's up, brother? The guy there, uh, Johnny. I don't know. I don't know if you want to bring him on, but he does a radio show called Merciless Onslaught. He's really deep into like yeah, black black Johnny. death stuff. Send me an invite. Johnny, Break you want to jump on? Johnny, you want to jump on? I can send you the link because Listen, that dude, that dude, he's he's in the know on because this I'll, is the I'll, show. This is the end of the year show for uh, Death Metal Podcast too. So if anybody Austin wants to too. hop on and say what's up and say, oh. hey, this fucking label rules, fuck you guys, then thank you as depths. Bring it, you know. Let, let me know in the chat if anybody wants to hop on and say what's up, you know, and I'll send you a, a Streamyard invite to come and say. Just to talk your shit, man. Pump the phone. Oh, yeah. Pump uh, what, is, are you at the show, Johnny? There is oh, a show. Yeah, yeah he that, can't come. He on. might be there. Is Road Racer still around? I don't know that to be. I don't know. I mean, who Transcending <laughs> Obscurity put two of my favorite releases out <laughs> Serpent of Old and Temple of Scorn. Oh, isn't that the one that put out the Trench Warfare, right? That label? Transcending Obscurity? Yeah. So, the first yeah, album. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Did you guys get any copies? Productions? Cool. They put out fucking coffee mugs and fucking like yeah. just and yeah. uh, and like shower curtains and yeah. it's it's Did fucking it's a transcending obscurity. You look at um, all their but before they have like they they even have the physical format of music available. They'll have like <laughs> shower curtains and coffee mugs and trading cards. Oh, and, when, I, when I bought oh, the trench geez. warfare. Shots fired. Um, when we, we played a show with him, I had to buy this big box of the right, first right. album to get all these fucking things. I was like, why don't you just have the CD? And he's like, no. I'm like, ah, all right. I'm well, I mean, but Evan, let's, let's be real. Wouldn't you rather have a trench warfare shower curtain than something with like flowers or something like that? I mean, be honest. Be honest. With, with, uh, with, um, with Jay staring at you while you're I can see Jay Gordon talking to him right now. <laughs> I mean, oh. you do need something to wrap the body in, so let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, hey, props to the band for actually getting copies. Uh, they're one of the few that they actually got their shit from that label. Oh, so. oh, yeah. oh. oh. Shout out to them. Fucking right. Necron dive bomb right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I've never worked with them, so I, I believe you. 
Yeah, you know what? I, I wouldn't know the band. I'm gonna, I'm I may gonna address... have with several of the bands that have worked with them. I, yeah. I don't know. I gotta address <laughs> something good. on here. Like in the in in record label world, there's a lot of fucking politics, basically. Oh yeah. So you know, like you might be friends with a band, or another label wants to put them out, or you have a bunch of foreign bands, uh, foreign labels that come at you wanting to put your releases out. Yeah. And then they just expect you to hand it to them for 30 CDs or 30 bucks or something, you know? <laughs> Which right. basically, you know, like, and the there was a label named on here from a foreign country that basically, I remember they copy and Blood pasted harvest? everything from Discogs. Because you know how, like, sometimes it has that little two next to it and everything? Like yeah. There's two bands with the same name. So they just copied yeah. and pasted all the Discog shit. And they said, we want to oh, release this. I'm thinking, you don't even know what the fuck this sounds like, dude, do you? You know, like, okay, yeah, you want to release it because the CD that I'm selling or I put out is going for 40 bucks now, a pop, you know, because it's out of fucking press. But, like, you know, it's like, it's a vampiric scene mixed with, like, kind of like a, it's, it's like you got to keep quiet and you got to, there's politics or say you want to release someone else's band. You know the right way to uh, i'm saying someone else releases a release on a label say i say it's transylvanian and then i want to release the same band like for me i'll go to the to the label sometimes and to be like hey like i really like this band i've been friends with them lately we talk a lot i'm probably gonna fuck with them you know what i mean are you cool with that are we good you know I don't think there's not too many people that fuck do that though. Basically, that's so, the way to do it though. Yeah, the nope. politics are is like a little fucked up in the record label business. Oh, are we talking about foreigners? Because <laughs> <laughs> it happens to me all the fucking time. <laughs> Keep it American. Hey, uh, can I ask Evan a question? Go for it, brother. I'm gonna hey, go get Evan. a drink. Uh, all right. Moderate hey, it for me, brother. All right. Hey Evan, so since you buy a ton of shit, you, the, the other day you showed us showed us all this crazy yeah. stuff that you had got recently. What's the label or distro that you've ordered, given more most of your money to this year? This year, uh, it's either it's going to be it's Hell's Headbangers and Nuclear War. Um, probably going to say Nuclear War. How much, how, much money, how much money you think you've set aside for a nuclear war? You don't have to answer that, but I'm just curious. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I mean, it's like uh, it hadn't been anything like crazy. Like what I showed the other day wasn't like only a small portion of that was new stuff. A lot of that had been like I've had for a while. Right. But like, let's see. I try to order like maybe at least like like maybe two or like maybe two or three records every paycheck. So like Damn. maybe six record maybe wow. six records a month. Mm -hmm. Now so, okay. like, yeah. All right. So what what are what are some of the labels? What are the labels you think are easiest to deal with? There's hardly any issues. You you rarely have any issues, or shipping is like at your at your doorstep, like within you know. Head like split, two or four or five or head, whatever. Head split. Uh, Aaron's always really good about getting me my stuff like super quick, but I mean, it's only y'all are only like technically like one state over. Doesn't matter. So, like, that doesn't matter. That counts. Yeah. Well, I've but, said stuff. I've said stuff within the state of Texas that takes longer to get to them than it does somebody in Chicago or something like that. So. Well, so I don't know, like head split. Uh, Aaron's good about it. Uh, Hell's Head Bangers is really good. Nuclear War is good. Um, those are the first that, that pop off my head. Uh, James has always been good about getting me my stuff pretty fast. There you go. All right. Um, yeah, but like those are the most, ones that immediately pop on my head, you know. Cool. Now, is there a label? Is there a label that that because uh, way back when there was labels that if Eric released something back when I was a kid, uh, more than likely I was going to buy it just based yeah. on their track record. Yeah. Uh, is there any labels like that anymore? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Head Split's good like like that. Uh, okay. Dark Descent, Dark Descent's real good like that. Uh, 
Extremely rotten. It's been good like that lately. Um, cool, man. Yeah. Intuit cool. Records. I don't love labels that put out reissues, but he does a good job finding killer Gurgling bands. Gore's been good. There's been a lot of Gurgling Gore's been pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I asked pretty, them to be on the show. Good. They had a prior commitment, though. Yeah. Because I thought, you know, but, uh, yeah, Is definitely. It? Head split, dark descent, though, definitely. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the, the, guys, wanna come the, guys on, the guys on screen are pretty good, too. Just... Thanks. <laughs> 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 I mean, James Transylvania there has been getting fucking busy, dude. Like, you put out yeah, a man. lot of stuff, brother. Can you show the watcher some of the newer stuff, maybe? You got it handy? Uh, plug, plug, plug. Don't wait. Don't well, wait, man. It's, uh, no worries. I, I'm like, I can move like two inches in my office because it's like, uh, it looks like that. <laughs> yeah, dude. It, and, and this is like the, the area where I can move around in. Um, it's a fucking nightmare in here with all this stuff. I made one of those graphics, though, if you want to post that. Yeah, sure. You can send it to my message. Uh, but too. I, I uh, you know, Gmail. someone had mentioned earlier a label that I'm not necessarily a big fan of. Um, but uh, the band there's a band that i really like and um i put out their release this year and they put out a release with that other label as well it was kind of like a joint thing but uh for the people that are into like more like brutal death metal stuff um embodied torment mm. uh it's their first release in over a decade uh joaquin the main person in this band uh was also playing in brodekin for a while and uh for anyone that's like into the old early slam uh brutal death metal shit brodekin was pretty fucking killer you know uh connected with liturgy the good liturgy not the fucking poser one right. um and uh yeah embody torment was a, a pretty sick one uh we did veruda um hmm. i don't know i did i on the graphic, I only listed like 31 or 32, but I, I fucked up and realized I did like 40 releases this year. And oh, wow. I just didn't put them all on there. Well, let's uh, fucking name them all right now. Name them shit. all. You know what? I, I, I put, it's so funny you said that because I I was I did an interview, I think it was offline, with uh, Barrett from Severed Records, and he puts out <laughs> like three fucking releases a month. Yeah. And I was like, yo, what about your new releases? And he, he goes like this. He looks up at the ceiling and he's like trying right, to look at right, his releases because right. he has a poster on the ceiling of like 500 fucking releases he put out. So he's like kind of looking at the end line of it. I'm like, what do you keep looking at the ceiling for? He's like, oh, there's a poster up there of all our releases. <laughs> <laughs> he's smart. I should fucking do something. Is that above, is that above his bed and shit? It was above his desk. Which I, I thought was uh, okay. Yeah, Dude, are there 500 thing? fucking releases worth fucking come, putting out? Right, mm. especially in that fucking genre. You tell them, you this, tell them, This band called Menstrual Vampires. Um, if you're like into really, really nasty, grimy, sort of like uh, death metal from the very early 90s, like death metal demo shit, like you like the early Mortician, but without like the current hype, no offense to Mortician, they deserve their, their praise uh, as a meme band. But um, menstrual vampires is like just really, really repulsive and just nasty sort of death metal. And uh, I fucking love black metal. And regardless of what people say about this musician, um, they get the artist's name. He goes by Zaster. Um, the Zaster stopped playing black metal ish as to what we know it over the last decade and a half. Right. Um, this is the first project that he's done uh, that is That's straight up just nasty fucking death metal. And what people don't know is that in the 90s uh, and late 80s, he was a big tape trader and death metal fiend. And that was the first shit he ever did was death metal. Mm. So this is his first foray back into death metal. And uh, so that was something that I was pretty excited to be able to do. Are you this saying that's year. a member of Zester? That band? It, well, yeah, it, it, it is Zester. Well, it's, it's only uh, one guy, right? One person guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But um, so he was playing drums on the album, and uh, he actually had a foot injury in the midst of the recording. So he went to switch it over to a drum machine. But on the CD, 
um i put one of an exclusive track i didn't list it because like whatever i i like the secret stuff and the last track on there is him actually playing drums on it and oh. doing it live uh cool. so yeah we we did the menstrual vampires i did this release uh from a band called bone weapon um they're from like canada no they're um they're from enough. philly they they're like uh kind of like all those like primitive sort of black death metal bands with some doom influence uh it's got that artist um fred uh fred. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. He, he he plays in uh blood spore um pretty pretty fucking good shit uh i did a funeral doom release for a band called depleted um and the dude that is in depleted he used to run a label called nailbat records or nailbat tapes uh -huh. i think um some really really oppressive just like nasty funeral doom stuff i did a ecto spire which is this band from tulsa yeah. oklahoma like oklahoma yeah i was uh chasing them for a minute uh you know trying to get them to do their stuff and i was finally able to get my buddy that was actually he plays in abysmalist and unearned me to uh mix their record um kind of like ghostly sci-fi influenced death metal stuff pretty good um i did this like dark ambient release from a project called schleppner maybe i should have asked that guy earlier that was uh said he was viking how to say that shit right mm. um but uh it's uh jt he plays in esophagus or esophagus and he played in symptom which is like this really fucking awesome death metal band that's even band from portland but this is his side project i put out death grave um which uh to me they're fucking wonderful mix of like grindcore oh yeah uh ear greg hammer, ear hammer greg right yeah greg is now in uh he's in autopsy now so right. like you know um they're yeah, going yeah, that no, you can't see shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh i i actually i got all this with, shit here and you can't see any of it yeah 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 you gotta i go partnered into with light, tank brother. crimes to do that yeah and tank crimes is a label that i think is to me yeah. like you know I, I there's a few labels that i look up to as to way they do business and the way they promote and tank crimes is one of the ones that um regardless if i like the music or not like i just the way he runs his label to me is like really respectable right and uh tank crimes i know them yeah so tank crimes uh also reissued some ludicro this year which is like you know oh. um another one of our like special black metal bands in the u.s that to me is just fucking great uh agalock kind of broke up uh over covid and that was funny uh, and they got back together uh as well and that's funny too but one of the best parts about that was that uh, the drummer was able to put some more time to bring it back ludicra for their last run of shows oh well, that's right Tank i Krams saw them live out. or a video of them live or whatever hey is, yeah is yeah that, i filmed their last couple of shows is that reissue a double lp as well yeah yeah okay like yeah. like the original yeah so that's one of the ones yeah. that i was thinking about picking up that's you know a good one i bought a couple of records speaking about labels that there's this label called avant-garde um not necessarily metal but they're one that like you know i'm paying 45 50 bucks a record but it's for a double um import like colored vinyl of like a really really great gothic dark wave project that i fucking love called lycia and oh, lycia. uh yeah. Lycia. Lycia CDs. That's a, been around a while. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. Lycia it's is done. like something that's pretty cool <laughs> that like I know a lot of metal people might not be into them, but uh More Typo Negative think, used buddy. to tour in the nineties <laughs> and uh Peter Still's favorite band was Lycia, so that's why they went on tour with Typo all the time. He's like they're the most depressing <laughs> band in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so and, and like and actually Zaster covered Lycia stuff and I don't know, so all their stuff's been getting reissued. And... Hold on, you got a question in here, James. Uh, what was the Dark Ambient band called? Uh, it was called Schleppner. Um, it's some Viking shit. Uh, it's S-L-E-I-P-N-I-R. Um, okay. I can... The Bone Weapon demo was really good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Artist. Form Terror Growth. Form yeah, Terror Growth. Yeah. That's his uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, he did some artwork for, like, 
Mortiferum. He did stuff for like Undergang, I think. And he's done he's done some really sick stuff in his uh his channel he does a lot of like videos with like Mark Riddick and, and stuff like that that I think are really cool. Yeah, me too. Um, the one we yeah. did with Justina from Poland was sick. And uh I also put out this release. I, I don't want to make this all about me. No, no, this is about of... new fucking labels, brother. Um, so you're a fucking I put out label. Honks, Same with you, Aaron. Uh, which was this cool band. Uh, they're like a new wave of British heavy metal, but like an American sort of band. Hmm. Um, Fraser I, just got all heart. Yeah. Oh, are you into that stuff? <laughs> he loves the um, wave of British yeah, heavy so, metal. Um, Haunt, I put them out. Those have been old friends. I've known them for like close to 20 years. And they're Cali? They, they're, are they Cali? Haunt? Yeah, they're from Cali. So when they first started, they had an old band called Beast Maker, and I almost put them out. And uh, we were we were gonna do it, and then the next day, my buddy in the band, he's like, "Hey man, some guy named Lee Dorian hit me up, and I guess we're gonna go with him for his label. He's got mm. good promotion." And I was like, "Dude, fucking Lee Dorian hit you up? <laughs> yeah, good good job. Go with that." So yeah. uh, Beast Maker went on tour with fucking uh, the stuff that Lee was doing and toured around, and then. Uh, I think that that band Sha or Shadow Kingdom maybe he didn't up know who Lee, Lee, Lee Dorian that? was, and he was in a fucking stoner fucking like <laughs> band. Uh, well, he's not. Uh, I mean, his dad was in Montrose and Van Halen. Oh yeah, so. I know. I've met. I've met. I've met him. Yeah, you know, so like he's like, he's a nice guy, a nice guy, and everything. His I just dad I was thought in that Montrose. Was well, I mean, Actual he didn't. Montrose. It wasn't like his uh, dad was a bass player for Montrose. Yeah, I mean, I'm not good with names either, so it's like it's not a big deal to me that he didn't know like yeah. some year. It, he knows who he is now, but at yeah, the time, yeah. I just thought it was funny that you know, oh yeah, dude from Cathedral hit me up, and I'm like, fuck, dude, <laughs> like yeah, it's fine with You're them. Like, fuck, uh, give him my demo. So yeah, I put that out. <laughs> uh, I put out this band called Torture Tomb, uh, right. which is like pretty nasty death metal stuff from a. Uh, 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 where they from? We played uh, that on Kentucky. Here. We played that on Death Metal Podcast. Oh, cool! Yeah, I got yeah. Mark Riddick to, uh, to do the artwork for it, which was like a a check or a, a feather in my cap because I've wanted to work with Mark Riddick since I started the label, and getting him to do artwork was really fucking cool. Nice. Um, I put out uh, one of the dudes from uh, Fossilization, which they put out a new record this year. Right. Um, they worked with this other label that I don't give a shit about, so I'm not going to mention them. Um, but uh, Mortal Embodiment was their other band. Uh, it's like kind of like cosmic sci-fi death metal stuff. Kind of flew underneath the radar. Uh, I think it's really fucking killer if you're into more like um, out there sort of death metal. Definitely check them out. It's not like any like sort of experimental, like hardware or something. No, it's um, it's like uh, maybe like more like Nocturnus influenced. Okay. Um, and uh, just kind of like weird fucking death metal, but with a, a good solid foundation. If you dig fossilization, you should definitely check out that project. Um, and and another one that I think is really cool is Miserable Creature. Uh, right. I put out their third yeah, demo dude. from New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, from I've got to get that. New, I've got to get Australia. that third one. Yeah, they're um, so something I guess I can share on here is that uh, they're possibly coming out to um, California or we're gonna we're trying to bring them out next year and uh, have them record uh, their first album hopefully out here and do some shows with them and one of my death metal bands. So, pretty cool. stoked about that. Yeah. I really like that second de that second demo, dude. I really oh, liked dude. it. Wait until you hear the third one. It's it's uh it's yeah. I know. I've got to I've got to I've got to order that, and I was gonna get that um what is it uh brilliant behemoth. Oh yeah yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna place an order as soon as I get my next paycheck in. So uh, I don't do a lot of grindcore, but when it comes to like grindcore, it has to be really fucking good, and that brilliant behemoth yeah. just like blew yeah. me the fuck away. Um, yeah. And I think they're only the second Grand Core release I did. The first one was this band called Fiend. And, um, like, yeah, they're, they're fucking was, killer. Early, huh? Yeah, if you... Uh, Your label I, looks like it operates like a Grand Core label, though, I'll have to let you know. 
Well, I I, I fucking played in grindcore <laughs> bands for years, so that makes sense. <laughs> so when you gave props to Ten Crimes and stuff, I was like, yeah, you know, like you, you know, like the out, it's outside looking in, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, one of one of my life achievements when I was younger was uh, fucking getting on to live a lie. One of my like my grindcore bands got on there, even though it was just a digital release. That was still like fucking cool to me that. You know, I, I grew up loving, like, grind and power violence and stuff like that. Um, so, like, getting to be a part of that, I'll, I'll try to work in that stuff when I can. And yeah, uh, I am going to be doing some uh, some Fiend vinyl next year. Uh, Razorback was really cool. Somebody mentioned that in the comments. Like, that's Razorback in the early 2000s, you know. Razorback is the shit. Nowadays, yeah. they put out very good horror books, so you should check out um, some of that stuff. And that yeah, yeah, Billy's still going joke. strong with the, the comics. Yeah, and also uh, Doc Holocausto and the things they did with the Killjoy book recently, which was like an un... I remember them talking about this. This is like, while well, Killjoy was alive, obviously. But they were talking about like a screenplay. And then okay. I remember Doc Holocausto, who's from New Jersey, I've been friends with him for like eons, he was like, he was like, kind of explaining the screenplay to me. He was like, "Well, here's the first couple of fucking, you know, like the first page or two. He read it to me. I'm like, Holy fuck, dude, that's gonna be a sick fucking movie, you know? Yeah. Because I mean, if Killjoy was behind it, he seemed like really fucking deep, you know? Mm-hmm. Definitely huge horror knowledge there, you know? Um, I, one thing that uh, I was curious about was like, um. Some of the ones that I, I feel like don't get talked about as much, like, uh, that maybe should, or it's like, you know, we're just, like, so far into the underground that we refuse to do stuff. But, like, uh, Peaceville, I think, is still doing some fucking rad stuff. Like, to me, uh, personal bias aside, I love the new Autopsy record. Oh, yeah. Um, to me, I thought that was, like, some of the slimiest shit they've done in years. And to be putting out records that are good 30-plus years into your career is pretty, pretty hard. And I know that some people maybe don't like um, that style or them leaning more into their Doom stuff. But uh, I think it just, like, you know... No, I'm, I'm all in with that fucking oh, release. Yeah. Yeah, I think the bands should be able to do whatever the fuck they want, and I'm just here for the ride, and, like, I, I love it. Um, yeah. And so, fun. like, I have to give them respect for that. Uh, and I, I he, see someone's mentioning prank records. Prank uh, records? You know, six, you gotta... Profane? I mean, yeah, there's a... Profane uh, existence. 625 um, is also great as well. We're going down old school lane now? Well, I just, you know, <laughs> no, like, not you, the chat. Yeah. Uh, just the old classic, like, punk labels, to me, like, those are, they're fucking awesome, man. Like, I, I, I look up to them a lot as far as, like, what they did. Maybe, like, I don't necessarily listen to a lot of punk music, but the ethos behind them is really the, fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Slap a Ham is, uh, come on. Definitely, dude, Slap a Ham, brother. The yeah, new Autopsy I, is better than their last record, in my opinion. Yeah, oh yeah. The new Autopsy is great, autopsy and that's because uh, Greg from Earhammer got to write a lot more of the music. So it's like super heavy, and he brings that, that Doom influence out in it. And The one thing I liked about the new Autopsy is when I had listened to it in a digital way, then mm -hmm. I went upstairs and I started looking for the actual fucking release, basically, you know what I mean? So right there, yeah. it tells you, you just heard it once. I only heard th maybe three songs of it. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I need to leave what I'm doing right now and go and just, like, try to focus on going and getting this autopsy. I didn't get it, but the thing is, like, I was halfway there. I was like, that's that's rare for me. Yeah. Like, I won't just yeah. stop in my tracks and be like, you know what? I need this mm. fucking release now. And I mean... That's how I feel about, like, a lot of the legacy bands, you know, like, you get your suffocations and your incantation, and everybody's still, um, and even Immolation, they're all working and putting out sick records, right. and you know they're good, but they're not, they don't necessarily, like, hit me the same way um, that, like, some of the earlier stuff does. I'll still listen to them first. But I'll listen to them. Yeah, but that I, before autopsy, I buy. But that autopsy record was one that I was just like, you know what? This is one that I'm going to be listening to for a few years now. So, like, I, I can 
I I, I dug it a little bit more than Chris some Herrera, of the others. hit my necroharmonic at gmail.com if you want to talk shit. Uh oh. Uh oh. Your girl, your girl, <laughs> when she sent the video to me, it said Chris Herrera's triple X video. Oh, shit. <laughs> so you know. Dang. <laughs> Sorry, so she's definitely shading your ass. Look, his, a, shirt, his shirt was off. I, I had a wardrobe. I had to change wardrobes. So now I got to go through all record shirts. So. Uh, oh, shit. Wow. oh, there we go. Halfway through the episode, switches it up. That's how we do it. That's how you do it. Yeah, hey. Earache Records is doing some real interesting Earache stuff. Earache Records? <laughs> okay. Fucking <laughs> Frazier. <laughs> I mean, I mean he's, he's, not, he's, not, he's, not, he's not wrong. Really One of my all-time favorite albums is sitting right here on Earache Records. There you go. Bring it up again, brother. Let's see yeah. the back, though, especially. Yeah, yeah. Ole the one's the best. Yeah, with uh, 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 Alan Dubin by the by the, the toilet. Yeah, Jim oh, and, then, uh, and then uh, and then and then uh, Ralph Ralph Pimentel just hanging out in his car and shit. <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that rules. They don't make record listen? covers that good. Did anymore. you listen to the new Kanye record? No, I've never. That's what I was just about to ask. I like one of theirs. I like one of theirs. I like their first record a lot. I thought that was really good. Okay. I haven't listened to the new one that much, but I love everything else they've done. Yeah, Conade and Corrupted put out new records this year, which is pretty interesting. Uh, The Conade one's a lot better. Is it? Um, I listen to it whenever I want to have a panic attack. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) Any fans of, like, Sun O? Uh, I like Sun. 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 Yeah, the O silent. <laughs> it, it, it's it's uh, it's not an O. It's 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 literally the Sun. <laughs> I've I've known Steve O'Malley actually because he used to live <laughs> in New know York that. years ago. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's Steve O'Malley's band? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah that I knew. Steve and Greg, both from yep. Southern Lord. My personal favorite of all the things those guys do was probably like uh, I think it was like Goat Witch or something or no Burning oh. Witch. Oh yeah, dude. Burning Witch. Yeah. Yeah, I play in a witch band, and and honestly, I can tell you something really cool. I got a video, and I don't have a PC. This is the first time I jumped on one for this. The guitarist of one of my band, Swamp Witch, he I set him up with the drummer of Burning Witch and Thor's Hammer, and they just recorded earlier today and sent me videos of it, and I'm just like, I can't wait to go and listen to it because we worship those bands. So wow, that's cool. Aren't they from Portland or something? Uh, they're on Southern Lord. No, I said aren't they from Portland? Oh, uh, so the drummer lives in Eugene. Okay. Yeah. My but, favorite uh, Stephen O'Malley thing is his old Descent magazine. Ah, uh, you literally took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> Descent ruled. Yeah. Descent was a great black metal magazine back in the early nineties. Yeah. Gave that a bad does. review in there too. I was like, wow. What? But yeah. Yeah, dude, I used to I used to have, used to have his, his magazines back when. Well, Topsy rules, and I got it for Christmas. <laughs> Good. Nice. Good on you. Very cool, brother. Yeah. Autopsy. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. The Autopsy and Cannibal records are two legacy heaters. Yeah. I mean, Cannibal's always firing off, and since they've got the new blood, or not new, but, you know, they're just, they're doing good with the new pedigree they have going on. Right. The new Sulfur Aeon album with butthole teeth on the artwork. <laughs> Is that a Paolo Girardi piece? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Probably. Aaron, I don't know if you want to divulge it this. Aaron, like it. Aaron, what are your 2024 yeah, plans? You might not want to divulge that, but... No, I don't mind, dude. I okay, here like he goes. Three, four things lined up. Um, I don't know if you guys heard Black Wound from Sweden. Yeah. Oh, you're putting that out? I'm putting out US tape version. Okay, cool. So yeah, they, they hit me up about shortly. that. It's coming mm-hmm. shortly. It's really good, man. Yeah, yeah. It's they're some cool. grindy elements, and it's just Black wild. Wound? Yeah, Black I actually wound. saw that on a lot of uh, year-end lists, honestly. Like, uh, So that's going to be a good one for you. Yeah. That, I mean, I wish I could have got it out sooner, but, you know, shit's planned. And that's all right, yeah. You know how it goes. Yeah. Um... Keep the order. Fuck. That's what I said. What do you want to divulge? Is the question because, like, if somebody asks me what I want to put out next, I'm just like, 
<laughs> no, I don't. So, so Necroblade has been announced, which okay. is uh, drummer for Mabosidad, ex guitarist for Mabosidad. Okay. And it's a uh, rip, ripping, blacking death, just cool. kicking your face. Two thousand twenty-four. Correct. Song will premiere tomorrow on my YouTube channel. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, get Damn. ready. Um, yeah. new new church sides coming out mid January. Good band right there. Church which aside. is which is Jake and Zeke are in more busted ads. So there's like a little circle thing. Going Don't on. forget, Ooh. fuck yeah, our bass player. Sounds like James and, and Jeff and Jeff. Yeah. Um, I our think Keith. the last. Keith, sorry, dude. Yeah, there's, you're probably thinking of Jeff Keith from Pius Levis plays and Church Aside, too. Correct. Yeah. And yeah. Mordant Red, full length, coming up maybe Marchish. Hmm. Does that guy make music? I don't thought they were just a headbanger's plant or whatever. He he does make music, yeah. Oh, I just thought he was like a one of those guys that's on YouTube. That's cool. He, he actually on has a band. Yeah. Oh, okay. Morton Red is the band, right? That's oh, okay. Yeah. Pretty Same cool thing. stuff. That should cool. be cool. He has a lot of promo behind him. There's got a lot of followers. I looked at his shit. I was like, God damn. Yeah. It's pretty I, funny on YouTube. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, he's outright. I talked to him a couple of times. And he's houses, a cool guy. Shit. He's not like yeah. Always fucking rock. No, no. Oh yeah, cool. no. Yeah. He seems cool. Uh, yeah, he's cool, dude. He seems like he'd be a chiller dude than the guy from Hell's. Does anyone ever wonder why he has to like disguise his identity, or do you think that's part of the shtick? I think it's part of it. Yeah, why do kids do it? You know, I don't know. He's a, he had a, he has third degree burns on his face. <laughs> no, I don't mean like that. I mean like you know, like hypothetically, Dennis, he could be Rocky a fucking Dennis. gym. I mean, you, don't, you don't fucking know. Maybe he does. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he does. I mean, <laughs> maybe he, he saying he could be a fucking like, gym teacher, and he's, he's like, like, I can't no fucking be kidding. on screen. Maybe he works at a high school. Who knows? Yeah, he's like, he's like Kane. He's like Kane on fucking wrestling, dude. Burn his face. <laughs> <laughs> Is this I mean, part you don't of know. the show? Yeah, I don't. I haven't. I've watched very little. Yeah, I don't. Just he yells a lot, so he screams. He he starts off yelling. Yeah, I just it's like a yeah. Sam Kinison yeah. on death metal. Oh, yeah. oh, I saw him do one and then talk about hardcore and then like he's I don't know I I, I have to check out his music. Um, but he's like one of the guys that like uh, whatever they do from Hell's um, that guy's a fucking clown. Um, but I'll like watch him to just <laughs> laugh. <laughs> and like, it seems like the comments on his page are just getting progressively funnier and just like a bunch of like gay bots that are on there. Like, Hey, can we pay you to like take off your shirt and do all this shit? <laughs> and I think that it's funny that he's getting beamed <laughs> like, uh... because he's like such like, he, he seems like uh... he doesn't have a fucking clue, um, of how just like much he his head his he's own being ass. spammed <laughs> and like it's just it's hilarious uh i i appreciate some of his takes and yeah you know flipping canoes and stuff i can't say that i've ever like listened to much of what he's done you know outside of the big guys but uh yeah he's he's funny <laughs> and i saw him do a crossover with that guy so that oh was yeah funny. i saw that too i mean it seems like the crossover like even francisco did some shows with uh justin right yeah yeah so I mean, it like he has like a like a certain audience of people that roll with him on his lives, and you know what I mean. Yeah. Or if you were yeah. live, I don't know. Is but, he uh, is he really like five foot six, like Tom Cruise? Yeah, he's not that tall of a dude. Yeah. He's like that makes sense. He's probably he's probably like five seven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really, I didn't know I, that. Now I got something else to fucking make fun of him about. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 like, I'm Do they make him in yeah, real man sizes? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm like, gonna, dude, I'm gonna, I wear two. I'm, I'm gonna text him right now and tell him, dude. He might be okay. He might be five eight, but like, but like oh, I said, I mean, because I'm uh, just, I'm just under six feet, and like he's like he's. Yeah, he's about. He's, he's noticeable. You're on record, high. Evan. Too late. You can't change it. You said five six. I'm going with well, I was just trying, I was trying to think of it like <laughs> in my head. But, yeah. but he's got a label too. Uh, since we're talking about labels, it's called Hell's Headbangers. Yeah, and uh, I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah they uh, 
They've done a couple things. They're doing yeah, a release with some band that's on here. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so, that's right. Yeah. Got our the LP, our, here? Our, our, LP, our LP will be out probably in about seven years, but yeah, you know, whatever. It's all good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We'll have another album out by the time the LP version of our fucking first one is out. But hey, hey, whatever. Hey, are they doing a picture disc of that or no? No, no, no. Just by, just, <laughs> just that by would rule. That would rule. No, it'd be great, but no, no, no. Oh, yeah, that color scheme on a picture disc? Hell yeah, yeah, man. And he's, uh, yeah. But they, yeah, they got cool stuff coming out. Somebody mentioned uh, the Demon Sea is pretty good. The Demon Sea they put out this year. Oh, the EP? Uh, was that on, on Dark Descent? Well, it was two releases. Dark Ascent did a full length, releases. and then Hells did like an EP. Okay, I need to check out the new Demon C. I, I like that. I like those guys. It's pretty um, cool stuff. I mean, it sounds like Demon sounds C. Like Demon C, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you get to catch them when they were on their tour when they had uh, the kids from uh, what Holder now, and they were in Undergang as well, and were from it, Cure Fragium playing for them? Sam. I've never seen them, but I bet Carl did. Did they ever play one of your one of your fests? Oh yeah, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, I'm sure you played with them, right, Demon C? Yeah. 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 Farm, wasn't we saw them by a couple of weeks ago in Atlanta. Oh well, yeah, well, how was it? Uh, they don't. They don't really do anything for me. Oh, okay. okay. Did Ixra you know. wear a shirt? Is Alex still in the band? Which band? Uh, Demon C. Oh, I don't know. He was like part owner of Deathgasm Records. Oh yeah. I think that- I think it's just, his real name is Alex, but yeah, I think he plays a Provenatica too. If he, I don't know, maybe he's in. He used to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's he's kicked out everybody. So like, Demon C's had like a million people playing it, and it's always just extra with different dudes. Okay. I forget oh, what his know, Christian name is. I've seen the guitar. The guitar player is that guy VJS. Oh yeah, man. he was in the band when when they played here. I he know just who he joined, is. I think he's from Philly, isn't he? Yeah, he's one of he's like buddies with like Alex Books and all yeah. those guys. He yeah, played yeah. Morphobia for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, um, I he's know Demon Sea, right? Yeah, he's in Demon Sea. So when Demon Sea came Bloodstone through on that too, first right. tour, they uh, they stayed at my house and I got to give them their first uh, dabs or whatever of uh, <laughs> stuff, and they got ridiculously high. And then we they noticed that my front like yard or whatever in the where I live, my driveway was covered with candles, and uh, like the week before, like a couple days before, uh, three kids got shot up, and our house got shot up and stuff, and they died mm. there. And they just like they were super high, and they just like freaked out. And they were like, "We need to get the fuck out of here." <laughs> I was like, "Dude, you guys are a black death metal band, but you see some real black death, and you get scared." <laughs> Interesting. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I fucking like them. A no lot, joke dude. in Oakland. Yeah, they were they're really hey, good. I, I it, slept in a van in Oakland with the what well, this sounds gay, but it's not gay with the cardiac guys and we were hearing gunshots all night and we we're just laughing like God he's serious it is like that. I mean I mean if, you, if, if we're flexing, I was in fucking uh, at, uh South Central Los Angeles where we played a show over there and I'm like yeah, it was at night, I'm like that was it, you know, all I know about it is what I've seen in movies, like Boys sure. of Wood and shit like that. But uh you know, it was it was there was some weirdos walking around, but it was, it wasn't too bad. You know what I mean? At least at, at least at the during the three hours I was there. Was just, <laughs> hey, hey, Francis, <laughs> let me ask you lucky. this. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah. Do you think Texas poor is worse than like other East Coast and big city poor? Because when, mm. when they say that, I'm like, Texas. Oh, no, poor. Our, our poor looks pretty bad compared to some of these like supposed bad neighborhoods when we go through other cities. Or I maybe mean, I just didn't go into the the, the worst of the worst. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I've been, I've, like, when I did, like, those handful of shows with uh, Morbosidad, mm-hmm. which was that one time, we played Oakland, and every, every show I played with that band was, like, the worst part yeah. in the whole fucking town or whatever. So we played, uh, we were going to play in L.A., but it got canceled. There was some place where, uh, apparently, there's frequent shootings and stabbings. You know what? One and, you know, bad... In every city in the United States, one bad city is the same as the other one. The, the difference is what block are you on? Where are you at? Yeah, you know what I mean? What neighborhood it, yeah. are you in? Are you in a neighborhood? It's a block by block. Everybody hey, is on their fucking porch and gangs and whatever. Yeah. So, like, if you ain't on that block, then you're good, you know? Yeah. But yeah, if you're on I'm, that block, 
You know, it's a different fucking game. I mean, if you went to that block even to buy weed or something, like, you put, you definitely put in your hands. Yeah. You know. I mean, I've driven into areas, neighborhoods in Houston where I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, I better, I better, <laughs> I better turn around. But, you know, I, only time I've been in another, like, Baltimore was pretty fucking shitty. Yeah, Baltimore I will say that. was shitty. Baltimore I will agree. Was a, Baltimore, Baltimore is a fucking shithole. Uh, you know the the also, when they got dude. huge chore boy fucking signs for selling chore boy instead of like milk and bread. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Baltimore is pretty fucked. Uh, but I've also been in like Mexico City and like some of the worst parts playing shows, and yeah, it's pretty rough there. But as far as the U.S., uh, I mean, yeah, I think I, I think I agree with Roy. Just every every city is every city bad. has its fucking. Just, bad yeah. fucking it's just like if you get lucky if you're on the bad block and then what time of night is it you know all that shit has Oops. like yeah. variables like I a fraction it's like it's kind of fucked up that oakland gets that rep and like sure that's something that's real but that's everywhere um you know it's just it's the way it should go this man sure Sometimes boy it's... is a brillo pad without the the scent on it basically that they use to put in crack pipes um, oh, I have no idea what is. we're talking about. Um, <laughs> I hilarious. have kind of a, a question. Like, when when were you in Maborsi that? Uh, well, I really want, I, I helped out on some live shows uh, in twenty end of twenty thirteen. Oh, okay, cool. I I I have a buddy. Um, I I'm always trying to figure out what era he played in. Um, but his name's Peyote and. He came over from Mexico, I think, with them. and But I know that they're, like, connected to Oakland, and they're also in Texas. Yeah. And um, they're, they're, they're another band that has a million different players. And um, Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I played, like, maybe six, seven shows, and, and that was it. I just I, I couldn't see myself. Was that just... with Impiety when they toured? Who, us? No, no, no. Oh, we, okay. just did, we just did a few. We did, like... Uh, I never even played in Texas with the band. I only played uh, L.A. Well, it actually was Downey, uh, Oakland, and then we played like four shows in, in Mexico and one in Guatemala. So okay, I must have it. seen you in the Mexico or in the one in Oakland then. Yeah, it was at Eli's. Yeah, yeah, okay. With uh, Mortem, uh, Mortem was fucking good that night. I remember. Uh, yeah. Mortem and uh, Mortem from Peru. Perverser, I think. Or, no, not Perverser. What's that band? Perversion from Michigan played this show. Oh, that band's good. I see. Yeah, yeah. That, oh. they were like brand new band, I think, at the time. So cool. yeah, they yeah. asked me to play, and I'm like, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, I I I tried to play um, in Mexico a couple years ago with Mortem, and uh, and it was Mortem and. Uh, Fuck, Undergang was playing. It was like this big festival called like Total Death. Um, yeah. I yeah. think everybody. I don't know if anyone ended up getting paid or if the fest ended up happening. But Morden was one of the bands that I was like really, really trying to play with. From Peru, right? Yeah. yeah. Real cool dudes. Though. The uh, the main guys are two brothers, and it's the drummer and the guitarist, vocalist. Super nice guys, man. But they were they were great. Bombs. They do yeah, dude, they were they were great. They're a good band. I mean, very good live band, and we got to play two shows with them. Uh, mm -hmm. But the highlight of like the brief brief period of time I spent in the band was playing two shows with Mystifier in Mexico. That was fucking oh amazing. fuck yeah, hell yeah, amazing, amazing. Awesome. So anyway, so labels. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get back on track here. Sorry, Roy. Yeah. It's uh, all good. I mean, the thing is, you know, like, the bottom line is the discussion that happens in here. So, it, what is more boast of that doing now? Like, are they on a, what label are they on? I mean, I... I, I like, Christ yeah, Aside is obviously they coming out on They got three islands. bands coming out on this guy's label. I know. That's what I'm saying. I so think, aren't Christ they on Nuclear War now? I thought they, I thought, war now? I thought they had called it a day already, but... Well, yeah, no, nah, they're getting ready. They're recording Zeke. And they're they're recording a new like new something, either an EP or something. I mean, because they're 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 up there with Kiss now, dude. As far as like <laughs> last show, absolutely shows, final last show <laughs> ever again. Make sure you miss catch us. We'll never play in your town again uh, this year. You know, kind of thing. But, uh, to me, you mean? 
<laughs> well, no, they're just never going to write another album. Yeah, they're never going to write yeah, another song. Yeah. They're just going to put out yeah, fucking they had another song. Again. When I saw them, they had one additional song. Oh, yeah, but that song's already 20 years old, too. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> what about, like, yeah, I want to go back to the chat here. Is there any, like, labels you guys feel like we glossed over here? Because I really would love to talk about those, you know? Like, in 2000. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know we did gloss over this label, but it didn't really put that many releases out. Like we put shirts <laughs> out, you know. So. Oh, you I know mean, what? I did hear that label has a thirty percent off sale going on right now. That's right. That's yeah. That's right. I'm really and they have a ton of flags for time and Lots merch that you should pick up. Sure. Hello. Hey! All right, we brought this man Whoa. on. Guys, if wait, anyone what? else wants to hop in too, besides <laughs> Frazier, you guys are welcome. Are you? Are you yes. CDN. Hey. Are you yeah. are you like a you like a dancer dude? Looks like you got one of those mirrors like where the dancers go get ready in and shit with all the lights in the back. Yeah. <laughs> it's Christmas. Hop on. Hop on, brother. For work, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. You should have gone on there, been, been in the back lap. Oh, hold on, I'm doing it ready. <laughs> Chris, we liked your video yeah, earlier, it. though, because you you did shout out a lot of good labels. You had yes. the rescued from life in there. You you know you you were you were like you kept it on point as far as like what the show was about. So thank you. That's man, why I showed man, it in the dude, beginning too. Dude. You are the man. Oh man, I try. So yeah, you, uh, uh, you told me. Hmm. Go ahead. Okay, no, uh, you told me two to three minutes, and there was a, there was a lot of shit I had, man, and try to squeeze everything. Dude, uh, Monica sent the, the little one to go mess with me. She was like, Daddy, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, dude, and then, uh, it was. You got another two, three minutes now. Go. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So. No, go ahead. You got two, three minutes hey. right now. <laughs> what else? What else? What else were you going to talk about? Um, no, that was a cool video, man. Chin. I appreciate to see, like, the thing is, the reason this whole show was done is because it's, like, it's supposed to be, like, a fan perspective thing. So, like, you're a fan. Like, I am. Like, Evan is. You know? Like, even though I run a business in record label bullshit, like, it's like, I'm still a fucking fan, dude, you know? I mean, everyone in here yeah, is. Yeah. Let's be honest, sure. you know? Yeah, Whether you're in a fucking band or you run a record label, you're still a fucking fan, dude, yep. you know? So, I mean, to have, I like, but I like total fan perspectives a lot. So that's why I do appreciate somebody like you, Chris, or you, Evan, because you guys are just total fucking fans, dude. You can completely come from the outside perspective and say, like, dude, these were the fucking labels that I fucked with this year. You know what I mean? Extremely yeah, rock, man. Especially, uh, <laughs> I was thinking about some other labels, man. Yeah, bring it on, Evan. Uh, rotted Life. Yeah, and uh, yeah, banging. yeah, they put out uh, a couple of couple of things this year. Um, and uh, what else was I looking at? Uh, damn it! God damn it, damn. Chris! Now I, I saw just, you. Hold on, hold on. Chris, I saw you represent uh, Caligari Records in your thing oh. too, which I'm glad. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, I love that label, dude. They put out like death metal, black metal, noise, goth rock. Uh, some punk bands. Um, when I was younger, I used to stick to you know like straight up death metal and shit. And then after a while, it just got boring and bland. So I had to find something else. And it's kind of like a drug addiction. You always got to find something harsher, faster, abrasive. And you just keep on digging and digging through the shit till you find something. Just like it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I like about. You know this type of music you know and the labels that put out all different kinds of extremity it sounds funny and this might sound funny it might not but i i feel that being a like a music collector actually stopped me from being a drug addict <laughs> basically like i would spend my money on music instead of drugs mm, and like very possible. early yeah. very very early on now i'm talking about hey, you're like right 13 years old or so that I realized, yeah. I was like, you know what? At 13 years old, I'm like, wow, I could buy drugs or I could buy these tapes or whatever the fuck it is, but I'll get to keep these tapes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't have smoked them within, like, oh, the yeah. first fucking five minutes. Of <laughs> it, you know? 
So like, I, I feel like it helped sure. me stay off. I have feel like I feel like music helped me stay off drugs. Like all these, like for years. I'm not saying that I never took drugs. I'm just saying like it helped me stay off being like a heavy drug user. Let's say. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's uh, buying so many releases, man. It is. It does get pricey, and it's just like fuck. So you have to. You know, especially when you have kids and responsibility, you have to put 10, 20 here, there, and then it's like, all right, what can I buy and not buy? Mm. So, yeah, you have to be really picky about <laughs> <See Monica. laughs> yeah, the, the missus running in the background. The missus hey, in so. the background. Hey, Chris, yeah, what, uh, background. what label did you buy the most stuff from this year, would you say? Oh, man. Like, uh, crap. Oh. I mean, not the, not just their releases, but like, who do you order from the most? Uh, what's that bald white guy right there <laughs> with, the, with the headphones? <laughs> uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron, and I have to say, James. I've been getting some stuff from James and those two dudes. Man, I I like what they're doing, and I'm just like, about about fucking time. Uh, sometimes Aaron will send uh, send me some stuff. Like, hey guy, uh, what do you think about this band? I'm thinking about signing them and. Me and Aaron, we have different tastes, so I'm like, eh, AI. Right. He's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, eh. So he stopped then, asking me. He stopped asking me because I told him everything sucks. No, yeah, he's like, yeah. But it's good to have somebody to bounce that off uh, because I'm solo over here, so I got to reach out to my friends. Like, yeah. check this out. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, but I'm. Uh, I get stuff from Roy every once in a while. It just, yeah, it's like Dark Descent Records, um, Nuclear War Now, um, some stuff from Season of Mist. The last thing I got from them was the new Pro Fanatica. Um, yeah. Anything else they put out is kind of like, eh. And then, um, shit, dude, there was a, another fucking label I liked, but I forgot. Marvel, you mentioned Marvel in your video. Yeah, Mortville. Oh, oh, Andy. Mortville Andy noise. Yeah. Yeah. I like his stuff. Some of his stuff is just straight up early, like noise. Yeah. So, so, but. Did you yeah. say Mortville was your favorite? Yeah, Andy. Andy got some ripping stuff on there too. You know so. what? The Mortville thing. Uh, Andy had said to me in a like a DM or whatever. He's like, "Yo, I took the Necroharmonic formula and I sold my CDs for five bucks each." You know? Yeah. So actually, like, one little part of me was like, why aren't I doing that? And I also <laughs> looked at Transylvanian and saw, like, you also keep your prices lower, more affordable, and between, you know, the digital stuff, too, which, um, you know, was definitely fucking... And also kind of like the fan club thing, James. Oh, yeah. Could you talk on that a little bit, bro? Because I don't think anyone on... I've seen that. That's pretty cool, man. I thought yeah, about getting into I thought that. So, too. <laughs> so it's like, um, so the way I run it is for, uh, you know, the sick demonic price of six sixty six a month or however long you want to subscribe, whatever. If you sign up and the minimum cost you can do is six sixty six, it'll give you my entire digital discography, and for however long you are subscribed to uh my label like say a couple of months you're gonna get every release that i do each month that you're on there added for free <clears throat> as well or for six dollars and 66 cents digitally though right and then digitally? um so yeah so digitally you're gonna get 200 albums instantly and right. then what i think is the Ooh. best part of it is that um a lot of the people that buy from me they buy a lot from me and you know when i'm putting out 40 plus releases a year that means i'm doing like four to five releases a month right. so uh with being a fan club member or whatever you get an automatic 20 percent off all physical purchases so if you buy one tape um you're basically saving your money right there and when i'm doing multiple at a time you're getting um it's paying itself off and you're getting stuff for 
you know, seven bucks as opposed to 10. Um, or like right now I'm doing this December sale where I drop prices back to when I first started, which is 666 for all CDs and 666 for all tapes right. and all records 1666. If you're a fan club member, you get an additional 20% off of everything. So you can be getting stuff for like 12 bucks for vinyl, um, like $5 tapes. And I did that for this entire... Which is month. rare in this fucking economy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's basically just cost. But it's like, for me, I would rather people have it that are going to appreciate it than just like having it sit on my shelves or trying to create like a false demand, which right. I think a lot of labels do with like um, trying to set stuff oh, up. Oh, yeah. Like too I got a... I know a couple yeah. of labels. Yeah. There's a lot of black metal labels that are notorious for doing that. Um, and yeah. like, and then some other labels that'll do like 50 tapes, but mm. uh, put only 20 online and say they're sold out and then back end sell them on Discogs for like double the price and shit like that. Um, I, 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 I kind of hate that. that happen. Not it happens. Yeah, it happens a lot. That. I'm like, wait a minute, you're the fucking label. It's a little violator. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's yeah. why I don't list numbers for anything that I do, because I feel like as a label, you're supposed to be giving people what they want. So if, if there's a demand enough for something, I'll, I'll just keep it in to press and rotation because I don't want people to have FOMO um like certain stuff i'll let sell out for a while and if there's just not like a big demand like one person hits me up every like month or something i'm not going to do it i'll just you know download it or you know if they're like a big enough supporter maybe i'll send them my own personal copy but like i try to keep stuff in press as as long as i can because that's like we're supposed to be getting people to listen to music, not like making something hard for people to listen to or and, more expensive and making them more expensive. And then these people on Discogs like selling it for more money. It's just like, no, thank you. Um, so I, I don't even I don't have a disc, Discogs page or anything like that. So um, but yeah, I know a lot of labels, they'll put their numbers and and even people hit me up be like, how many colors did you do? And, Sometimes with tapes, I don't even, I'll take a picture of one of them and I'll have like three different colors and I'll, I'll just send whichever one to somebody because it's like, I, I don't want that false demand to be there. Um, so it's kind of my philosophy. No, I get it. Things. I mean, Necroharmonic never like, I mean, we hand numbered our records, but that was it basically. But oh, dude, else. I can't do that. I'll get Carpal Tunnel. I, yeah, I, I, everything I, else, <laughs> like, CD-wise, uh, we didn't, but at the same time, like, mo like I would say, like, 90% of the Necroharmonic releases, they're only limited to 1,000 each. Yeah, but that's so, a fuck ton, too. Like, I mean, 1,000 is, like, I don't know any labels that are doing 1,000 right now. Not even 20 Bucks Spin's not doing 1,000 on their right. on their records, you know? No, like, I'm talking 1,000 CDs. No, I know. I'm saying like there's that's that's a lot for this modern day and age. Oh, like, for this most modern labels, day and age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people are doing like at most 250, 300. I think with like CDs, like if you want replicated in the US, you're looking at 500 minimums. Um, so you'll you'll hit 500 for some of them, but uh, yeah, um, the hand numbering is is difficult. When I first started the label, um, I used to hand write everybody that like a fucking piece of paper and then i would burn it and then send it and i gave myself like i have carpal tunnel actually from doing that i used to fold all the booklets and stuff right. and when you're doing one cassette tape and say you do like 200 that's like 1200 to 1600 folds for one release like that's oh, man. that's fucked up and then stuffing them all like dude i i can't I, on top of that, I could never get into handwriting them too, and like putting that stuff in. But I know people who do it, and I, I respect it. But that's I just do it for I the can't. records only. Yeah. I oh, mean, you do I, it for records still? Just for records only. Like I never. Oh, I don't it even do CDs. it for records. Okay. Because uh, I also don't like you know like the same thing. I don't say how many I've done of each, really, just because you know I want to keep it in pop in circulation for people. 
Yeah, I don't know why I did it. I just I wanted it to feel <sighs> unique because I wasn't totally. going to give anyone a fucking button or a fucking right, trinket. Right, right. It was just yeah. like here, here's hand numbering instead. That's it. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, that's that's super commendable and like some of my favorite records and things like that have that on there. I just I'm I'm a bit of a curmudgeon to where it's like, oh man, extra no, fucking work. <laughs> it is extra work. It. It's a lot yeah. of fucking extra work. Yeah. I hate. Personally, I hate collectors. I just buy music and listen to it. Man, I'm with you, dude. Like, yeah. I, I try to just buy, like, the collector market kind of fucks things up a little bit, you know? And it's not really even a collector market. It's not like that person, co- sometimes, I think, if someone buys a fucking tape that goes for 10 bucks on Bandcamp, right? And then it's up for $25 on Discogs within a week. They they didn't buy that fucking tape for themselves, dude. You know, right? Yeah, they bought that shit to flip. Yeah, and people have whole economies built on that in their, in their lives. Yeah, I remember yeah, someone it's got in trouble because they were buying uh, blood incantation records and Spectre Voice records, and before they even came out, they were selling them on Discogs for like three to four times the price. The and the band was like, that. "Yo, man, like." We have your information. Like we know who the fuck you are. We're not Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> right. Like we do our mail order. You can we're we're canceling your order. You're not gonna flip our fucking records before they even come out on discogs. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? Right. Um, Sounds that like some whole, Griselda shit. Uh, well, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, rap's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, that, that that they really they'll as soon as someone. If you can get through the fucking website. Fuck yeah. resellers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your best, you know, like the, the, the bottom line is when you go through a reseller, yes, the band still gets paid. The label still gets paid, I guess. But the thing is, when you go directly to the band or the individual or whoever's selling it, like they're going to get probably the most out of it, you know? And if you buy it from a, from a show, you're, they're probably going to get even more out of it because then they didn't have to deal with the fucking post office or writing right. you a package yeah. or, the, yeah. you know, the, the whatever taxed. they had to charge you for postage, etc. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, even if you're at a regular ass show, like, go up and buy that fucking CD, you know? Go buy that tape. Just even if you don't, even if you plan to just give it to your fucking grandmother, basically. <laughs> hey, Jack. I, you know? I I agree with the dog on that one too because he's like, don't buy fucking beers at the venues, buy mm. shirts, buy merchandise. That's that's like well, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'd say I don't know what percentage, and I'm probably way off on percentage of people that go to shows just to hang out. Yeah. Uh, what 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 would the percentage of those people you think that go to a show that just go to hang out and they have no intention of buying? anything from any of the bands when i used to go when i was playing for shows if i was gonna still go see a band I always oh shit i hope to have a cool new shirt design or uh uh but then again i never drank or anything like that but i i'd say a majority of the people maybe it's different in different places but uh, in other places but i see a lot of socializing at, at, at underground shows nowadays it's kind of it's pretty fucking lame if you ask me but yeah, yeah. that's what i see i mean there's not a lot of people that are going there to uh buy stuff and support the bands it's a no, lot not of, at all like, just oh we hang out and grab some beers and, and Take pictures maybe and... hook up with somebody you know which yeah. is cool you know talk all in the parking lot great. all night you know not even yeah, yeah. you and know I mean, what I, I, when i used that. to drink a lot i used to do stupid shit like that so i'm a victim of that like i would go <laughs> to the show be like what's up and then i would spend half the fucking show outside dude and then and I, it made me <laughs> yeah. stop going to shows actually because i'm yeah, like yeah. yo why the fuck am i even here dude yeah why are you there roy fuck. yeah but i yeah. stopped now i'm fully invested like if there's a show going on i'm invested in the show i try to get there before it fucking starts that way i can watch every fucking band you know what i mean leave when it ends i try you know yeah shit man that's why i just if the show starts at a, a decent time yeah i'm down to go but if it starts like at nine o'clock i'm just like man you're, you're i could have been listening <laughs> to four or five records already <laughs> <laughs> every six years deep uh hanging out with my kid 
I'm the well, opposite. I'm the opposite. Old. I like we're the just old. Shows. That's why. No, yeah. no. That's I what like it is. I hate fucking early shows. Those are the worst. Oh, uh, no. Those are the best. There you those go. Are yeah, the best. Best. <laughs> Get home, eat some food, watch TV. Oh, those are, those are the watch worst. Fucking, uh, you know, it takes away time. from the midnight hour, you know? Yeah. I've done that plenty already. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I may, We're built different ways, you know? Yeah, no, totally. I can get home early and watch y'all's podcast, whatever I miss. Add a boy, add a boy. <laughs> Judge Judy, everything. I love Judge Judy. <laughs> I sent you an uh, invite, um, Ralph. Come on in, Ralphie boy. I'm from fucking talk to you up late. Like, like yeah. you know. Hey, Francisco, did you get a copy of that uh, Gore, uh, Gore Beyond the Cropsy record that he put out? No, not the LP. I'm not really buying LPs anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Monica has it on CD, so I just yeah the relapse, yeah. yeah the relapse, yeah. So I bought it on vinyl and finally heard it today and cranked it up, and it's like fuzzy and bassy as shit, and I'm just like ah. <laughs> That's good, right? Oh yeah, I love that shit, man. Well, if you look at the relapse like the, the CD, I'm on the I'm on the I'm on there. My name's in there somewhere. Oh, you got a flex, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Get his flex in. That's the flex in. Uh, I, I, I can know the guy I used to write with way back. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he was cool, real cool guy. And it was cool that they, I don't know if they're going to do any more, but they did actually play a show this year. Um, yeah, I saw that. I think what, in Tokyo or something? Yeah, like, probably. Uh, Butcher ABC? Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. And uh, Eagle, oh. Eagle Flick, Fox or Flicks or whatever the hell, the... Um, like a Death Grind Corp band, uh, I think Andy put out one of their CD. Death Grips? No, it's a uh, Eco. Oh, uh, Eco Fix. Yeah, Eco, Eco, Eco Fix. Fix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, suck, that sucker's badass, man. Yeah, that's a mid 90s obscure Grind Corp band. That's the stuff from Andy fucking likes that he releases. Or re- oh, yeah, that's just, that's just good, dude. Really yep. fucking good. Yep, 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 yep. Hey Evan, um, that tape you showed of the Weakling, yeah, um, that's that's from my buddy uh, Matt. Oh, uh, right on. Yeah, but uh, he, I think he's in trouble right now, man, because uh, no, oh. yeah, Jeff from Leviathan, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, he knows he shouldn't be fucking bootlegging, and yeah. he's bootlegging like a shithead, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, he's he's pretty much like nowhere to be seen right now. Yeah. Wait, what Matt? I was like, yeah. what Matt? Uh, Matt Davis is his last name, man. And I was just like, from Houston? Nah, nah. Uh, uh, Rich, I think Virginia, Virginia Beach or some shit. Yeah, yeah. he's making bootlegs, and he's like, I make these bootlegs. I'm not ripping off the bands. I'm just buying more merch from the bands, and I'm just like. That still doesn't make it justifiable, dude. Well, it's under. Wrote, is it blue, it's a boot black? If you don't like it, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> so uh, Jeff called him out on that one. Yeah. The, I was like. Dope. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh fuck. Yeah, don't shout out. That got called out on fucking Instagram. Yeah, he got called out pretty I hard. I saw that. All yeah, the bands were like, "Yo, dude!" But on the guy's description, he's like, "Yeah, they're bootlegs. If you don't like it, fuck you." And it's just like. Yeah. Well, all right, man. <laughs> yeah. Don't be upset when the like... bands put you on blast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, even Moribund was getting shit, and they're like, you know, a label for putting out bootlegs. Uh, yeah. Jeff doesn't really play around when it comes to Leviathan stuff. Uh huh, dude. I mean, yeah. a lot of those legacy acts don't like it's. It's fucked up. It's. It's what we're talking about. Like. Those guys are working like day jobs, grinding away, no health insurance, and just like not seeing any money from their art coming back to them while other people make mm-hmm. money off of it. And mm-hmm. so, That's not cool. Yeah. yeah, it's fucked up. Listen, yeah. I got to go back to the collectors now. Um, what do you call it? The um, I got a few photos sent to me by uh, Jaden. Um, she was going to be on the show, but she doesn't want to be on with all the sausages here. So, uh, um, pu- uh, pu- uh purulent remains of fermented death this was put on as um what do you call it on uh head split split records yeah so and then she sent this one too lymphatic phlegm hey i know that man really fucking cool you did a seven inch with them right i sure many years ago yeah and they did that label black hole records which is still in existence to this day 
And Andre is in the band Oful nowadays, also. Also, he's in Putrefaction Sets In with the yeah, guitar player right. from fucking oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, from uh, Crematory. Urban. Yeah, Andre, Andre was a cool dude. He's the only one I was ever in contact. I mean, Lymphatic Blend was two guys and a drum machine, but uh, uh, Andre was the male guy back in back in the '90s. So uh, it's cool that he's still around. It's I'm sure you still like every now and then I'll get a message from somebody that I haven't talked to in 20, 25 years. So. It's yeah, pretty future cool. faction sets in. What's yeah, that? It's it's regurgitate. that if you like, uh, rules, man. if you like uh, regurgitate's first album, you'll yeah. like future faction sets in. It's that same style. That shit rocks, man. Yep. What's that? Uh, Hatefield. That's funny because that the uh, Noxious Ruin just commented, and I was like, I just recently got this. Not uh. Like a few weeks ago. Oh, so. Knox is ruined. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hate film. Is that Hate uh, film? Yeah. Hate film. <laughs> yeah. They got so, insane cool packaging on their stuff. stuff. It's definitely like so, like very underground, you know? Yeah, it's a cool little fold out box, man. I like it. It's pretty neat. It's like Oregon. They're all like that. Yeah, they're all yeah. cool. What do you guys yeah. think about 10 inch LPs? Never really been a big it's fan. Shot. <laughs> yeah. never, never been a big wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's do this in an orderly fashion, first of all. Evan, mm. you're eating, so how about you, <laughs> James? <laughs> James, let's ask you first. What do you how, what's your feeling on ten inch LPs? Um, I have a couple uh I just think that you can just do it on a twelve inch and do a forty five. Okay. Yeah. Francisco, what you got? Uh I own probably four 10 inches mm-hmm. i mean a couple of my five all-time favorite records are on 10 inch it's that tumor splatter human goulash 10 inch mm-hmm. tumor from germany and then the cacophonia 10 inch from many many years ago but i think that format stinks i just it's just all right hey what's the point let's hear you in know? the chat too while let's we're doing nine inch it. let's do a you know 11 inch and eh, whatever yeah here's ralph <coughs> ralphie boy Hold on, he's not connected. There he is. Look at Ralph with all the records. Can you Yo. hear us, Ralph? What up, Ralph? Ooh. How's it going, Can brother? you hear me? Yeah, yeah we hear you. Yep. Can you hear me? All right, cool, cool. Let me let Hold me on. ask. Now we're going to ask Necron. Necron, thought hmm. about 10-inch LPs? Yeah, I mean, whatever. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be mad or angry or... Yeah. disappointed or excited this is like if that's the only way you can buy something fine you know but yeah okay. i would prefer not I mean, but whatever you it's prefer not, not. Yeah. okay yeah yeah i own zero 10 inches i'm, yeah. I'm just waiting for the stupid jokes to come in on the chat. Right. Yeah, i know, I know. Yeah. we're not gonna make them now chris what's your thought any thoughts 10 inch lp um i'm i'm like nick ron it's whatever dude if i can get it if it's there right then and there and i don't have it i'm gonna go ahead and grab it right then on the spot yeah no, so. all right we can pose this one to ralph too man what you yeah, thought I, about uh 10 inch lps versus 12 inch i like 10 inches a lot um but man they don't fucking sell it's so funny you said that because uh, some of the records i got stuck with years ago were 10 why do you yeah, think that is why do you think that is ralph i don't know man i think people think they're cheap to make and they want to get them like for the same price as a seven inch, maybe yeah, it's mm. quite the opposite. They're, more expensive. Yeah, it, they're actually more than a 12 inch. They're, they're yeah. expensive. And sometimes yeah. they come with shitty covers. Like they try to flat, you know, they try to use like a piece of fucking paper instead of like yeah. a cover, you know, mm, that's uh, true. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's a detractor for me. That would be my main detractor. Second main detractor. I don't know where the fucking put them basically. <laughs> so that's probably I, actually, well, that's the main detractor. Hold on. Hold on one second. Uh oh! <laughs> Ralph, every time them. Ralph comes on, he looks like he's in like some kind of. Uh... I actually got these special ten-inch boxes just for storage. Oh <laughs> shit! They're, yeah. they, they are literally for for ten inches only. You have any in there? No, you don't. No, this is an empty one. But uh, I've got like six of them right behind me. Next Jesus, to the you own that many ten inches, or is it distro stuff? No, I, that's my own collection. I probably have about. 200 of them holy yeah. shit oh oh i didn't know there was that many uh, yeah, I uh made uh, yeah i would think that would be about the you have like every 10 inch press 
I only got like four or five, man. Well, you I know just what? Got, I literally got, like I just got this one the other day. What is that? The traffic death deterioration split ten. Oh, okay. Straight. I just got this, but uh, that's that's next to get filed in there, man. Yeah. yeah any? Um, or did you put out any ten inch? No, right. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I put out a few. I put out uh, the catheter mass grave split ten inch. I remember that one. Yes. I did. Um, I have that one. The Yakopse Irate Architect split ten inch. Uh, is that it? I think that might be it. That's cool, man. I, if, I'm, if I'm forgetting some, I'm sorry. Uh, you're good. What about uh? So Ralph and I usually we usually when we're messaging each other we talk about pizza. What about <laughs> ten inch pizza or twelve inch pizza? <laughs> Over twelve inch, <laughs> eighteen inch. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Horns and Hooves, for Horns sure. So That's Derek, a great label, man. Horns Derek and Hooves. Derek saying, uh, in, last 10-inch uh, in I bought was Impaled Nazarene demo, reissued. It came with a sick patch, but besides that, I can't remember when I bought one in a long time. And I have an Impaled Nazarene 10-inch. And where's this problem. patch? Where's this patch? What does everybody do with all these patches? 10-inch What do you, what do, you do with them? Series? Yeah, what do you do with the patches? Yeah, what do you do with the products that come as the extras? <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Do you use them, or do you fucking, like, just leave them with the fucking release? To... They stay with the release. Poster yeah. stays with the release, right? Yep. True collector usually keeps it together. Absolutely. It's so funny, because I when I got a Necrovore on record, I took the fucker right out, and I put the poster up. I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that, I'm Chris? hanging this the fuck up, dude. <laughs> It's probably the only time I've done that. Usually, I do leave them together. But I was like, "Damn, man! I don't think I would. I don't think I would be able to have a Necrovore poster in a way ever." No. So I'm like, I don't care if it fucking devalue. It's like I'm not selling the record, so it's not going to devalue anything. And you know, I think I had thought about this this move, but I, and then I kind of thought against it. I thought for it, thought against it, but I was like, I should send two. I should when I put out a record, you should send two fucking posters with it. One I agree exactly. with the record right, 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 like, yeah, and yeah, one to yeah, fucking hang up, that. right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, posters are a rule, man. Yeah. Big posters. It'd be interesting to do that, you know? I wish God labels would have done that with inserts. I wish labels would have done that with inserts because how many fucking records have lost inserts over the years? Oh, I missed <laughs> a bunch, man. Exactly. That shit sucks. How does that happen? Yeah. It happens, man. Covers too sometimes. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. How does that happen? I only have that problem when I'm listening to the records and then when I'm not, like, I didn't file them away correctly. I have the same problem with yeah. CDs. Like, if I'm on a rapid-fire spree of listening to CDs, like, one CD mm -hmm. just goes into the next box, into the next box, into the next box. Yeah. And then I'm like, ah, and there's, like, empty fucking shit, you know? You, you know what I'd rather buy? I'd rather buy some banners from NecroHarmonic.com. Oh, yeah. Because those are pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I you mean, got a good sell going. There's posters. Yeah. I mean, posters are dope, but like flags are a little more like durable in a way because like you don't have to fucking like mm -hmm. you know. If you're in a band, tape. They're perfect for your jammer. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And there's no holes necessary because they usually come with grommets. Exactly. I mean, they're, yeah. fuck. They're they're. I mean, it's like, like, yeah. It's yeah, dumb not to. It's dumb not to go to necroharmonic.com and buy one right now. They're different. In, they're different. You know, like I, I don't hang many, but the thing is, like, I have a few hung up too, and like you could literally use one as a fucking. Say, like, you're stuck at your boy's house, you have to sleep on the fucking floor. You literally <laughs> can take that fucking banner down, <laughs> put it over your body. <laughs> hey, whatever, dude. It's, it's just as good as like couch cushions. Yeah, you know, exactly. fucking Cover yourself with couch cushions. Exactly. <laughs> or put much. it over the couch. Hey, has any label, speaking of labels, has any label ever done a lunchbox, like a metal lunchbox? Ooh, that would be cool. That would be fucking cool. They just did a Slayer Igloo, but that doesn't count. Yeah, and it yeah. came with a speaker I, on it. I saw that Slayer Igloo, <laughs> the uh, cooler. Somebody I know bought one. Who bought one? I think Ruby and Joe got one. Teddy Tommy, maybe? Or Ruby? Yeah, you're probably right. Somebody mm -hmm. mentioned on one of my streams that they bought one of those. And does it Oh, play... it was Jeff. It was Jeff with Carl. Didn't Jeff say he bought one? Yeah. Didn't um, Bill from Disma say he got one, too? Oh, yes. Yes. Bill did get one. 
What yeah. format does the uh, igloo play? I uh, MP3. Or probably Bluetooth. got Bluetooth or some shit. Eight uh, okay. track. It's like a it's speaker, over. basically. Plays ten inches. <laughs> <laughs> So rolling back to the record label thing for 2023, like, and I'm going to ask maybe in the chat again, since it's been fucking three hours we've been on here. Does Hell anybody yeah. have any kind of preference, CD, tape, or record? Especially for this past year, like, did you go all record? Did you do, you know, like, I want to know, like, is anybody die hard for any one fucking format, you know? Were you, like, all CDs? Maybe even if you were all fucking digital. Okay, so we got our first answer here to spin the wheel. Wait, sorry. <laughs> Baphomatic Fanny Packer says records. Hey, uh. Justin cool. says cool. CDs. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Compact disc is the way to go. Necro Gobbler CDs. Okay. And then we have uh, Marikov. What's up? Uh, records for you. I'm into tapes, but I, I buy records and CDs all the time. Same here. CDs. Mystic Doom Bitch. Uh, cassette tapes forever. Vinyl. Joker. NYC. Zulima. Uh, CD and tapes second. I'll say again, a metal lunchbox was a kid. I would have shit my pants. <laughs> CDs and cassettes. CDs. I'm seeing CDs a lot. Interesting. I thought I would see the word records. What about you guys? I mean, preferred. I, did we talk about this? I think no. so. I think you, no. No. I don't no. think I touched it, man. What's your prefer? I, I guess I'm, I'll ask um, Chris first. Ooh. Um, if the if there's only be a version of the of the band puts out on cassette and that's all you're gonna get, um, I'll go for the tape. If it, if it comes with a digital download, I can like rip it onto a CD and then, but preferably CD, but uh, record because I could turn the shit up and hear the crackle and sizzle and mm. it's fucking loud. But yeah. uh, ta the tape is cool. But like I said, if the tape and record comes with a digital download, I'm content. But the thing is now, uh, I buy the damn tape, and then like six months down the road, somebody puts it on CD, and I'm just like, you know, and then they'll buy the damn CD and flip in the cassette for like five bucks. Yeah. All right. So let me, before I ask Ralph next, so you can think about it, let me see here. Okay. Derek says LPs, if it's not, if it's super crazy release, CDs and tapes, otherwise. CDs for the human brisket, but I buy vinyl. Merciless onslaught CDs mostly if the vinyl isn't over twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm true only fucking wax wheel. All compact disc. I buy all formats. Has the vinyl bubble burst? We'll talk about that. CDs ninety percent, ten percent vinyl. He's got it broken down. Yeah. See uh, last seven inch. <laughs> CDs rule, says Frazier. Of course. Of course he would say that. I want to get tapes like that Caustic Vomit and Kudabara. Who remembers Morbid Angel Slime Pack? So let's go to you, Ralph. Uh, what's your preferred go-to? Um, I'm always a vinyl guy. Uh, Clearly. Definitely... Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. um, I also have 2,000 CDs. Right. Five thousand tapes. I mean, I, I'm up to the fucking roof. You're everything. everything, guy. Yeah, but uh, Definitely. you know, if all three are presented, I'm gonna go for the vinyl. Hey, okay. hey Ralph. Uh, other than Haunted Hotel, which rules, what are since we we talked about a lot about other labels? What are some of the labels you like to you like to work with? Yeah. Um. Work with hmm, like trade. Or, or, or yeah, just what are, what are some labels that you maybe like? Hey, this this is a cool fucking label. These are good people. They put oh, out good shit. Yeah, yeah, maybe man, something that uh, they get named here. Well, oh, I know you deal with a lot of people, but yeah, I'll oh, keep yeah, it man. keep it to a few of them or whatever. Yeah, you can keep um, it to a few and see if there's well, a name that pops up. I talked up to Roy yesterday, and it was he said what was the label of the year uh, for this one, and uh, 
I had to think about that. But if I'm going to go label of the year, uh, I'm going to go with my boy Clay, Rescued from Life, man. He's yeah, been really man. putting out some solid shit. Yeah, and, he has. Uh, and, you know, we started about the same time. We're both over 20 years in. And he, and he does it with very little social media presence. And he's kicking ass, man. He's really doing doing it big, man. He's doing some great shit. Yeah, but uh, cool. other labels yeah, I really like. Um, obviously, I love FOAD from Italy, man. Those are my guys. Um, Grindfather from the UK. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah he, he, yep. He, that, that's the hardest working man in the grind business, man. There's no no, no question about it. Yeah. Um, who else? I a, a label I really like, which I think doesn't get enough shine in the U.S., is a bringer of gore from Belgium. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Yeah, no, no. Uh, um, did they put out Discourge Fetus. Did I don't know. Okay. Good question. I um, Mark's been killing it, man. He put out the uh, the Blue Holocaust LP maybe about a year right. ago. Oh, okay. The Vami Neuer LPs. Uh, he just put out the Pulerant Pu- Remains LP. Uh, the the tolerance LP. I could go on and on, man. That guy, oh, cool. yeah, I mean, <laughs> everything that guy puts out, I'm digging, man. That's cool, cool man. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. I don't yeah. think anyone mentioned that here. First time yeah, I yeah. That. I think, like I said, in, in the States, I don't think he really gets enough love, man. And, um, well, that's what this show is for, brother. Yeah. I mean, for yeah, everybody watching out, it guys. or watches it on the replay or is in the chat. Like, yeah, I if want you're a grindcore people to guy, talk. man, definitely check out Bringer of Gore, man. That, oh, there, there it is. Yep. There, look, hold on a second, Chris. Keep that up there for a second. Did Pierre do that artwork? It looks like his stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think he did. That. It's his yeah. band. That's I think his band. I band. got this from Ralph. You got yeah. it from me? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, man. I got the first record, but it's on a different record label. Or I don't yeah, know if it's the first record. Happened. It's the Slaves no. to the Cannibal God one. You know, yep. Pierre, Pierre was, a, was a pioneer in the webzine Game. Absolutely, to brain, brain dead. Right? Brain dead. Remember brain yeah. dead? Yeah, early yeah. on with the with the internet, man. Um, Very early. I mean, like, hard bands. He always like, put yeah. the hardest fucking shit. The hardest, yeah. like, grinding and. Grinding. I mean, like late nineties. Did he do that shit in the late nineties? Yeah, he was real early on with like, reviews. Ninety nine to, to yeah. two thousand because that's Amazing. when I got a computer. So that he was one of the earliest uh, online fans. Yeah, brain dead. Seen. Pierre was cool. And I always, I, he, he cringes at it now when I mention it, but his first band was Hatred Surge. And I remember I have like a cassette tape that I got from him. I think it came out like 95 or something like that. I said, you need to do that? He's like, oh, no, I don't want to do that shit no more or whatever. Mm. So it was, uh, it was a drum machine thing. Everyone's their own worst critics, man. He's, oh, he's yeah, a total fucking gore freak, man, that guy. There was an RFI about hey, them a few weeks ago prompted me to check them out. They're very good, man. They're like a, they're like where Symphonies of Sickness left off, basically. You know? It's like if you wanted the next record after Symphonies of Sickness and instead you got that other one they put out. Like it felt like <laughs> it felt like bra- <laughs> it felt like Blue Holocaust like put out the record that should have been right there, you know? Yeah. At that moment. Yeah. And his Definitely. his band, uh, he's in, he's in Vomit Noir too, right? Yeah, that that band is killer, man. Oh yeah, they God. did that split with uh with uh, Philo's new band. Uh, what are they called? That fucking one. Uh, that, that's one of my favorite releases too from this year. Uh, fuck. It's what is his band right? called? No, no, no. But yeah, but his the other band from Czech. Uh, oh man. Uh, uh, Mon- six, oh, six, Mon- sin- six sinus syndrome. Six sinus syndrome. That's yeah, a good that's album. Good. Yeah, that band yeah. fucking rules, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, that band's great, man. They are good. Yeah, it's it's a good time for Gord Ryan, man. It really is. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of weird, but yeah, you're right. It feels like it's as and it's coming up in the California scene. I see a lot too. I mean, I don't know if James, you've kind of familiar seeing like more gore grindy kind of bands yeah i mean those like the handful of kids from san luis obispo <clears throat> they're kind of churning out a bunch of it with um fuck what are all their bands i just watched them recently uh david put them out on like extremely rotten um aren't those the bands like the 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 so the yeah they're, yeah. Bro- they're all brothers Four. and then uh they were you also this band i did I did Wait. vocals for one of their other bands called Disgusted Geist, and then they turned it. They they stopped that band, and then they did uh, Mephetic Corpse, 
Right. And then Mephetic Corpse is Necropsy Odor, and then Necropsy Odor has like three other bands. All those, yes. there's like a it's pocket of like five or six bands <laughs> that are like they have a shit ton of all the dead infection worship sort of bands. We and, we, uh, we booked Necropsy Odor out here with uh, Morgue Breath maybe oh, like cool. six months ago, and it was killer, man. Those, those bands oh, were man. Amazing. Yeah, uh, those was, kids are they're fucking yeah. great. Like, yeah, um, good shit. Man. John's a yeah. sick drummer. Like. I did. I think I did like a little drum video for him earlier this year when uh, he was out here. I I first met that kid when he was like thirteen or four. I mean, he's barely like twenty one now, but like thirteen or fourteen in an old black metal band I almost put out called Non Elmoth. They got banned from the venue that they played at because they tagged up the venue. But uh, to <laughs> see their growth over the years into like really nasty death metal has been fucking sick i seen that kid at the undergang show actually we were talking for a long time because he's a screen printer oh which uh which undergang show did you go to some show in philly was that the one that uh greg uh from autopsy was playing bass for them um no 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 was that that was a, this was oh, okay. uh yeah members of fetid and um it was uh it was um what the fuck were the bands? It was Evan from Maryland Death Fest band played. The fuck oh, it was a while ago? No, no, it was last month. It was in October, the end of October. Uh, Undergang did like three shows on the East Coast. Yeah, that was Greg, with the, Greg played well, that was, bass on those shows, I thought. No, no, he just played it in Atlanta. Oh, okay, okay. He just played okay. in Atlanta. Because Autopsy was there too. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So, he, so they, um, I met that kid uh, from Necropsy Odor, I believe, at the show. Because he's a screen printer, right? Uh, which one? Uh, his name is... Um, John? John. Okay, yeah, yeah. Him and his brother are fucking killer musicians. Well, that's what he, he told me about his brother's band, and I recognized the name automatically. But then afterwards, I was like, what band are you in, dude? You know? Hey, hey oh, Roy, yeah, yeah. Roy, does, yeah. uh, does the Noxious... I think it's Brian... From Noxious right. Ruin, maybe he wants to jump on? Yeah, if you want to jump on, let me know, and uh, I can send you an invite. We would love to hear Oh, his, his magazine rules. Breath? Okay, that's cool. I didn't realize that. Cool. Yeah, I, I was my dude, man. I will. Yeah, here we go. I will. Definitely. More different. Yeah, because uh, when I saw, what was it, the other Undergang project, or... Julian from Fetid and Mortiferum was doing vocals for them because uh, I don't think David could get by. Uh, Hyperdontia? Okay. Yeah. I think Hyperdontia. Yeah, said, wait, yeah, didn't Ralph, did you release that band? Hyperdontia? Yeah. No. Oh, I thought you did. No, Mia. Asako. Everything just sounds the same. <laughs> Mia Sako uh, yeah. put it out. Hey, Ralph, yeah. what, uh, you put out that GBN. Are they all, are they all gone yet? Very few left, man. What a great response to that one, man. I was oh, yeah. Pleasantly surprised. So, uh, but they're, they'll be gone soon. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Good band. Yeah, excellent. I mean, um, with the band that's been kind of like, didn't they come back or something? Because I know there was a Japanese or a Malaysian guy I know that was kind of close to them. He did like a Epo. whole like Napalm Death fanzine. Epo. Yeah, Epool, and uh, he did like a. It seemed like he was just completely focused on ne Gorbion and Necropsy after he that. He is a mega fan, that guy, man. Yeah. Uh, so did he? Did they reform now? Because it seemed like they were right. Yeah. Well, cluster. they never really broke up. They just started playing a different style of music under the name Noise of Go Go's. Okay. Which was like a noisy, like, like what? How do you describe it? Like. Um, punk but like kind of like I, almost rockabilly huh. but but not don't think like hipster bullshit like it was like still noisy as hell and still really chaotic yeah, yeah. but it wasn't it wasn't gbn obviously but it, <laughs> but then they went back to gbn so they kind of do both huh. okay so they're, they're still active their stuff yeah, with war so. store is fucking legendary absolutely yeah. Absolutely. Their split with Regurgitate's pretty good too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but shit. I mean they're just legendary. No all weak around. shit. It's, just, it's fucking cool. I know that I worshiped them uh, when I was younger. Those are like the grindcore bands that I was gravitating towards. 
For Gorbea yeah, and Necropsy, for me, it was that first demo only, basically. Yeah. The drum I like the noise shit. Heavy, heavy shit. Is yeah, that kind of carcassy, kind of influence stuff. Death battle-ish. Good shit. That shit rules, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm going to bounce, the, uh, man. I, I gotta go. All right. Yeah, oh, I hope your wrist feels better, bro. Don't yeah. Do yeah. Sorry, that feel wrist. Ouch. Yeah, I'm probably right. about to have to go in two guys. Cool, Where's, man. Thank you, brother. Hi, man. Hi. Take Later. it easy, guys. Later. Appreciate Later. you stopping and talking your shit. <laughs> I mean, that's what the show is all about. Like, we want to talk about... My allergies. Like, it's my allergies. Releases, you know? Like, I mean, it's important to... Not just for us, but, like, for the people that fucking watch this shit, you know? And then they watch it on the replay, too. So, I mean, I, even within before. this, it's like... You, there was bands named by Jeff that I'm like, well, now I'm going to go look at that, you know what I mean? Or I want to see what that release is or hear that band at the minimum, you know? Yeah. And even Ralph just now, you know? You know, like, just mentioning some uh, label or something. I'm like, well, I think I'm going to have to go look at that now, you know? Is Bringer of Gore, right? Bringer of Gore. Bringer of Gore. Yeah, man. Check that out. Will do. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna try to send Brian an uh, invite if though was he still. Uh, I sent I sent him one on 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 right. Instagram. Thank you, sir. So you, if he's still around. You're too good. I, I know I know what it's like to want do to come and twenty things somebody? at a time. You know. Yeah. Is there anything else? Anyone else in the chat that wants to come in uh, besides DJ Hellhammer that wants to come and talk? <laughs> 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 Yeah, don't be shy. Is new to me, and I'm definitely checking it out. Yeah, check it out on Bandcamp check it out. for sure. Thank dude. you. We're yeah, we have a lot of good too. releases, and um, there's a lot of there's a good deal for a lot of digital stuff on there too. Don't expect to like any of it. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to go with your label. I mean, I find myself with myself with your label when you first, you know, when I first saw it, I saw more like death metal, and yeah. but I saw some doom in there, and I'm like, yeah. all right, yeah, yeah. But as time went on, I was like, yeah. I, I got to check this, you know, like, yeah. you're, not, you're it, not at maggot stomp quality where I have to just buy it right away, you know? And now, uh, like, I have to check yeah. it, sorry. Well, it's because I play in, like, you know, <laughs> multiple different genres of bands, so it's like, I try to work all that shit in there, and, yeah. and uh, you know. And you've always said, and this is something that should be talked about, too, I think, on this episode, because you said this, like, a hundred fucking episodes ago. That basically you as a record label, you said, well, I don't know, you know, 60 or 70 percent of these bands, like I know personally or I have oh, friends yeah. with personally, yeah. you know, and that's a big fucking thing in the scene, yeah. too. So I would like, say even bigger than 60 to 70 percent, because like I don't take submissions. So it's it's if I put out one band, usually that one band has like five other bands and I'll put those bands out too. Right. And if I put out that band to start with, I know them, I book them, we played shows together or like, you know, we've made music together. So it's like, right. I try to, you know, it's, it's you underground music. The family, like, you know? There's no money like really being made here. So it's like, if I'm going to dump money into bands, I want it to be my friends. Um, so it's like, that's just kind of like how i i go that's why i don't take submissions and shit also because i think that people that send you submissions oftentimes are fucking puds and um, <laughs> <laughs> like you know they're because they like, send hey, them in a chain me. letter where that submission went to like yeah. everybody uh, we, you know you owe us like bro please. Our double LP. bro please <laughs> yeah bro, like, please We'll, we no, think we'll be a really good fit on your label. You know, we've been a band for two months and we recorded with this producer that worked with this band. That we Eternal don't Hails. Much. Yeah, Infernal <laughs> Hails, brother. Infernal uh, Hails. And, and we have a like, CD out, but we just want you to put the vinyl out only. Yeah, yeah. and I'm just yeah. like, yeah, cool. So you want five grand or ten grand? Sick. Let me, yeah. let me fucking do that for you, man. Hold on, let me turn around and get that seven grand out to put your yeah, shit out. Yeah, no let problem. me put out your record. It's for sure going to sell. Oh, that's cool. You're working with another label in the United States to put it out as well? <laughs> I know. Yes. Yeah, dude. Four other ones? <laughs> And you give them labels. digital? Fuck yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a tough, you know. Like as a band, I get it to have multiple distribution. You know, a new band over the across the world, so I kind of get that. Yeah, I mean, but then if 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 your record label is a United States based record label and you ship internationally, 
you don't actually need any other fucking record label. Well, I, I think that eventually. it's important to, like, for me personally, I, I like the idea of, like, what Dark Descent and Misako do with, like, each one covering a certain market. Like, right. as a label, you want people listening, and the more people you can get listening, the better. Um, so that's, like, why I usually do digital for free, because I don't give a shit about digital. Um, and like, I just want people listening, but like, if you can get someone in Europe where like, honestly, it's just a pain in the fucking dick for me to send shit to Europe or outside the United States. I fucking, I almost always lose money. And then the fucking people that order a lot of times they're cocksuckers and, um, you know, customs gets their shit lost and they blame it on you. So if you can have somebody in a different market that helps out and does your release for you there that you partner with you both can like rise up together True. and also maximize the reach for the band which i think is like super important like i don't want to be like oh i'm not going to work with any other labels or anything like that i'm i'm open to working with labels it's just um it doesn't it's really... harmonic <laughs> yeah well i mean that domestically guy. it doesn't make sense to to work with labels um because then you're just competing with the same exact market and yeah, that's yeah. like why I haven't done any joint releases with United States labels because it's right. like we're we're just you know what are they gonna buy from your band camp or my band camp <laughs> like you know like it's it, it's okay but it's not totally necessary I think what whereas I, like I, Europe yeah. and beyond it may, it makes a little bit more sense to branch out like I have a pretty good relationship with a label um, called Roper Guillotine in um, in the Netherlands and we're actually working on a co-release. Uh, that should be coming out in a couple of weeks um, and it's like a post-punk release and uh, they do like grindcore stuff and they've done some noise stuff and I, I think they're a cool label I've worked with like Dawn Breed Records um, I've been trying to find a release to do with David at Extremely Rotten but you know he's very picky with like his death metal whereas me I, I just I want to put out my friends that I like and he's yeah. like it's got to be extremely rotten and I respect that because you know he knows his shit but like he, he just put something out that surprised me what was it um having a brain fart elitist no it was something like really not like it wasn't even like death metal what the fuck was it it wasn't that yeah it was uh like a like a power violence man right yeah who the fuck was it this one? Uh, Bro, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, yeah maybe that was it, man. I yeah. was like, what? He Damn, bro. Roy, Roy, I like how Roy just... <laughs> yeah, boom. Roy, 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 I'm casually just playing yeah. pops it up. Roy don't play. <laughs> it's still yeah, got the bubble wrap over it. No, no, we're making shirts with this band, so... Sequestrum. Oh, okay. Sequestrum, yeah. so, like, he sent me a, a party pack. Actually, he sent me something very... Um, they sent me something... Well, this is really what I had asked for. <sighs> Chaoticians live oh, uh, yeah, tape yeah. that they only sold at the Norway Fest. Yeah. So I was like, "Yo, can you send me one of those, bro?" And then they said, "Yeah, yeah." And then, he, but he sent me fucking like twelve fucking tapes. So what yeah. am I gonna say? Damn. Yeah. What an asshole. Well, <laughs> the, the cool thing that David does is that like it's kind of like what I tried to do with starting with my stuff is, you know, trying to uplift people in your local community. So like, if they're from around his scene. Uh, whether they're supporters of a shop or his bands, he's gonna like help them out and put them out because he's trying to do them a solid for you know Danish people. So like, I, I get it. Like you know, yeah. I, I put out some stuff that's like maybe not my favorite, but it's like some cool people from the area, and like I'll, I'll put it out. Like it's like why not? We we'll put out someone else's band that I don't know personally and I'm not like good friends with, you know. I like to see David kind of mixing it up and putting out some power violence stuff because, you know, his favorite band's fucking Nirvana. So, like, I would love to see him put out a grunge release. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I know he won't, but, you know, he's, he's still keeping it extreme. So, power violence yeah, is still... It's a great label, cool. man. He's, he's, he's yeah. doing a great label. I really... Yeah. Uh, I like what he's doing. I love you. He put out that uh, grotesque infection LP, man, which right, I thought yeah. was like, holy shit, dude. You're doing that? That's amazing. Yeah, oh, shit. He's... that's right. I have a video to play if you guys need to take a piss anyway. Oh, cool. Uh, Somebody sent me a video? I what sent a video. Uh, I mean, I sent uh, the Noxious Road guy. It's, uh, I think it's, his name is Wes. Oh, yeah, Wes. Wes? 
not not Brian, but Wes. And I, he saw my message. And I don't know if he's going to pop in or not, but if it sees somebody, that's who it is. I will do. All right. Don't get now. your channel shut down, Roy. Don't be yeah. playing the music. Oh, yo, no, Francis, this isn't music. What, what did you play that got shut down? Dude, my whole video got taken down for that one minute fucking uh, uh, Bollywood fucking scene. No oh. shit. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was? <laughs> They're not playing with that. It was one minute. All right, so Dude. this video is coming from Cannibal Cam. He's a part of the, was oh, doing yeah. the Growl death metal videos, too. He runs CDN. Hey, how's it going? What's up? This is Cam here. Uh, I'm just at work right now, and uh, we got a big show tonight. Big show tonight. It's not really a good show, but it's a show. But I'm here, and I wish I could attend the live, but uh, I guess I'm going to do this for now. So, yeah, so tonight's topic is a little bit about, uh, obviously, some of the good record labels that are out there and uh, what's been kicking ass lately and stuff and all that jazz. So, yeah, let's get over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm up in the top right now. But, uh, yeah, I work for, uh, for CDN Records, so uh, that label especially... Uh, I've known Craig, I've known about Craig for about 30, about 30 years or so, uh, catching wind on this label out of, uh, Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Uh, that's about three and a half hours from where I live. Uh, I live, uh, like Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, pretty much right on the border, St. Catharines to be exact. But, uh, yeah, I've known Craig, I've known about Craig and CDN records for quite a while now. So, uh, there's lots of action going on. So, yeah, so, uh, it was up until, yeah, probably, probably six, seven years ago, uh, we started connecting a little more and, uh, figuring some shit out. So, uh, I guess it was about time to start offering a, you know, a little bit of my services to CDN Records because, you know, growing up on the border and growing up with all the guys from, uh, you know, Niagara Falls, New York and Buffalo and stuff like that. So Baphomet, Carnal Dissection, Grotesque Infection, Obscurity, Eternal Torment, and then, you know, heading to Rochester with Disgorged and that sort of thing. And then obviously hitting up uh, New Jersey with uh, Gaffed and Ritual Torment and Human Remains and blah, blah, blah. So started asking Craig if we'd want to get into some re-releases because of all this, uh, all this local killer shit that uh, just needs to get out there. So uh, obviously he agreed and, uh, you know, a partnership uh, began. So I started working with him about probably about six, seven years ago myself. And uh, yeah, we've been kicking ass ever since, just signing some rock and bands. And uh, if you have seen lately, the, uh, we have released some pretty cool shit. Uh, this year we released the... Uh, the long-awaited gaffed, new gaffed. They haven't done anything in like, again, 30 years. So uh, just being connected with the, you know, the local and stuff like that. Uh, I reached out to those guys and uh, they agreed. CDN Records, let's do it. Let's get out the new album and it fucking kills, die already. So uh, yeah, and we have lots coming up too, obviously. All kinds of bands uh, rummaging through uh, the CDN roster. We got Cavernum coming up they're like i guess you could say they're like uh like a pungent stench splatterhouse kind of razorback records style which uh they're in the studio right now and uh prime evil obviously we're all familiar with those guys uh and they're uh they're putting out some new material and re-recording some new stuff so uh so that's totally rad Ooh, look at those colors fancy Fancy. Um, All right. So we're going to. Um, that was Cannibal Cam. Wanted to, what's up, Derek? Thanks Yo, for joining us, up? brother. What's going on? How you been, man? Up, Yo. I knew you would have to join us because we're talking about like records and collecting and new stuff. And you're definitely like tuned in, like some of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, thanks for shooting the invite today. No problem, brother. How you been? 
Good man, good man. Just uh, bought a rat. Well, Jenna bought a rat, so we got this pet rat. It's pretty cool. And uh, hanging oh, out with him. Nice. And, uh, yeah, just chilling the fuck out, man. I, I got a rat crazy. too for Christmas, but it's a rat pedal. Oh yeah, all right on. <laughs> this is not after, man. Those are rare. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I asked my kids. I was like, "Yo, can you buy me this for Christmas?" And they did, man. So I was like, "Damn, all right." <laughs> Good Christmas yeah. present, you know. Sick, yeah. It's a great. Present. So yeah, I mean, the, the the obviously the topic. It's not a contest. I've said this on Instagram, but basically, this isn't a contest. But like, we're just trying to like touch base on like two thousand, you know, twenty three, you know, releases or what your favorite record label was. Because I feel like the, the whole like top twenty list thing. It feels like a lot of record labels kind of get the shaft on that. You know, you see the band name, you see the release title, they just move it along, you know? But there's like a whole mechanical wheel under that that got to that, you know, to put that release in its place, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, for you, I mean, you feel any notable things you would want to say about some labels you feel strong about or you bought a lot from or... Oh, shit. I, I, I buy a lot of shit, you know? Well, maybe this year I probably bought the least that I have in a while, but uh, I try to keep it steady. If there's something I see I like, I support, I order it, you know? Sure. Um, I just sent you a package. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Ralph, I ordered it. You get it? The other day, fuck yeah, I did that. Yeah, the wow. GBN shit. I had to get a good, copy. Because I saw, I remember that when it came out, and uh, I, I, I had that CD for a minute, and I don't know what the fuck happened to it. A lot of my shit. But uh, so when you reissued that, I got psyched. I'm like, oh, I gotta get this. So, no, thanks. Awesome. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it the other day. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome, dude. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is so much cool shit. I mean, you guys were talking about Dave. I had to log on because uh, he fucking released my very first band uh, I ever did. He did a d double two demo LP of it. And, uh, and it, was really, it was really cool because it never got really like a good um, – reissue uh, sound wise so like it was reissued through this other guy out here about 10 years ago and the packaging was really good like the cover was done with Mark Riddick and everything but like the sound quality was not good because it was basically just record it was it was dubbed off of like the original tapes onto like burned onto a CD it was a really, really poor job um, so where Dave you know he actually mastered everything really well and and did really good with the original tapes. Uh, I thought that was cool. So Dave, for sure, he's one of them. I'm really impressed with what he's doing. Because it's, it's cool run. when you get like new releases and then old reissue old shit. Like at that volume, it seems like you know he's, he's reissuing a lot of old shit. Like you too, Roy. You do that a lot too. You know, putting out new bands, which are also kind of you know. Putting out stuff. I only that... started putting out new bands again. I didn't put out any for fucking 15 years since Waking the Cadaver, so. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So well, I I guess, well, I, you... Not that I remember. The thing is, yeah. I put out a lot of new bands when they were new, so it would be like Fiona Brown when they were new, Dismo when they were new. So I'm, yeah. I'm wrong about that. I say Dismo, maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was like... funny. I was watching, like, like uh, Joe Francisco the other day, and, you know, the, like, well, like Gorephobia CD, you know? It's like, oh, fuck, I got yeah. one of those, you know? So that was kind of cool. I'm like, oh, I don't need, you know, you put out a lot of shit, man. And so I would say Necroharmonic gets definitely a top fucking 2023 shout out for sure, man. Yeah. Yeah, I put out Waking the Cadavers first record, brother. So, yeah. yeah, a long time ago. That was the 2006, 2007, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a little out of characteristic. Yeah, and we put out Dripping, too, which was a little out of characteristic for Necroharmonic. Yeah. And then I got a lot of shit for those fucking releases, dude. People be like, what the fuck is this, dude? You know? Because, you know, after you put out a bunch of old school death metal bands, you put yeah. out something that's kind of like a slam fucking death band, and they're like, what the fuck? And then the problem, the biggest problem with the Wake and the Cadaver thing was their fan base. The band was uh. normal, dude. The band yeah. was just normal motherfuckers. They listened to Gorephobia. They yeah. were, you know, they were into maybe some slam bands, but they weren't like all these like slam. But then their fans, those the fans were a bunch of fucking freaks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they were like what you see now on Instagram, what would be an Instagram model, hypothetically, in 2023. 
I would oh, say yeah, the yeah. first wave of those hit in 2007, and they were the way the cadaver fans, basically. Sure. Those yeah, are the people the that fucking... used to hit me up back then. Yeah, they're yeah. the Pantera fans of brutal death metal. Oh <laughs> man, they're the maybe juggalos yeah. of brutal. Yeah, death yeah, metal. a little bit, maybe a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I never, I, I never listened to that. I didn't once. anticipate that at the time. Yeah. You know, I have because. Not listened to that. I, I signed puppy them. Jackets it's... gave it away. I could anticipate. You know what? I signed then, them on the strength of only then. of their music. So like, I didn't, I didn't sign them on the strength of like what was going on on my. It's the kar- karate pick crew, dude. That that that's the best way you can describe that crowd. I, I, I mean, I've now... seen that a bunch of times. It's like, yo, move back, move back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. yep. Joe is at the show. Yeah, man, you you, you you might catch some jujitsu in the pit, you know? Like, yeah, like, scene yeah. kids, exactly. So that was the first, yeah, there was the first wave was kind of hitting right then, you know? Yeah, yeah. I saw them in 2007. I, I think I told you about my funny story with them that I'm not going to go into, but... Yeah, you yeah, saw they them were... in Cali, huh? Oh, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> they tried to beat up my friend because he sent them pictures of his dick when he was underage. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I got a lot of shit for that release, I have to say, but like I don't have any regrets towards it at all because yeah. oh, I mean sure it did well. I I it, it did okay. It. I mean, it did okay. Actually, yeah. it was delayed. The mixing process got delayed by 6 months, which that 6 months gap in my space must have been 10 years basically. <gasps> right, right. So I'll let you yeah, know that right now. Time. So it didn't do as good as you would imagine. And then Scott so, Ruth's son fucking came in and, as a, and remixed it. Scott Ruth's son, dude. What, like Ripping Corpse? Yeah, Scott Ruth from oh, Ripping Corpse's shit. son wow. came and remixed the fucking Waking the Cadaver. Oh, and then we put Scott, it in. Ruth, Scott Ruth's so old, he probably has like a son our age, you know? Yeah. yeah. He did. I <laughs> <You> think so. <laughs> but yeah, back then, six months of waiting to put a release out, to get it mixed yeah. by the basically the first two producers who produced their first two songs, which were like the popular like MySpace songs, which uh, they, that's the guy they went to to record their album. But then, I don't know, for some reason, the guy just like died on it. And in a weird way, I feel like I died on it too. Because I'm like, damn, I should have been up that guy's fucking shit to be like, yo, where the fuck is our record? You know what I mean? But instead, I, I mean, kind of laid back. Someone was like, too busy doing whore trains on their bulletin board back on MySpace <laughs> oh, to fucking shit. be out there <laughs> remixing. <laughs> they were doing post for post. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, at the what time. Band? What band are you talking about? Wake in the Cadaver. cadaver. Ooh, and at the okay. time, too, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, at uh, the time, too, like I might have been with I didn't I didn't do this intentionally. I did this because they were they were interested in merch, you know, so yeah, like oh, yeah. I might have unintentionally set off a little bit of that merch core fucking thing back then because we would put out shirt after shirt after fucking shirt, dude. And oh, they yeah. only had two songs out. Yeah. And basically, we had fucking like nine shirts, two hoodies, yeah. like yeah. fucking caps, and all kinds of shit. Songs. Before the well, record, they were the sandwich sugar bog of the early two thousand. Yeah. A little bit. Oh man! But that was, I mean, man. that you was me. That was the Each thing song. is that was me wanting that. Like I was like, yo, yeah. we gotta put out some more shit. Like let's make some shirts. Let's do this. Let's do that. You know, like, like I got a shirt printing connection. I got this connection. I got this. You know, like. So I, I was, you know, and then people like Mark Riddick would just like draw a week, a week in a cadaver fucking thing for us and yeah. send it to me. Be like, here, you want to use this for week in a cadaver? I'm like, I, I have it. a, I have a release that's kind of like that nowadays. When, when this band first started, they put out a demo in like 97 and it reminded me a lot of like gut at the time. There was no, and you know, you, you and I really like gut a lot, Roy. Right. Uh, and it kind of reminded me of that. So I, I put out a split seven inch of this band. It was like their second second release. And they, they got really, really silly and became one of those kind of obscene extreme style bands where it's just like, just goofy over the top shit. That's cock and ball torture. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, but there, whenever they first started out, it was, there was really nobody else doing that gut style of, of music. And I really liked those first gut seven inches, like the one you did. and the sperm and he's one and all that but then people are like what the fuck you released that i'm like dude uh i mean at the time i liked it and i i, I still dig it but uh i have no regrets in what i released because I, everything i released i liked at the time i released it right 
but I, I didn't know they were going to turn into this. Just and apparently, they became a pretty big band. I don't even know. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, they did blew up. Yeah, let me tell you. I mean, only I, to I a point, the they kept it pretty out of that band. band. I love them. I put yeah. like out a band that makes money. Anytime I've stopped, I mean, not if I didn't so they didn't so shit. I mean, I, I used to release. 500 EPs or whatever, you know, and that was it. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, that was one of them. It was, it's weird how, you know, 20 something years later, you know, people are you like, know what, what the? there was, you know what, what happened to cock and ball torture? They got thrown into a, uh, a YouTube like meme video looking thing. That's why, oh. that's why they got whatever happened you know well with the girls twerking and stuff yeah had like a yeah. had like either girls twerking or had like people oh. ballroom dancing or oh something. did they yeah so no. that's probably why it got the song like if you if you probably you probably can't search the word cock and ball torture i don't know what it's called but hey roy a, uh, a uh seven the, million fucking hit video with them on. well i mean you know uh I don't have any of the records. I wish I did. Maybe I could sell them all for fucking 50 bucks each now. But uh, <laughs> but the guys from Noxious Ruins said they're having a hard time logging in for some reason. Oh, I don't uh, know. I, maybe just... you could send them your link because sometimes the links get kind of weird when you set, resend them or whatever. All right. So if you want to resend them the link. Let me see if I have their email. It's just allow, 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 too. Yeah, I know. I know that weird. we have to log in with like. Uh, it won't let you log in with Google. You have no. to log in with Facebook to get onto this chat now. Oh, so, I was I was yeah. able to use Google. It told me your Google is not allowed, and I was like, God damn it! Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my wife has so the maybe they're doing too. Yeah, interesting. And then she yeah, signed on YouTube or something. To, uh, Hotmail. Hotmail. Yeah, yeah. Okay. might be a YouTube thing. He's right. Yeah, I signed in a YouTube account. I don't know. I mean, I don't know because I'm the one running it, so I don't. I know that you have to use a browser. That's all I know. Well, I yeah. can use my phone. Options. I had to open up my laptop. That that's all I had to do. I mean, on here, the preferred like best connection is the fucking laptop. So did you email it to him that way? I can tell him. Yeah, I sent it. Nox. I sent it to noxiousruinmag at gmail dot com. Right, Any cool. thoughts Follow. about bitch infection? Not many. I mean, I, they're cool fucking dudes, you know. Later in life, I realize I realize I must have put out one of the most disgusting fucking album covers ever, dude. That goes right there with the Scourge Mech. So. Oh yeah, I remember that release. I yeah, think I still oh, have that. Man. Especially the inside the, of it, dude. That too. Thanks, Nevermore rules for chiming in and yeah, coming to this crazy rules. fucking episode that's long as fuck. This is so <laughs> short compared. To some, <laughs> oh yeah, you know Boy, what? I mean, like twenty hours, man. This, right? This, yeah, yeah. This <laughs> fucking whole episode, though, is just a response to like album of the year, basically. Because I was not gonna fucking fuck with that, you know. I haven't fucked with that in a million years. Uh, All right, here we go. What's up, hey, brother? Hey, Harry, where? You got sound? You got sound? Can you guys hear me? Sure can. Hear me. Awesome, awesome. What's up, guys? Hello. Um, and this is. Sorry. I'm Wes, yeah. Noxious what? Ruin. Brian's the guy that most people know, but I, uh, I've been on the Noxious Ruin squad about two years or so now, I guess, at this point. So, we, you know, yeah. once the label cool. got we a little too big for him to handle by himself, I uh, I jumped in and, yeah, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Hold Phil on, shit. bring that yeah. up, brother. Whoa, sorry. Oh, wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, uh, that right there, that was the first release that, that I picked up or whatever after I uh, – Join the squad. That was my first, uh, like, like release that I went after or whatever. So yeah, yeah thanks, man. Cool, man. Thanks yeah, for joining thank us too, bro. It's awesome. Yeah. The magazine Noxious Ruin it like brings back in color though everything that the old an old fanzine would bring you. You know what I mean? With really yeah, fucking I mean, that's, tight that's interviews, retrospects. The amount of artwork in there is like completely fucking phenomenal, and especially seeing it in Amazing. full color. That's the coolest Thank thing you. about Noxious. Coolest thing about, uh, I think, I mean, is the artist, uh, uh, I guess, information you find about all these different artists, like literal artists, you know, people that draw and shit like that. I think that's the coolest, at least my favorite thing. I don't want to say it's the coolest, but it's my favorite thing about the magazine is 
they highlight different artists from all over the world. And that, that's yeah, what artwork awesome. is badass, man. Yeah, yeah. Badass. Brian did a couple of like straight up like art magazines before he started Noxious Ruins. So he kind of was already plugged into that network of just like fucked up, like weird fucking art or whatever, dark art, just fucking weird shit. And then, uh, you know, after he did, I think, a few of those art mags, he decided, well, shit, let's, I want to do a fucking death metal magazine. And I think that was around the time that, you know, the story fucking pandemic hit. It's like, the fuck am I going to do? Let's, let's do all these things that I've wanted to do and haven't had the time to do. And uh, he mm -hmm. sort of started that. And around the time he started the label, he put out one of my bands and we became friends. And then, you know, after a couple of years, like I said, he was just like, yeah, I need some help. With oh, shit. Yeah, look at this motherfucker. <laughs> I was at a boat. <laughs> Sorry, man. I was Holy having a hard shit. time logging in. I'm at a show. So oh, I was shit. having a hard time logging in. Dude, I Sick. can't believe you're awake, Brian. Oh, yeah, it's Saturday night. I've had can a week turn, off work, so. Can you turn your what phone up? sideways, brother, and see if we still get you landscape? There you there go. Perfect. Nice. Thank you, sir. What we're show just, are you at? We're just worshiping your label right now. Oh, uh, thanks, man. Uh, I'm at a local band uh, from Detroit called uh, Winds of Neptune. They're pretty cool. So they're kind of like a old '70s hard rock band. Cool. Pretty Good cool. Skip Skip this band played tonight too. Oh Is yeah, a new, Grub. Band, new, new death metal band called Grub. Um, what the? Yeah, I wanted to go see him, but uh, Skip just from that. Head Rot. He's in a, uh, or was in Head Rot. Uh, he yeah, has a, or, you know, he's in Head Rot. Um, he has a new band called Grub. They just played their first, I think that's the first show tonight. Yeah, first or second one, yeah. Takashi's hey, on! What's up, Takashi's Takashi on! You want to come on here and fill the ninth <laughs> Hollywood Square of children? Yeah, I'll jump off. If anybody else wants to jump in, I can jump off and just watch, you know? Uh... Yeah, that's cool. You guys all sitting inside, all warm. I'm standing outside smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he Damn. said, so um, your partner here had said that you got, you had like an art background and doing some art magazines before yep. you stepped into doing um, doing the label. And so like I'm assuming you had some kind of screen printing and printing background too because. The, um, the yeah, I mean, kind of like I did screen printing when I was in high school about 40 some years ago and uh i don't know i did it a little bit here and there like when i was in a punk rock scene and like just make t-shirts for my friends and shit like that like it's just a homemade rig and uh i don't know when i started doing the label i was like oh cool uh yeah i guess i haven't screen printed in 30 years i can do that no problem so yeah and then like the old art magazines and stuff that i used to do uh back in like the mid 2010s um it was basically just all a bunch of weirdo art not too much different from all like death metal art that we figure that we feature now, but just all really weird kind of sexual stuff and just weirdo stuff, you know. So that mm. magazine, one of the magazines is called Skull Fuck by Ghouls, and then I, I had like seven different magazines that I did with other people. Um, but yeah, I did those for I don't know five or six years or something like that, and then uh, stopped and started decided to do Knock Through and. So I always want to do the art magazines were like just art. They weren't there was no so much of writing or anything in them and. Uh, so um, I just wanted to do something where there was like interviews and writing and whatever music in it. So yeah, and then like the first the first impression I got about like a Noxious Ruin uh, releases is like that you would go like in, you know make like a like a hand printed like cover and then you would make like a like a box for it or you put yep. out the Anatomia fucking coffin yeah. with the all fucking stuff, cockroaches. Yeah. That is bad, yep. yeah. All that stuff was all handmade. I mean, I screen printed stuff. I mean, when in the beginning, I was like, I was like all those uh, set cases, I was um, cutting by hand. I would I just buy big like card stock and then like print what the art was on there because I wanted to combine like, why I was doing this different thing was I wanted to combine the release with like uh, artists, you know, rendering of something, something really cool, you know, so I just had a lot of artist friends and a lot of people that I've known for a long time. And I'm like, hey, do this release for Anatomia or whoever. And they'd make something right. really fucking cool. And then I'd print it. And, but at the beginning, I was cutting everything out by hand, you know, one by one, everything. Screen print oh, everything. I mean, man. I still do the same thing. Now I just, we don't cut all the um, the Maltese cases by hand anymore. It's too much work. So, I got you. But, yeah. Hold them all by no, hand. I mean, it yeah. puts an underground aesthetic and feel like a different... It, it makes the release more special in a weird way, you know? For sure. I, I mean, mean I like, you, you didn't seem like you you created this... I'm just going to say this out loud because I don't care who, like, hears this. But, like, you didn't create 
you didn't put out releases that look like they were like fake by obscurity lines to be like oh here's an underground release and like but no. in reality you know like you kind of like there's certain say face uh, what is it band camp bands they kind of say like oh no we're sold out but then next month it's like oh it's band camp friday suddenly we yeah. found fucking five copies of this you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean we never you know the only reason people always <laughs> that they're like oh why do you make stuff so linen and i'm like because everything's by fucking hand man i'm doing everything by hand you know right. so you can't make a thousand of something you, you, know, you know you can only make what you can do and right. plus you know a lot of the bands that like we put out aren't known bands they're not big bands they're just bands that put out a demo or have a couple demos so it was you know i wasn't making a lot of them i was making you know 50 75 100 you know bigger bands right. like Sophia yeah. and undergang and things like that i tried to make more but um you know it's just, it's just a matter it's not a matter of like trying to make it limited it's a matter of more um i don't know just because i couldn't that's as much work as i wanted to do as much work as you could put into that particular release hypothetically yeah 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 i wanted to like sell stuff and move on and like do other stuff you know like right. you know, more bands and everything i mean just like that ruin release that we just did recently with the the burger box you know it had all the shit i mean like ass, I, I, I bought fucking Fuck. rolls of duct tape and then like took apart a fucking tape gun and had my drill it was rolling miniature little little rolls of tape and Wes was like, "What the fuck are you doing, man? Can you buy those?" And I'm like, "No, nope, hillbilly engineering, man." I'm like, "I got to do all, all myself." So I'm, got my fucking, I'm like, "Oh, I'll roll ten or fifteen a day," and you know, it's just whatever. But it's cool to put stuff out like that because there's no one oh, else. That was incredible that. box set. Man. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. The yeah. little fold out knife and everything. I want oh, yeah. the fold out knife, man. That's all yeah. I want to do is a fold out knife. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny too because like Wes, you know, my partner here, he's like. His, you know, some of his business is doing like laser etching. So we're like, yeah, we'll laser etch this and we'll laser etch the box. And we'll do, you know, it's like between us, we got like a good arsenal of like being able to screen print and being able to etch stuff and be able, you know, like just to make stuff cool. That's I don't awesome. know, man. I'm, I'm like a fucking huge music collector. So, uh, you know, like and fan. So it's like, it's always cool to get something that's not just a tape that somebody put out that they got from the fucking plant that's just like standard norelco you know i like i just like cool shit it's always fun when you get something you're like oh this is really cool and it comes with this little thing or it's special you know i don't know that's just me so well, that it took, was like the it's idea. like you took some of the special characteristics that other people would try to you know, like half step on and you like you took it to like another fucking level so that's kind well of cool. it's because when people you know new people doing stuff i mean you know god bless them because they're fucking wanting to do stuff and release bands but you know all they do is push a couple buttons on the computer and they got a tape mailed to their house and it's like oh here these are for sale so i just have enough you know it's like my wife's an artist i mean you know like my friends are artists so i just do shit like that and i'm like oh it's you know, you know wes is like oh, gonna suck doing like nine screen prints on this one thing and i'm like yeah but it's gonna be really cool so i don't know <laughs> i just can't make fucking thousands of them you know people are like oh, i didn't get that and i'm like yeah that's sorry you know well and that that's probably why their stuff is, is cool because they're actual artists that you know when an artist does something he wants to put his best fucking his best work forward doesn't want to have to ask anything. You know what I mean? It's it's different if somebody doing a label was doing that. I guess they 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 look at it, or you know, they have a whole different perspective on 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 what they're doing, other than somebody who has no art background whatsoever. I would say, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like, like I said, I know so many artists that it's easy for me to just go, hey, I'm doing this release or whatever, and you want to make some art for it? And I just give them free reign. I'm just like, oh, it's for Anatomia or it's for this band or whatever. And they're just like, oh, I'll make something fucking cool. Well, I want to say, too, though, with Noxious Ruin releases and band-wise, like, you sometimes put out some stuff that's a little <laughs> cutting edge. You know what I mean? Uh, like, you might put out a release of a band that I had not heard of up to that moment. So that's like, yeah, well, you're pretty I mean, fucking that tapped in. That's kind of the that's kind of the idea. It's not like I'm trying to go like so underground nobody hear, has heard of anything, but at the same time, you know, people send me stuff and I'm like, "Oh, this is really fucking cool and I'm going to fucking put this out," you know. So, I mean, I just like I don't know if Wes said it, but I mean, we only push it out we like. I, I don't, you know, I've been approached by bigger bands that are like, "Oh, what you do is cool." And I'm like, eh, "I'm not really into your stuff." So, I'm um, yeah, it's bad. I hear Hell you. Yeah. Integrity. Integrity. Yeah, 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 we call that fucking integrity. integrity. Yeah, okay, I mean, this guy wants a so flex. You flex. guys, oh, what is that? Uh, that's the inside of the hate field. Oh, yeah. Oh, the hate field. Jesus. Yeah. yeah it's, oh, it's like a Beyond the Gates fucking folded out. That's style, some complex yeah. fucking work, dude. 
Yeah, yeah. that's pretty yeah. fucking gnarly, man. I love I mean, that. All, all of our releases are on those, like, Maltese boxes. You know, they we don't, like, have Norelco cases. We don't use Norelco cases for our sets. We just, all of them are in those uh, in those Maltese boxes. And we use a couple different colors of them. And then screen print them, you know, on shit. And put inserts in them. And try to, you know, make stuff that's cool. So, I'm glad people dig it. Yeah, yeah, when so, you screen yeah, print, like, I got a question as a screen printer. When you screen print, like, the covers and all the stuff that you're doing there, are you doing yeah. it with, like, a small press? Are you trying to do a full-size press and you um, make a jig or something? Yeah, my all my shit that I have for screen printing is all homemade. Okay. Oh, Every bit of it. The only thing that I don't do is I don't burn my own screens. I have a company that burns them for me. And uh, other than that, just because I don't want to, like, deal with all the chemicals and I don't really have, like, the, you know, when you deal with all that, like, making your own screens and shit, it's, the, you know, chemicals. Times, a lot of I also <laughs> sub out some of my screens as oh, well. Shit. Just because but, the uh, place yeah, has no, better every, exposure unit than I do. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, people that do it, it's cool. If you know how to do it, you can, you know, deal with it. But, I mean, I, I, I pay, like, 25 bucks for a screen. So, I'm not, it's really not a big deal. It's not, a, like, an expensive cost out of uh, yeah, that's not get a release or anything like that, you know. And then I just, I, like, have them stripped and reburned. So, you know, every every time we do a release, I just get rid of the screens. And, you know, unless it's something I think I'm going to redo. But I've never really repressed anything. So, I don't know, you know. But, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, that's just all homemade shit. and. You know, just, use, wood, uh, just wood and hinges or what yeah pretty much yeah okay yeah you Man, know what's cool every... what's cool about the releases is you can't bootleg that shit nope <laughs> yeah well, I mean, I <laughs> Not easy could, anyway. but, you know, take some work <laughs> I think most those people aren't willing to put the work in so that's exactly cool. not on a screen print like that oh yeah. no so what what is your guy's inbox now i know noxious ruin is, is i think you've got kind of made a name for yourself now with with the magazine and all that and the comps what's the inbox looking like with people hey can i be on the next issue or the next cop is that is that you guys delete 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 we pick all the shit that we want to do we don't bro please <laughs> I, I tell people to send me stuff if they want to and i get demo stuff all the time and like i yeah. get a lot of like black metal stuff which i'm not particularly into or into like releasing but you right. know I, i'm polite with people i just go yeah we you know it's not something we do so but yeah we get i get it depends you know like artist wise you know we always throw out open submissions for like artists that want to be in max's ruin so anybody can anybody that wants to make yeah. art can submit it to us you know and then we pick the best ones and put them in there um so it's it's pretty open in that way i've had some you know people like go oh i should be doing a cover and i'm like yeah i don't even really like your art so i'm yeah, I don't think <laughs> I'm and i'm pretty honest with people you know i don't want to pull any punches with anybody because i you know oh, yeah. who gives that curve you to be lying to people and be like oh i love your art but uh, uh yeah. we'll do it uh, 10 years from now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well yeah, i mean you guys you guys uh Included a friend of mine from Mexico in, in one of the issues, Mark oh, Marga. Yeah. Marga. Yeah, she's awesome. she fucking yeah, rules. She's yeah, awesome. so she was totally appreciative of you know you guys, but because she doesn't yeah, she really. Did a couple of uh, she did a couple of things for a couple of releases too. When we did that uh, that vomit breath uh, reissue. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Sessions of a necro necrophiliac priest or whatever. She nice. did, uh, I was like, hey, you want to do this thing? And I gave her like their art, which was to look like a tenth grader did oh, it. Oh, is that it right there? That, that, that yeah, this is that cool. vomit breath shit. And she yeah, did that? Yeah, there yeah, is. yeah, she did the, oh, the vomit oh, breath, the, the inner cover or whatever. That's so yeah. I wish I wish I could put you solo. When Roy comes back, show that again so we can put yeah, it on. That's, that's so good, man. That's yeah. very yeah, good. she rules. She rules. She yeah, did she, uh, I, you know it on that. I never like paid her for anything, but I just I said, I'll send you a shitload of stuff. Like what's your t shirt size? Yeah. I printed her a bunch of shirts and like gave her a bunch of magazines and a bunch of releases and stuff. And I'm like, she's like, Yeah, if you ever need art, just hit me up. So you yeah, know, she did uh she did our cover, our cover for the cemetery and split with Absconder. She's yeah, done yeah. stuff for Wolf Skull. She's done stuff for Pius Levis. Now she's done a lot of shit, which is cool. And I was, it was, it was awesome that you guys uh, uh, included her in that. It's cool. To, I didn't even know she had done extra work or that other stuff. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, when I find some like artist people that I like, or we find people that we like, you know, yeah. we use them. I mean, we'll say, hey, if you're interested, we'll, you know, let's, you can do like the screen printed poster for the next issue, or you can do the cover, or you can do the tape or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you know, so we just try to keep people in the loop. And like, we, you know, usually we like, we huh? pick up that stuff, you know, like the cover and all the stuff, the magazine, yeah. stuff like that. So I love you. Good night, baby. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. You guys are in. Uh, so, how, how are, you, are you guys two like just longtime friends, or how did you guys look up? 
How did me and Wes hook up? Yeah, yeah. How did how did how did y'all come to work together? Um, Tinder. <laughs> he said and his name, Tinder Ed was like this Southern bearded handsome fella <laughs> looks for an old grizzled guy that likes so, metal. Damn. I was like, okay, I'm in. Instant, obviously, instant. No, his his uh, one of his bands was like one of my first releases, uh, Guilty View, and oh, okay. uh, we just struck up a friendship from there and always stayed in touch and threw shit back and forth to each other. And then when uh, he was starting to do, uh, he had the idea to do that Preservation of Death magazine. I was like, oh, I'm all the way in with that. And uh, yeah, so then we were just like, hey, we should partner up. And uh, yeah, two heads are better than one. I was just sick of like, my biggest thing was like making all the stuff. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, I got to ship everything. And <laughs> I mean, I, 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 Max Ruin would go on sale and I would sell 400 magazines in like three days and then have to ship Fuck, yes. Oh, and I'm like motherfucker. So now he's the shipping bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a bitch. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean that's a that's you a need good, help. That's, yeah, you, you need that's help. a good problem to have though. You know, if you sell sure. fucking, yeah, yeah I mean, fucking we're, magazines, we're, we're super small scale. I mean, it's we're not doing anything. We're not like a big label. The magazine does not now. look small scale. Yeah, though. I mean it's it's all good. I mean the magazine. You know, we usually print. You know, three hundred, uh, four hundred, some copies, and it sells pretty quickly. And it's yeah. kind of a thing. I mean, most people are like, "Man, I pay no twenty three dollars for a magazine," but they don't realize it's like they're getting a huge magazine that's full color. They're getting a cassette. They're getting a screen yep. print poster. It's like, oh yeah, you know, hey, if you don't want to buy it, don't buy it, man. Move along. Yeah, that's move why along. our motto. Yeah, is, that's why our motto is get with it or get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, dude. That 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 rules. I mean, it looks like a magazine. That I could have bought as a kid, like uh, on the the fucking racks of like Seven Eleven or something. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Yeah. My I mean, motto, my I mean, motto is seriously. So many people, so many like underground people go, man. Why do you make the magazine so like glossy and so nice? And I'm like, because I what? can. Because I don't have to use the fucking Xerox at my work. Yeah. I can fucking spend the money and do it, you know? And that's how all my, like, old art magazines were, too. I was like, well, I'm going to fucking bother doing this, man. I'm going to do it right. Like, not, you know, fuck around with it. It's like, you know, it may be glossy and it may be like a book, but it's also, you know, the shit that's in it is pretty fucking underground and you're not going to really, you know, unless you know, you know, you know, like, unless it's right. an old band, like Grave or Massacre or something like that, you know? So That just further proves that People will complain about any fucking oh, thing. Yeah. 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 I don't. I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't give jeans. A fuck. People made them because they, that's Thanks, all they Justin. knew or could afford to do. Yeah. You know, like right. you could actually sure. afford to do oh, something. I mean, I that fucking, they fucking would have. You know, exactly. I mean, I fucking fanzines and punk fanzines when I was a kid and shit like that and metal ones. I mean, because yeah. you're stealing copies and shit. I mean, I totally get it. You know, but it's just funny to hear somebody say like. Oh, your magazine's too nice and it's too expensive. You know, it's like, oh, well, well, you know, well, don't buy it. it. I mean, <laughs> if there's someone in behind you, get the fuck out of the way. Basically, that's yeah. the way I yeah. Yeah. kind of looked at things in <laughs> certain moments in my life. Yeah, that's just. Or funny. maybe you don't fucking deserve it. Basically, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. At the end of the day, like I, I know Wes has the same idea that I do, or the same fucking ethics that I do. But the shit that we do, I do for. I do it for me. It's cool that people want to buy it or whatever or into it. But at the end of the day, when I get that magazine in the fucking mail, like when I get all the copies in the mail, I look at it. I'm like, yeah, this yeah. Is cool, man. Oh, yeah. And I and I and it's a bonus that it sells. You know, it's like I'm not. People are always like, oh, what are you advertising here? Send it to Metal Hammer. To send it to fucking you know KK Downing yeah. or something. And I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't give a fuck, you know. I mean, it's cool to get exposure, but other than that, I don't. I don't really give a fuck. You know? I mean, that is that is the best thing. That is the best thing, though. When you get when you receive something you you've done and you worked on, and you get that final product, and you're like, "Fuck yeah, dude, this yeah. rules." It's a nice high. Anything anything after that is just extra, right? I mean, the only highs you get like that are when you put out a release or you have a kid. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> there ain't too many other ones. Some of my releases are better than my kids. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, like, only a couple of them. Now. How many <laughs> life highs can you get? And it's like they're very fucking limited, you know. Yeah, it's like it's really a business element to keep your shit going too. You know, like yeah. you know, it's like we do it because we love it, but we do it because we want to continue to do it. You yeah. know, it's gotta be. I mean, you know, part, like, 
punk ground. Part of the too. I like started like Noxious Ruin too was because like I used to go to shows at the beginning of death metal. You know, like I always say like I'm old enough to be around before heavy metal. I mean, I remember listening to like rock shit on the radio and then it was like all of a sudden you started hearing like some heavy metal stuff and you're like, oh, what the fuck? And I worked at a record store at the time. And then, you know, obviously heavy metal goes into heavier stuff and then death metal and whatever. And I was like, I went to all those shows, man, and stuff. So I did for a really long time, like probably after the late nineties, I didn't go to any death metal shows, but I had so much experience and shit with those bands that I was like, man, if I do a magazine, it'd be cool to like have a throwback where I'd like kind of share my stories and also like talk to those old people, like, you know, reefer from, uh, from autopsy. It's like, I've known that dude for a long time, you know? So it's like, it's kind of cool to be able to kind of touch back with those people and be like, Hey man, I'm doing this fucking thing, you know? And so, but okay. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah, gonna lie. Man. I'm not gonna lie. When I first was you said in it all, there, got, my man. Yeah, when I first, when I first got in contact with him, I thought I, I was thinking, well, it's, it was probably some young kid doing this for some reason. That was my first <laughs> time because I didn't know you. I didn't know you guys, you know. Yeah. So uh, I was like, and then I was, I was like, oh, hold on, this guy's like my age, <laughs> you know. So because yeah, it's usually uh, young guys that got the energy to put in all that work. Yeah. Well, mm. yeah. So I've been around a minute, you know, yeah. in a lot. So it's not like you know the I'm, magazine I, shows though you know even though they oh, have yeah. new bands in there like the the total output especially with the art part too yeah exactly you, know, like, you bring in like a lot of that art part back in with a full color art part it's like Fangoria fancy. it's like Fangoria right yeah. kind of yeah. Well, I mean, I grew way, up yeah. with I grew up with fucking you know Erie Publications and fucking Fangoria and all that bullshit so yeah. I mean natural i mean i've been a fucking fan of art for a really really long time since i was a little kid my grandpa used to take me to the Detroit institute of art when i was a kid and i didn't understand it i was like oh what's this big museum with all these and he's like that's famous and this is and you know i think it just came from the love of that kind of shit you know mm, and uh cool yeah I, I don't know man but i've always loved it and always loved to like expose it and like you know see something that i really dig and go man i want to like see what that was what my art magazine was about i was seeing so much fucking kick-ass art that i was like i gotta do something i gotta compile this and put it in a fucking book or a magazine i gotta talk about something important since you're in like in, involved with getting stuff like printed like a magazine hypothetically right, so right, sometimes right. like when it comes to doing like print work right and i'm sure anyone that runs a record label has run into this you might be putting out like a print work that's kind of fucking obscene basically and oh, too yeah. obscene for the printer hypothetically well so, I've never, you got I've never you got some stories happen. on that one yeah i've never had that happen but i can tell you one thing i got my children taken away from me for a year because i was accused of being a pornographer so oh. my kids were younger my i got divorced and my ex-wife my my new girlfriend painted this big mural on my wall that was like a bunch of like kind of demon chicks like ripping a dude apart and like one one of the demon chicks had like a penis in her mouth and my kids had grown up on my art my weirdness i mean i'm covered in tattoos you know i've had tattoos for shit longer than most people have been alive but uh my ex-wife thought that it was inappropriate for him and so uh you know, ask you to remove it, and I was like, "Fuck you, man!" I'm like, "I'm not married to you anymore." And then the next thing I know, I got shit from the court, and I got. Mm, she used mm. it as a weapon, wow. up, man. Damn, she used wow. it as a weapon. Uh -huh. That's funny. Yeah. I, I just heard that. That's man. kind of funny, though, yes. man. Holy when I was shit. like 14, like our cover art was like pretty fucking like that. Like there was dicks hanging out, sexual crazy. You try to stuff. take it to somewhere to get printed, and they're like, yeah. uh, I was a my straight wife fire. works here. Yeah. I, was a, I, was nah, I never had that problem. I always, I, all the time I ever got anything printed, I never had anybody do, like say anything was questionable or, hey, we won't print this or anything like that, you know. <laughs> never had that problem before. Nice. So, but I mean, luckily, because there was a lot of shit that was like, you know, bordering on pornography, but it's art, you know, I guess what I always right. said, I'm like, this isn't like child porn or something. <laughs> Obviously. Internet porn. This is fucking just art. It's someone. I had, I had porn. one release that nobody would print. Hmm. What was it? What's that? that? I fucked up. It was the rupture nihilistic split. Ah, oh. rupture fucking rules, man. Yeah. <laughs> fucking so what rupture happened? rules. Like, and all their shit, all, all their exactly. art was always great. Like, like. Chick sucking a like a priest dick or something, you know, like, <laughs> club crap. like loved all that stuff. Yep, I had I had that one record, man. It took, I went through like ten printers. Nobody would fucking touch it, man. Oh uh, yeah, wow, I, I, man. I, I, I that. had that record too. It was gut it, hyper intestinal vulva desecration, <laughs> and the art was by Stevo from Ipatago. Nice. <laughs> I had that too with the vomit spawn viscera seven inch I put out uh, like in '98 or whatever it was, and. 
Nobody wanted to print it. And I, I live in a small town, so you're really not going to fucking yeah. print that shit. Yeah. Well, you know, like when I started printing. When I, print, press, <laughs> I, print, right? I thought I wanted yeah. like a digital uh, printer in California. So that was like what I was always using and still use to this day. And they've never, they I don't know what the company's all about. They're called Printivity. And uh, they always do my shit and send it to me. And I've never heard a fucking, you know, a crossword or uh, we can't print this or, yeah, you know, there's yeah. been some fucked up stuff. I mean, if anybody knows, um, you know, anybody know uh, Mike Diana? Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you about yeah. him. Wow. He, he, <laughs> I, I was, I've been friends with that guy for a really long time and uh, since like shit probably the 90s and uh, I used to kind of pen pal with him and stuff but he did a bunch of art for my old art magazines and stuff like that I don't talk to him anymore not for any reason just I kind of lost touch with him or whatever but uh, yeah he, he did a bunch of stuff and you know I was like yeah dude I'll I, I was telling him I was like yeah I'll print some stuff for you too if you ever want like some you know just some like small posters or something I'll screen print them for you if you want if you ever have problems and you know he was he was cool about it but uh, you know so oh he was awesome he drew the yeah. autopsy written with disease cover for me oh did he yeah yeah, yeah. back in like two nineteen ninety nine two thousand. 2000 it was our first first necroharmonic cd actually Dang. did you guys uh, did you CD. guys watch the documentary on him i didn't uh, see that I, yeah i watched that <laughs> yeah. They yeah. Defi- you know what when i was talking to him they were still he had to move to new york because there was like yeah. being under yeah, investigation in for the gainesville killer or whatever yeah yeah, he still lives in New York. He's, he's been there. I follow him on Instagram and, like, kind of – I haven't messaged him in a while, but, like, I see his posts every once in a while and stuff. And, yeah, he still lives in New York. He collects fucking old toys, and he's still a fucking weirdo, Still you know? a fucking weirdo, definitely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, the, on that – the only thing that was weird to me on that documentary, which is weird to say on the documentary about Mike Diana, was that Jello Biafra was the fucking guy doing the narrating. That was yeah. just weird. <laughs> yeah, but that I was just, you know – you think about that shit. That's like freedom of speech shit, you know. So it's like, oh well, yeah, yeah, it makes you sense. know, if you get someone like Jello Biafra to like speak for you, that's that says a lot, you know. I yeah. mean, you know, just for the fact that he's always been like free speech and that yeah, whole fucking deal, totally. you know. Yeah. But it so, just the whole thing, just his voice just threw me off a little bit. For sure. So yeah. Brian, I'm gonna, if you guys are gonna hang out for a while, I'm gonna have to log off because we're gonna probably yeah do it too. Far, but yeah, yeah, to yeah, Brian I'm, anyway. Oh, you're still. Uh, Thank you, man. Around, yeah, thanks for yeah, we'll be on for a little while. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I, mean, I should be home in like you know twenty, thirty minutes or something. Same you, just, you just sold two two magazines by being on here in five minutes for five minutes. I did what? The guy <laughs> said he just ordered seven and eight just because he goes you sold them already. Yeah. <laughs> right out <on> with that. <laughs> Whatever, man. Let's, let's talk. <laughs> exactly. Man, this house is probably the best for me. So. But uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll hook back up with you guys, and if not, if I don't hook back up with you guys tonight or whatever, Roy, we'll do a we'll do something. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Time. I'll join another time or something. So, all right, man. Ooh, Thank you, man. All. Yes, appreciate you shedding light on the label. Wow. Yeah, yeah, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. One of the best yeah. fucking labels too. So yes, thanks. Yes. Peace, y'all. Later. Yeah. All right, we still got okay. Brian here though, so he can no, talk. No, that later. was Brian. Oh, that, yeah, was, that Brian. was Brian. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you know what it is? I looked through my messages and I'm like, all right, it was Brian, the last person I talked to. But it was yeah, you, yeah. the last person I talked to. Two names makes it confusing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> sorry. So, like, I mean, in in with the label, like, it's cool that someone in the chat like like went and looked for it. You know, that's sick. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. There you go, man. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Spirit in the asshole world. <laughs> yeah, Yo, you fucking rule, dude. Now, oh, yeah. You fucking rule, bro. He's been on this show too, so. I was trying to find uh, co- one of the copies I have just to show everybody, but I, I yeah, had, I mean, I, I couldn't I'm, find mine. I'll pull down the black curtain if that happens, you know. Yes. Yes. The, the, the Wizard of Oz shit. Back away, man. You know. I gotta start getting into that shit more. Again. I wrote an article for Noxious Ruin about fucking agoraphobia incantation day of death fucking invasion. Yep. Because incantation wasn't scheduled to play that, and they weren't on the flyer. And then agoraphobia only had like a couple songs, so like incantation like just went on stage with their fucking equipment and just played the fucking. They just like forced themselves on a day of death. <laughs> How you do it? Like split the set time, I guess. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's that's yeah, what it said. So yeah, it was fucking cool, man. And then like, 
I, I think Venner quit because of that too, because he's like, "Yo, I can't go up there and fucking do that. Fuck that," you know. <laughs> I, think the, I think the story said something about John also playing with like Mortician that night or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, John played yeah. with Mortician too, and they yeah. killed it at that show, man. Damn, that was some yeah. old, old fucking shit. I mean, the funny thing is, the Day of Death, you would imagine like thousands of people, like the Maryland Death Fest, but it was more like a small fucking show, you know. It was big at times. Like, say, when Cannibal Corpse played and Baphomet played, it was at its biggest. But that w- they were the hometown guys right there. You yeah, know? but how many of those bands had actual albums out at that time? Mm, Very like, few. None, dude. Very few. The first time I saw McEntee play with the incantation was with Mortician. Yeah, like, almost it was, none. It was, uh, they both played at the Church House Inn out yeah. here in Providence. And I bought both. Well, I bought one demo and photocopied the other because I couldn't afford both. For sure, <laughs> the old school way. We both that, yeah. The, you the and your demo. boy team up, and you're like, you get that demo, and I'll get yeah. this one. I guess so. We'll I got the original off. demo number two, Mortician, because that was mm. like three bucks. And then my buddy bought the white de- uh, tape, the label, it just a logo, just demo eighty nine or whatever. Yeah. So I photo. We all photocopy and just dub tapes and so. Oh yeah, you for sure. You know dude. what I mean? And then the underground way. That's how you do it? Yeah, yeah that's what we did. Yeah. You I buy mean, that one, I buy this one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, things changed once digital hit, you know, because now things are just like click, 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 you know. But I mean, I don't know for the worse sometimes and for the better, because the, the thing I probably worry about and why I talk about like record labels and stuff is because like people aren't fucking with enough like physical shit. So like. Well- Yo, yeah. like, you could go and get a double cassette deck from, like, a thrift store for seven bucks or something. You know, you might, it might not be working for too yeah, long. both That's sides might not work. Right? You know, so you don't want to play your shit and just get fucked up, but... Now it's like there's a there's like a second hand like uh, audio store that's been around. They're try that they're fixing them up and they're selling them for like ridiculous amounts of money now. Mm, uh, like I've it's, seen it's, that it's, too. It's, it's it's crazy. Like I want I need to get like a new deck and I was looking at a few and I can't afford any right fucking now because they're just way overpriced. Yeah, <laughs> it I mean, sucks. It's it's a weird. It's either scene. that or you got to go get one of those fucking like suitcase things that eat your fucking record up and like nobody wants anyways. <laughs> like it's either that or pay fucking a thousand dollars for some fucking secondhand you know yeah. Sears deck that somebody paid you know nine dollars for it fucking you know back in the eighties or whatever. Yeah, it's, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Tapes are I, a rough. I, scene. I come across them a lot, Derek. I'll keep my eyes open if you want. Yeah, hell yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so will I actually because yeah. I have absolutely. a thrift store by me. I'm, I'm always out there hunting, man. So uh, I'll yeah, keep my eyes open. Yeah, because there's, there's a great store, and it, you know, it's like local to me, literally, I'm like right down the road. But I lately, got four decks here if you're handy and you want to put the fucking electrical in them a little and fuck with them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wish I. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I scooped up shit at my spot, too. And, you know, like I have, yeah, it's, it's the fucking well, boom box with the detachable speakers. The thing sounds analog as fuck. Yeah. And then, what do you call it? Only one tape deck works. But I'm like, well, that other one's fucking working, you know? Yeah, we just got one, yeah. Yeah, I got, like, both of mine are sketchy. I feel like you're gonna be dubbing tapes anytime soon. I haven't right? dubbed the tape in fucking. Let's <laughs> <laughs> like dub all your rare shit, so that way you're gonna play. You know, like an old like my yeah. Old Dennis demos, from those, Analog Archive was talking about that. He said, you know, he's like, oh, sometimes I worry about playing my old tapes. You know, and I'm just you, like, you ever you ever notice when like do. you ever notice like if a tape gets eaten or fucked up or damaged, it's always something completely valuable and something you can't replace. It's oh, never some bullshit. <laughs> It's never some one dollar bullshit. So it's the two hundred dollar tape I'll never be able to get again. Well, you need to start dubbing, start dubbing on those one dollar tapes, then I guess. Yeah, well, man, fortunately, there's some tapes I'll just never play. You know, like uh, oh, one you're, you're one of those guys. That's well, I, mean, yeah, I, I, would, I already got a record. You're one of those. I'll never you're those. one of those guys. <laughs> I'll never play this. It's just gonna sit here. Let's see that. Let's... Hold on a second. Let me oh yeah, that's the Wild record. Rags. The Wild Rags one. I'll never, I'll never play oh, that. No, Slimer. No. Slimer. <laughs> Slimer's joined the chat. Okay, yeah, the Wild Rags. Wild Rags. Tyrant. You know, yeah. no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that rules. Yeah, these, these aren't getting played anymore. Okay. Like, yeah, just, man. Wait, wait, bring those back up, brother. 
I sold my, I sold those. I sold, I sold both of my copies yeah. of that. Interesting. These are. I'm not gonna play those anymore. These are just. You know, Give because, a pencil twist every now and then. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Oh. Keep it just gonna get fucked up. You know. Tape I mean? sucks. Someone said. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love tapes, man. I love tapes. <laughs> I love tapes. You know. If, hey, if, I will. If, I will say. Uh, I bought I'm more saying, tapes in 2023 than I bought in 1990. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Oh, no, I don't buy that. that, that I don't buy that. <laughs> I don't. Maybe 2000. <laughs> but not in mean, 1990. Nice brand new, like you know, back in the, something like reliable, then different story, you know. It but, used to be a hundred bucks. Let's be honest, you know, yeah. you could get a hundred dollar tape deck. Yeah, a good one. Now it's a five hundred dollars because I know yeah. because I st- stupidly have one, you know. Yep. Well, I don't know which tape deck you had back back in the nineties, Roy, but Roy's dubs were always. Better than anybody else's shit. I okay, that was the, that was the Kenwood. So that thing right. was fucking awesome. That's what I'm yeah, that was a machine. That's what I got right now. It's going finally. My Kenwood's going double deck. The Kenwood tape deck is a machine, man. If anyone yeah. in the chat wants to go look for that on eBay or something, I don't know what model it is, but uh, that <laughs> thing fucking sounded so good, dude. See, I, 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 and I always bring it up. You have but, uh, brought it up before, dude. I, br- I, I brought it up, but it's fucking hilarious because I remember getting the because uh, Roy taped me the grotesque. Uh, uh, what was that in the Embrace Gardens of Evil? Of grief or well, no, it was it was the Embrace of Evil Embrace uh, promo. Of evil. No, it was a promo demo or whatever from '89. Take that shit years ago, and, I, and that that to me that's what that recording sounded like. That's what it's that's what it sounded like for years. Then I remember they reissued that CD with all that stuff on here. I forgot what year that was. And man, this shit sounds weak. I don't know. His tape, my tape sounds better than that fucking CD reissue <laughs> they did. They did of that fucking thing. I thought it sounded like, I was like, this shit's weak. There's no bottom end. There's, there was nothing. So Roy, Roy always had the, the best dubs uh, out of anybody that I ever fucking traded shit with. That's great, man. That's yeah, what happens that. when, uh, a band puts out like a discography or something, and your fucking old tape from '91 sounds better than their. <laughs> yes, exactly. Remaster. <laughs> exactly. You know, That's the worst. Like, you have the red like levels on both sides of the deck. Like yes. The red... Oh, I had one of those. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, it's a Kenwood CT201, I think. Hmm. Shout out name. Kenwood. Shout out to yeah, Kenwood. Man. Send us a sponsorship. <laughs> They're fucking done, actually. As a <laughs> There's those used to be great. Uh, those were great uh, car stereos too, right? Kenwoods. Yeah. Back, back when. Oh yeah, that's After right. The <laughs> actual fa- uh, pullouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tangible yeah, face. Yeah, the pullout. <laughs> yeah. That shit in the store with these. Nobody steals it. Bumping with the Camaro with that thing. That was the only thing worth stealing in my shitty truck, you know. In the kicker box. <laughs> the kicker box. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Teak and Tascam are making new decks. Those are the, that's what I have actually. Yeah, a Teak yeah. and a Tascam. Yeah, yeah so I think Tascam I did, made them. I did drop, you know, I dropped a few digits on a Teak, uh, just to, you know, because it was like maybe like five digits. That's what I, I was like, have. I have to have at least one fucking real tape deck here yeah. that plays in the right fucking speed. Yep. Because you know, like if you run. If you if you're running a record label like you have to take I'm sure it is a, the same thing in a fucking band too. You have to take your fucking recording and you have to stick it on the shittiest fucking thing you can. Put it in your car, put it in any fucking grandmother's stereo, put it in the fucking studio. You know what I mean? Like you got to listen to it like everywhere, dude. Well, uh, cuz that's where most people listen. Well, like I was I would assume most people that's where most people listen to the music. So that's where you want to test it out your 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 mixes or whatever in a vehicle because that's where most people are gonna listen to your shit anyway. Yeah. Oh at least back then. I don't know nowadays it's a car you know, test. No, all my bands will fucking pile in a van and fucking turn that yeah. shit up loud as fuck. It's the car test. That's that's what you do. It's what we've always done. That's like yeah. that's that's you know where where you like figure out if that's the fucking like if that's the mix you're gonna use, if that's the master you're gonna yeah. use give it the car test. I, I, give like it, the I, I do the stuff. grandma test now too though I call it the grandma test I take mm-hmm. like the shittiest fucking stereo I have <laughs> and I figure if it sounds good out of there it's good yeah. 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 well you figured before like digital hit with audio and recording the highest quality was a digital audio tape 
So you in the studio, that would be yeah. your raster, is your, yeah. your dad tape. I still have dad tapes. Yeah, and so it was the best quality thing there was, you know what I mean? Yeah. I have one dat tape. One. That's one? It. Yeah. Well, I don't have any. I don't have I had autopsies demos on a dat tape. I think I sent it back to them. If not, I still have it. Yeah. Because that's the thing they sent me to press their stuff up with. And so right, we yeah. had Durkata, yeah. and but I sent them theirs back, actually. So I've got yeah, I've got, quality. Quality. That's, that's that's good quality. I got real to reels here actually of um, wow yeah like a fucking Crazy. disgrace from Finland when they Crazy. recorded a seven inch for me that I didn't put out, and then I got a fucking wow. what else? I think I want to say pain eater, but I could be wrong about that. Mm. I think I sent those back to them. Yeah, I got I have a gothic leads on that. Crazy what? badass. Wow. Which yeah. release? The split with God Stomper live, nineteen eighty nine. Oh yeah. shit, yeah, man! Did That's, you guys I'm... ever see that Agathocles eight track? Is that real? Yeah, I have it. Oh, of course you do. do. <laughs> That's real. That's crazy. Yeah, Can you hey, play? No, I never played it, but I have it. Okay. Hey Ralph, did we ever? Did we ever figure out, or did you ever figure out if you do you have every final seven inch by them? Yep. Wow. Right, here we go. There's a guy oh, right yeah. there. How many are there? Like sixty. It's like 300, man. 300. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's insane. But I don't, I don't have like every color, every variation. Yeah, right. you know? Oh, but you have at least one. Every I have one inch. of each, yeah. One of each, a gothically seven inch is a lot, dude. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. every See, I'm happy with like two. Nah, <laughs> but they're I, all I'm, awesome. I'm I mean, the they're all awesome. Man. Yeah. I, if I, have, happy I would say yeah. you're the world's biggest collector of them in a way. I, I, I never might heard be. anyone say I that. Might be. I think he I is. Him and Carla are pretty close. Hmm. He's got a shit on too. The biggest collectors besides me are uh, the dudes in Death Charge in Canada. Oh, okay. Uh, Chainsaw and. Uh, oh, you're and, always going to know who the biggest collector next to your favorite yeah, band suppose, is. Supposedly it's me, those guys, um, and uh, Noise Ape from um, CSMD. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Supposedly. Wow. Interesting. What 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 is considered like the rarest and hardest to get uh few <clears throat> gothically seven inches you think? I would probably say the split with warship. Mm -hmm. Because um Oh no that five, one. Oh yeah, that one. Split with they, worship from Belgium. Yeah. There was five hundred made, but there was a fire right after they were made and four hundred and twenty of them got destroyed. Mm. So and how did you get yours? From, from Dirk, the guitar player at the time. Oh, wow. Right. And yeah. that's Max, Damn, right? Dude, that's crazy. That's yeah, crazy. Max from Worship, yeah. Yeah. Wow. When did that come out? I don't really know that one. Maybe late nineties or early two thousands. Oh, okay. Damn. Yeah, so only there's only eighty of those. Well Max's label put that out, right? Yeah. What's your, yep. what's your favorite of Gothic Blue Seven Inch? Maybe the Agarchy seven inch. Yeah, that's good one. one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, uh, I remember guy. distributing I that. That one has a uh, Gorgonized Dorks. Yeah, da, 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 Destroy your living room type shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have, yeah, I have the green cover, and then I found that reissue recently that I, I didn't oh, know yeah, it, got, it, yeah. I didn't I got, know I got, it had I, been reissued. I, the reissue's got like a skull, but the the, the original with the planets is yeah. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> that's the one I have. Yeah, yeah I have I got, that one. mine's black and white. I don't have a green one. Mine's, mine's green, white. green color. It's interesting to hear about the worship thing. I don't know if I knew that. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, the yeah, like for sure now. Did know? they burn them themselves or? <laughs> I, I don't know the whole backstory, but I know that's how they were destroyed. Great. Interesting. The insurance yeah. money was they were gonna make more off the insurance than the record. Yeah, right. <laughs> It'd just yeah. be another record otherwise, you know? Yeah. That's but crazy. they they've done a bunch of those like lathe cut seven inches where there's only like twenty made and those are hard as fuck to get, but hmm. I don't count those as like regular releases. So if you talk like the rarest regular release, I think the warship one's the one. I gotcha. Interesting. That's fucking wild. And that's dude. funny because how, how do you I, store three hundred fucking seven inches all together? I'm assuming, right? Oh, yeah. uh, dude, 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 this is nothing, man. This, this whole fucking house is just <laughs> right. chaos, man. Well, Ralph, you know, we still, I still need to get you on, and we need to go through every fucking. You need to hey, Ralph, lay out every in an alphabetical order, yeah. just out of curiosity, or uh, like half of them. Okay, <laughs> he got halfway there. He's like, fuck. Yeah, this. yeah, I'm still <laughs> working on it. I'm still working on it. Yeah, it's brutal, yeah. man. Sucks, yeah, dude. we need, we need to do that. We need to do that. That shit, Ralph. That could yeah, be a long right, episode. 2024, dude. We'll do it. 
Let's do it. All it's right. a long you, episode, man. Three hundred. That'd be cool. I'd like, I'd like to see that. I'd no, like, yeah. So would I. So would I. That's why I told him. I've asked. I've been asking him for a fucking a long time now. So let's yeah, do it, dude. Yeah. He's what like, dude, fuck? I can't even alphabetize them. <laughs> no, it's pretty, exactly. That's the problem. I got to organize them all first. It's, yeah, it's brutal. I mean, they're all in the A's. <laughs> you got any um test presses or yeah 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 quite a few yep and you got to release stuff with them too oh yeah yeah so that's and really he cool. booked did you book their shows too or i took them on tour yeah yeah yep. eight I days that. it was awesome yeah well like in the uh, first the u.s guy to do it years? yeah yep so you did the 2016 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yep. yeah i yeah. went to the worcester show yeah, yeah, that was awesome. That was the last show. Last time. Oh, yeah, I was at that. Yep. They would jam yeah, a TV combo amp like you, Francisco. Hell yeah. That's why I had one of those. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got them nice and sober. You fuck with. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ralph, 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 Ralph has shared some fucking wild stories about about those guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're Belgian. They like to drink. Yeah. Oh, they like to drink. That's crazy, man. That show was sick. Dude, I couldn't hang, man. I could. I don't know how they were functioning. It was amazing. <laughs> it, it was amazing. Well, well share one. You might share. Last stop. You might share one that for Roy, Roy doesn't care. Share oh, an ad story. Fuck, I gotta think. Think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was um, I we 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 did a show in Buffalo mm-hmm. that Brian Patterson booked. Yeah, rest and, in peace. Uh, Brian was the sweetest dude. And and he he was just as big a fan as, as me. And um so when they were he was asking, Hey, what do you need to play? I just said, Okay, here's what here's the money we need, and if possible, some beer and some food. That was it. So Brian shows up at the show with fucking spaghetti, pasta sauce, salad, all this food, money and beer. So we had so much fucking spaghetti. It was ridiculous. It was like, I'm like, we're not gonna waste this food. Let's take it with us. Uh-huh. So we go to the next show, Cleveland. We're eating spaghetti. We still have like ten pounds of fucking spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> so day three or four, we're in Pittsburgh, and we get back to the van, and we're like, what the fuck is that smell? Holy, and we're like, we're opening the hood. We thought a fucking skunk died underneath the hood. We're lo- and so we couldn't find it. We're like, this smell is, it, it smelled like a corpse was in the van. It was horrible. Oh. And we just went to the next town. I think we went from Pittsburgh to Baltimore, or Philly. We went from Pittsburgh to Philly with the windows down the whole ride, no AC. Because the smell was so fucking bad. We couldn't, and we, so finally we get to Philly and, I don't know who found it. They're like, oh shit, it's the spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, we almost vomited. It was so bad. It was like uh, rotten fucking, and it was a heat wave, man. So we forgot about the spaghetti <laughs> in the fucking van for days. Uh, and we could not get the smell out for days. Uh, uh, it yeah, it was, br- it was brutal. So, I mean, but I mean. Sick. They were the the champions of drinking, man. I think the only people that can drink more than them were the uh, Australians. No, no, you know they. <laughs> it was a fucking beating on our livers, man. That that tour was brutal. <laughs> it was fucking brutal, man. Like, You're like, Damn, I never cleaned up so many fucking beer bottles in my. It was, was fucking crazy, crazy, man. What is this the recycling center? We 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 could have we could have fuck we could have funded the whole tour on like recyclables like we could right. have, <laughs> you know it was well i mean american beer to them is probably fucking water oh, it's water yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. and of course everyone's giving pbr garbage fucking beer you know so it's just like water you know you know what's yeah. wild that they were around for 25 years before they came to play here yeah, yeah. did they ever yeah. mention why or dude i was beg i've been begging them since the 90s Okay. Like, dude, please, come on, let's do it. Let's bro, do it. Let's do it. Bro, let's do it. please, bro. Yeah, bro, please, bro. Well, there please. was one festival. There was yeah. one festival that advertised that they were going to play it, and this was a couple years before what you did. It was that was Skull Fest in uh, okay. Pittsburgh. Yeah, and they couldn't get in. Okay, that's across the border. Well, I mean, Ag's been around since '87. The first well, time I'm in saying, New York. like, 
for well, twenty. Is that, so am I, is that am I wrong? Thirty five years sitting. Yeah. Holy fuck, yeah. dude. Every time I asked him, Jan was just like, "No, fuck that. No, not <laughs> interested. No thanks." They didn't want the spaghetti, and then, uh, man. They played it. Yeah. <laughs> they played in Montreal, in Canada, and I, I was like, "All right, this is going to be my only chance." You know, I got to go up there and see him. So I drove up, met him in person, and they couldn't they couldn't tell me no to my face. So that's. How I got it. <laughs> oh. so, gotcha. Well, they were uh, so back in like '97. There was plans of a ag U.S. tour uh, way back. I you know, and they were supposed to come and come play in Texas, and I think uh, one of my bands was supposed to play some of the shows with them, but obviously that. That fucking fell through, but that was the earliest I ever heard of Ag ever trying to come into the U.S. was, you you know, ninety seven. You know, yeah, Jan, Jan had a hard time getting in. They detained him at the airport for hours. Really? Yeah. Do you think it's due to like his political beliefs or what? What was the? I think it had. I from what I hear, so like you're gonna it, drink the whole country. Dry. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna run you dry. From from what I hear, if you had Russia on your passport. That's an automatic get in the back room. Mm, you know? okay. Oh, yeah. Interesting. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. That's I've heard that I heard. before. Wow. Yeah. But uh, is that true? I don't know. But they grilled him for like two hours. No he shit. Did. Interesting. And he stuck to his guns. He's like, hey, I'm just take. I'm here to take pictures. <laughs> I'm a fucking. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Because you say you're in a band. They're like, all oh, right. Sorry, you're, you're going that's home. Then. Yeah. I mean, that guy there, dude. I mean. That guy there is is one of those guys that has stuck to his fucking guns from day fucking yeah. one. He's the real he's, deal, man. He's you know how many times deal. can you imagine? I, I think I've asked him how many times Ag has been asked to play like these big kind of corporate style festivals, and he turns everything down. He's like, no, I'm not doing yep. that. That's not Amazing. what we're about. Yep. And that's why they never play MBF or right. He'd rather play fucking back go in hit the road and rough it with us than do that, you know? Yeah, he'd rather so, go play, like, in, in some fucking South America. And that's why they play South America a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because he'd rather just go play in fucking Peru yeah, and Chile and, yeah, yeah. you know, because that's, that's what they're about. And that's totally respectable. Whether you agree with what the guy says or not, that fucking guy is a real deal Fuck what you think he's gonna do, whatever yep. he's gonna do. He's and like, fuck America, dude. Fuck that's com- that's commendable. That's commendable. Yeah, no true. matter who you are. Yeah, it is true. Maybe they have seven now. So it says fuck he's, America. He's a sweetheart on top of all that, man. He's a sweet dude. Real, real. And he dude, knows. Man. He knows. Like, where, was it you and I, Ralph, that were talking about? He knows like every band ever. It seems like. He's a <laughs> fucking encyclopedia, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't stump him. You cannot stop it. <laughs> I mean, it was nuts, dude. Like, we'd be driving for hours, man. We had some long drives, and he's just ranking off shit for like six hours straight. <laughs> like, Holy shit. I mean, they've done splits and, and, with every band, so that... Yeah, that... it's fucking nuts, man. And and what the coolest thing I thought was, like, the way, like, bands hit him up to do splits... He chases like old bands that he grew up listening to to do splits. Yeah. So every now and then, you'll they'll do a split with a band from like the seventies that you never fucking heard of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, who the fuck is this band? And then you read about, it, it's like, oh, yo, this shit's from seventy nine, dude. This is my own <laughs> bullshit. Holy it's shit. just like, yo, they he hunted them down and got them to do a fucking split. And wow. that's probably why he fucking always He's does splits with everybody because he does crazy, the same thing. Man. It's He's fucking the king, nuts. man. For the king of the splits, king of the splits, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. I mean, dude, in '97 when I did a split with them, they they had already been around ten years. Ten years. Imagine now how many splits they fucking done. They did a shitload by '97. Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about king? the hypocrisy about... tape? Yeah, that was '97, I mean, and we had done. They had done. I don't know how many splits already. That was. I don't know that if I could name... a long time to find, man. Yeah, I don't know if I could name Weird. a death metal or a grindcore band that has as many like records as they do. No, no. not oh, any. Ralph no has three hundred seven inches. Yeah, it's like no way. Not even none. None slaughter. Seven even, inches. None slaughter's got a lot of shit, but not even close. I think they're none slaughter's probably second place, but 
Yeah. They'll still beat. No way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Beat. You can go back and look at like every classic demo from like the 80s and 90s from all over the world, from fucking US, Sweden, Finland, whatever. Like if you look at their early demos and you read the fucking thanks list, like he's always in every one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. always like, in it. He lives like in balance all over the world. Yeah. It, it yeah. was cool on, on the tour. You'd be surprised how many old death metal heads were coming out to the shows, man. Oh, yeah. Well, that's sure. Yeah. 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 Well, early on, on, dude. Early on, that's what... Yeah. That they were around yeah. a bunch of death metal people. Yeah, yeah. Those, lines, those lines blurred a lot more back then. Well, was it? A lot they, more. Were, they were on Death Records, weren't they? Death Metal Label yeah. for a minute. Yep. They did the drug yeah. split with, on Death. That, that's right. where I found them. And, yep. then the, and then the Seraphic 7-inch, of course. That's, that's the big yep. hit to me, but... That that was uh, I actually bought that ten inch first before I got the seven inch, I believe. Well, I mean, one of his favorite all time favorite bands is Hellhammer. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. You know, so prolific a- motherfuckers. Yep. Yeah, we were supposed line, to know? bring them back, but then COVID oh, happened. Oh. So, yeah. They, yeah, they, they had they, he had, had one condition: them. play with the nihilistics. That was it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh like, uh, yeah, we, we could do that. that could is that band nihilistic in New York still doing shit? Yeah, that's cool. nuts, dude. Rob that is nuts. In Sixty, man. Wow. He's like, yeah. listen, it's. Hey, did it's, Psycho and like, Ad get to play together? Yeah. That that had to be. Oh, you were probably not at the show, right? Yeah. Not on yeah, that they tour. Opened, they opened in up. Canada. Yeah. Oh, in Canada. Yeah. Charlie's other band played with them in uh, Worcester. What was that? That's band? what it was. Is yeah, uh, it wasn't Psycho. Was his other no. Band. Yeah. I can't. I'm having a brain. Fo- Goat Felch is that that the oh, Goat Felch, yeah. calculator. I mean, Charlie's like 61, 62, yeah. 63 also. Charlie's the OG man. Fucking Fudgeworthy for yeah. life. Yeah. Yo, where's my motherfucking chat at, brother? Yeah, chat died. <laughs> the chat is it? death. It's, but no yeah, mongers in the chat. There's no mongers and fifty in Barna. people watching this now. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Hope you guys are enjoying this story about Agathocles. I hope I'm saying yeah. that right, too. Agathocles? Oh, yeah. No, they're well, uh, they're going to be correcting people here, on man. tour like, it's not said like that, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I would I would imagine that they don't give a fuck. They're too busy drinking. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> they're hard. I mean, uh, there, there was there, no sound checks. There was none of that shit. Man. Yeah, the <laughs> early, the early stuff like that Seraphic Decay seven inch and like the splits. Yeah, yeah. and that live Last. tape from '89 at Alast. Uh, yeah, the that, one that, that they milked the shit out of. <laughs> that's what I have on that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that is incredible, man. That was that's a, br- it's a that's a brutal recording, and that was brutal such a life. next level kind of napalm death at the time, right? At, at yeah. that very time, like when I was yeah. listening to that, I was like, "Well, oh, that this, show they played with napalm." The, yeah, that I know, show but is I was napalm like, death. Sob a guy. Yeah, that's funny thing was though. Bands that that seven inch in the key of E standard I've ever heard. Like which the one? Intro, which one? Fucking on the seraphic like, agathocles. Oh, seven inch. Uh, if this For is cool. Song, yeah, dude. Like it's like two degrees. Massively heavy tune in E. I mean, at that time, I saw them as being the next Napalm, basically. At that t- very time, when the first time I heard them, I was like, "Oh, this is the next fucking Napalm scum era type shit." Yep. But they did switch it up after that a little bit and went a little more a little fast and. Well, they got a little death metalish too there for a for, for, for little yeah, short. There was an album Split or two, OP. but you know, I was heard a lot of like discharge, like you said, fucking Celtic yeah. Frost, Hellhammer, shit like that. You know, was he yeah. playing bass on the tour that that you did with him, Ralph, or was yeah. he just singing? Yeah. Or yeah, no, he played okay. bass too. Yeah. All right, John Lincoln. I remember helping Steve put those AGX seven inches packages together. That rules. Old school yeah, man. One. Fucking Seraphic Decay. They, they, they did two. They did two seven inches. They, no, yeah, three, three. They yeah. did the split with Future Ophel. Seraphic Decay did. Why? Why does Seraphic Decay call themselves a different name? It says Skin Drill yeah, on there. Skin yeah, Skin Drill. Right? That's Seraphic. That's Seraphic Decay. I don't know. John no, could probably answer what that. What was the reason with that? Anyone I don't know. know. John would probably know. Uh, John, why was it Skin Drill Records on that? Uh, and did anything else come out under that name, Skin Drill? Yeah. Hmm. And then they did the "This Is Cruel," what's vivisection? Yeah. And then they and then they the 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 demo 
uh, on seven inch. The uh, uh, Kanaba, whatever. The Kanaba Gnosticism. Yeah. yeah, I can't pronounce it. Yeah, yeah, that was they pressed that on, and that was just fucking just raging from the beginning. Well, yep. that was one of the records that I saw back in the day that was hand numbered. So I was like, fuck, I should hand number my records. Yeah, totally. I, that's why I did it on, on from little smaller yeah, the, labels. The, the red marker out of a thousand, I think. You right? know, yeah. or I think it was like 444, some weird Is it that number. low? I thought it was 1,000. Maybe I'm I, I have no fucking clue. But you know what I mean? At the time, I was like, yo, man, I have to hand number my records. <laughs> that's the one different thing on the cover of a whole cover. You know, it was like a printout. And it's like, damn, this thing, like, I have to make sure that people know, like, this shit is limited. You got copy number seven, buddy. <laughs> Ooh. And why is copy number seven more valuable to people than copy always. copy one and copy seven is always, it? Man. Why? <laughs> Damn, it's the I same out, record i gave out some copy sevens and some copy 13s and some cop I, I caved i caved in and kept the copy ones on some of my records yeah i did too but it yeah i was like oh copy one i should probably keep this one copy Anything. one was the first copy i dubbed you know Anything I hand numbered, I always remember selling them out of order on purpose. <laughs> I just get a random one out of the box. Yeah. yeah that's the way to go. Like, hey, can I get number three? Nope. You're going to nope. get whatever I'll fucking yeah. send you. You got 17, <laughs> fucker. <laughs> Yo, Aaron, thanks for coming on earlier, bro, and talking about uh, Goat Throne. Yeah, Aaron's Goat Throne. Hell, Goat Throne. 15 hour fucking marathon. Uh, it's all good, dude. Old school, oh, old school. harmonic days. <laughs> I mean, death metal podcast. Oh, yeah. your ETD tapes, Aaron. Yeah, those were those. I mean, yeah, I, he's got to do a second batch of those. I told him. I told him he could, but he just hasn't done it yet. Come on, I got one. don't don't boutique out on us, man. Make another batch. Who got one? I do. Oh yeah, That's yeah. Well, of course you do. Too. You're in Houston. You got every, this guy. Oh happy. yeah, I wanted to shout out one thing too before we go. Patchmaster. Yeah, Even though they're not a record label, or they are, they put out a ruined fucking. Yeah. They put, put out, out a. He put out a record label savior record, yeah. Yeah, so shout out to Patchmaster. You fucking rule, dude. Yep. Oh, hell yeah. I got to piss, man. <laughs> All right, we'll, 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 we'll keep it going. Yeah, there, there it is. is. There's a tape. Yeah. I think I got one lying around, too. Yeah. This is good, man. He's key. He, he, he he saying about. Uh, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't even have it. He's saying about. Uh, playing that two hundred dollar cassette. This is my two hundred dollar cassette. <laughs> scared to play, even though the double is, tape deck I got one. is a ten dollar tape deck that I got from the thrift store, and the motherfucker it works perfect. Oh, wait, Let's yeah, I'm lying. Over, I have man. one. I it's have one. It's gonna be something you care about, man. To be careful. I know. Yeah, yeah I got one. The Still fucking. Clean. I haven't used the sticker yet. Don't use the sticker. Dude, those stickers look sick, don't right? Use, don't they look cool? I mean, I don't want to like. I'm just keeping it in the tape, man. I'm not gonna use. I'm not gonna put it on it. Yeah, it's on CD. Get it on CD. Somebody's yeah. got it on CD. I wait for it to come out on record, man. It'll be yeah, out on record, but like okay, late, too. late next year. Okay. Or late 2024, it'll be out on on vinyl. Yeah, Monica. That's one of the best logos I've ever seen, man. On a clear sure. purse. It's sick. Yeah, it's cool yeah. shit. Feel the logo. Dude, like Evil it. Dave. Uh, yeah, he, he did that on his own. He just came up with that. I forgot what, what, what we told him, and he's like, "Hey, what do you think of this?" I was like, "Well, it fucking rules." Yeah, that yep. that that that's literally in the top five logos of all time, man. That, oh, that's yeah, really cool. yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah, but, yeah, for sure. yeah. but it is it, it is an eye popper I mean, or an eye catcher because people are like, "Dude, what is that? What is that?" Yeah, like, big what? big Impetigo vibes, man. Yeah. It's it's, it's totally. it was like Impetigo. And yeah. the accused, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's cool is usually they like people put that kind of effort into their cover art. So instead, right. you guys were like, "Fuck it, we're gonna put cover art in a logo and just slap it on the tape." As well, and that logo. was the whole idea. We actually had that conversation. Aaron's like, "Hey, you want to? Really? So why don't we just put the the logo? The logo looks like, you know, its own its own yeah. cover art. So that's why we did it that way." Now, but, I gotta ask Aaron where he where he made those, man, because uh, that that's incredible. Oh, those the the way they the the print. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, I'm sure he'll tell us. I'll hit him up. Uh, I, I think there's like one or two plants doing that. Like that. And ETD was in Noxious Ruins, by the way. Yeah, so. yeah. Actually, it was in Volume Seven, and like you, uh, you look at the, like the inside with like the collage of the logos, and it's all this like 
you know, sort of unreadable shit, and then all of a sudden you've got the fucking the ETD right there. Yeah, it stands like, out. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. yeah, yeah. That's killer, bro. Yeah, and that's about you know. I know they've uh, uh, Brian came on here told talked all about it, but that that's what's cool about Noxious Ruin is they put uh, tape with all these you know different bands that. I mean, I guarantee I hadn't heard a lot of those bands on that tape before I got the tape, you know, so. Uh, we don't like to fucking write reviews. Like, nobody wants to, like, review a bunch of shit. And, like, I don't want to waste my time, like, writing about something that I didn't like in the fucking first place. So, like, exactly. the premise behind doing the compilation is, like, in lieu of doing reviews, it's like, let's just pick fucking 16, like, new bands that we really like and, like, just kind of, yeah. like, put them out there and showcase them, like. Some people do, you know, exclusive tracks, but most of it's just like shit from like their most recent demo, or maybe something from like an yeah. upcoming demo, or like something from a split that didn't get, you know, a, a ton of exposure, or something from another comp. You know, just we don't really put a like, you know, a, a limit or guidelines on it. It's like whatever you want to choose, to like represent your band, like go for it. Like we like you, so you know, if you want to mm-hmm. fucking you know contribute and be a part of this like you get a half page in the magazine and then you get a track on this compilation and oh, yeah. you know nobody's ever really like no you know the only time we run into that is if it's like well yeah but we're not really like gonna be active anymore so they'll sort of like forego it to like somebody else that can yeah. use the exposure which is always appreciated yeah. and, mm. and totally for sure yeah. it's cool that yeah. your mag has a fucking soundtrack man yeah 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 that's I wish I had that for every fucking fanzine back in the day. How sick would that have been? Oh, fuck. (laughs) Would have saved me a few IRCs. Well, you know who who did that? Uh, Mutilator from from Mexico. Didn't they have their compilation tapes? I think Hmm. they did. I think they did a couple volumes of compilation. Bringer Bringer of Gore was a zine that would include a tape. Oh, okay. And then they started putting out vinyl. But their their first yeah. their beginnings was a zine that would come with a tape. Oh, cool! Very simple, also, not, not uh, high quality. Back in the day, um, <laughs> back in the day, Rick from Sloth, and they did a thing called uh, uh, Extreme 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 Scene. Uh, yeah, Extreme Scene. Yep, I they remember. would put out whole booklets, and they would put out a comp tape of all the bands on the label, like Sloth and Morg Fetus, Cybergasm. So mm-hmm. it would take a lot of time to put together like a really good fucking thing, man. And yeah. you know, it was it was like it was all photocopied and everything and then but like the the thing is like the tape that came with it was like holy fuck, dude. There's like sexual urge motivation is on yeah. here or fucking the beat wear bag or something. Do labels do sampler CDs anymore? Does anybody I do that? I just got one, man. I got yeah, one. I got one too. Uh, I guess uh, it just did one or is doing yeah, one right yeah, now yeah. currently. Oh, and the other, the other yeah. day, actually, around the summer. Oh, 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 okay. I have wow. one that I'm doing next year. So. Oh, okay. That's, that's cool. Awesome. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's why I'm at. Oh, yeah. shit. Look at that. That's great. That's pretty, that's pretty good quality there for a fucking. Yeah, that's cute. Something you're just going to give away. Leprophiliac, baby. Stenched. Yeah. Put your good shit on here. Dude, Apparition. Dude, Brett, 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 Brett. That shit's fucking killer. So, Dylan, yeah, Dylan this just came out. Work, I got man. this. This is yeah, my dude. fucking beans fucking prize thing. Oh, is that what you want on, on Jawaba? Yes, it is. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I won that, <laughs> and I won this CD from... Um, People oh, really do win on my show. What the fuck is the name, man? I can't read it, dude. Molten Rot? Melting rot? Melting liquid rot? Huh? Sorry, guys. Melting oh, rot. I'm oh, high. I can't see that. Sorry, I'm high. There you go. Oh, man, what's all the time? Yeah, that, that, does, that doesn't help. Sorry. <laughs> it's not melting <laughs> rot. <laughs> no, it's not melting it, rot. It's on head split, though. It's, uh... You really do win. Liquid on... rot. Liquid, liquid rot. rot. There you go. Yeah, no, liquid he rot. That, he won that on my, on my show, so you really do win on my show. Yeah. I was going to get the wheel out tonight, but I couldn't figure out how to fucking incorporate it like with what we were doing, you know? Yeah. Because I was like, damn, what am I going to do? Put every fucking label on there and be like, all right, (laughs) we're going to see who the fucking winner is. No, this this definitely isn't new, but it's the last thing that Jim Konya ever gave me. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah. He used to have those in his trunk. (laughs) Yeah. Jim Konya gave this to me at a a fest uh, we played in Connecticut. Sick. Like, oh man, check this out! Like fucking such a fucking cool. Were you thing. in Head Rod uh, at that time? Yeah. yeah, that's when we got 
together with the second singer it was like original and did original songs like cool. from the demos and stuff and it was really good it sounded just like it did then and but i thought it was the best representation of it you know? hey derek what demo was that uh what you yeah, that i was just talking about um yeah the one you so just said if I you know. get the um extremely rotten just put out last halloween uh head right lp that comes with both of our wow. demos and the seven inch so the second demo um is i've got a, a different singer than the first one but he was the strongest singer in my opinion and uh he came back and we all came back and did that era of the band for about I don't know, yeah. a year and a half in 2013 we did like a but we did a bunch of shows we played with terrorizer when lee harrison and the other uh those two dudes were playing with the, the, the commando they played oh, yeah. you know so there's a couple with things like that. agonizing sufferance demo or whatever yes yes we did all yeah. that stuff and, i okay. mean we did some of the first demo stuff too but it was mainly focused on that tape and right. we, yeah, I got did this. you did you say the cd yeah it's not you don't like the CD version of the head rot? Well, no, I, I so like the, the CD version's not as well. Uh, the the it's not the sound quality is as good. Okay. Um, because it's just it was just dubbed from like old cassettes and released. And that or was it, it was Yeah, CD. that's the one I got. The yeah, Pathos one. Yeah, Pathos one. Yeah, 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 I guess the one I got. one. The I would show it on the cool screen. But... I I I have that too, Chris. That's that. Yeah, the, same and the packaging's yeah. great, and and the CD's listenable. It's listenable. It's just com if you compare yeah. it to the vinyl, you listen. Go to, to that the Grub thing. Show. It's tonight. It's it's over now. It's over yeah, now. It's but over. I bet I that's a rule. Put the name in people's head. Yeah. So there's it's only a lot of months later that club's closing. I heard that the dusk is um, going to close. Is it because all those break-ins and that shit? Nah, it's something to do with the owner of the building. It's just like a fucking, it's like a family feud. And the, oh. the, the old lady, the mother died. So now they're just like, fucking, mm. you know, all that shit. Oh, uh, okay. I was wondering. That war and one like of, uh, it. one of my favorite head rod things, I think it was a live thing that Roy played one time. I think it was live head rod. That shit sounded fucking great. I got dude. the whole tape of that. I just ripped the one song. Well, there's that, a, yeah. this. There's a tape that circulated pretty heavily. It was live at WRIU, mm. um, the Metal Cage. Uh, we did a yeah. live board show on the radio. Like there was a few bands. Like Vital did it. I don't think Flem ever did one, but Vital Remains did one. We did one. Ritual Vital Sacrifice did one. Was that a uh, Jim Collins? Right, Jim Collins yeah, was that yeah. the guy? Yep, yep. It was Jim Collins who Skip did it. Skip mentioned oh. offhand to me that there's a whole other head rot release, like with it, one of the singers on it, and it's in some. It was in some like studio in Connecticut or something that they recorded some. Oh no! No, so, no, it never got released. It was so bad. Like okay. it was the first time we recorded the first demo. The I Go Up Your Guts demo. Okay. The first. There was another version of that, but it was so bad. Like we just ditched it. It was like, dude, this dude had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> Now it's so bad. Let's there, hear might it. A, there might be oh, a legendary yeah. album right now, bro. I would totally fucking let you hear it. Dude. <laughs> I, I want to hear that. I want to hear that radio recording. To, like, the yeah, the like, radio. Should, should I want to hear that shit, man. Because, dude, some of my favorite recordings ever are the worst the, ones. These bands play yeah. the radio stations here. Fucking peel sessions. Come on. Yeah. yeah for sure. No, I mean, I don't. I don't remember how bad it was. Like, I wish I could tell you. The oh, thing that I played, yeah. Francisco, the thing that I played is from a soundboard set that I got with It sounds fucking amazing. Yeah, Incantation, oh, Incantation Head show? Rot. Yeah, that was a good Yeah, it was that Club good. Baby Head. I was like, yeah. dude, that fucking Head Rot live song sounded Well, they were, the, the board, the, the guys that did, did everything, they would give you the option, hey, do you want us to record, record your it. set? You know, like they would ask everybody oh, i did the merch were... next to it so i had yeah. four i had obviously had two cassettes in my pocket and they were they were probably yeah. like a better quality maybe so yeah. like i used to roll with those cassettes i mean it sounds like a, there should be a head a head rot live fuck release coming out i mean but it sounds like in that radio show yeah that'd be great that'd be, yeah i mean it's a good definitely good material like sounds killer like it's got raw old you know Sounds I'd amazing. love to hear that, man. I would love yeah, me to too. Hear that. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty hard. 
Well, yeah, there's, 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 there's another WRIU tape, and it got heavily circulated. Like, like you, when uh, you know there was a guy out, uh, Sam Osborne, he's like, oh, yeah, this tape has been getting traded around the West Coast for like the past 10 years. I'm like, what? You know, he, you know as he mentioned to me, I had no idea, you know. So, Which Sam? A Which dude Sam from Gene or whatever? Or? Yeah, Sam exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he played at Honor Gang when they played here. Uh, oh, like, okay. He's in Holden like, now, too. Yeah, it was like 2016 or something. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. Because there was two... There was two Sam Osborns in that band for a while. Oh shit! They were no, both in demon. They were both the in demoncy as well. Oh, and Funeral. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember wow. that. Uh, that's weird. There's the yeah, good Sam, Sam Osborne, Osborne and the bad with one. with an E and Sam Osborne with no E and Osborne hmm. with an E. The one you're talking about, his that, uh, uncle is is Buzz Osborne. That that oh, band. Wow. I I just put a record yeah. out by that band, Hibernoid. And, oh, okay. Uh, in yeah, that band, there's two that there's two guys named Andy Bennett. Fucking <laughs> 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 nuts, man. Is that like a trend now? What the fuck? Yeah. It's fucking weird, right? That is weird. Is that from the old seven inch band Hibernoid? Yeah, yeah. Yep. What? They uh the LP the full length never came out on vinyl, so we, we did it. Shit, oh, shit. How's that? Know, yeah, I want to check that out. Shit, you didn't know Michael Jackson sang in Satan, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson is Satan. No <laughs> shit. Roy, I'm sending you a package, man. So I'll, I'll send one to you. All right, cool. That'd be sick. Box. Hey, you don't have that. You don't have that head rock tune handy. I wouldn't mind hearing it right um, now. Um, maybe. Yeah, yeah, let's check it out. That live one. Yeah, don't it. get banned. Yeah, I don't have that. Oh, oh, I know. Yeah. That's the only thing that sucks about it. I was fucking. Oh, shot. it's a live fucking soundboard that's never been released. It's true. Yeah, it's uh, well, crazy. boys, let's go play Danzig. No problem. I'm gonna cut out of here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, James. Yeah, appreciate I gotta, you, bro. I got to go catch a show right now. One of the bands oh. on my label's about to play. So, oh I'm shit, catch yeah. So, all right, my brother. Take Thank it you easy, for guys. In, my man. Happy New Year. Uh, Say what's up. Get to know some more about Haunted Hotel and and uh, the Noxious and everyone else. Oh so, yeah, man. Peace, guys. Right. Cheers, man. Take well, it easy, my brother. Bro. Happy New Year. Thank you for coming on. Let's see if I can find the fucking head rot. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Fucking live head rot, dude. He's like, yeah. Don't hype it up if I can't fucking find it. You know, <laughs> yeah. it don't go nowhere. Got to will it into existence. It's probably in the H section, basically. Let me he's see. Because he's got his shit alphabetized. Yeah. I mean, the, the <laughs> MP4s are alphabetized by name, you know? So he got halfway there and he said, fuck it. Well, I'm near Hell House, so. Well. Might have passed it. You got that bootleg seven inch, Roy? That uh, Hell House? Uh, yeah, I got that. Yep. I think I sold that, actually. Some of the stuff I sold, like, I sold some of my shit. Sometimes you got it, man. Yeah, I mean, I have no regrets because I sold some of my shit, basically. No like, regrets? No, no regrets. Oh, regrets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know where he's that selling, is. From. He's selling shit in Houston on January 28th. Anybody that's in Houston, uh, we got that heavy metal market coming up. It's going to be badass. Kurt yeah. Brett's going to be there like as the special guest or whatever. I saw your so, video there uh, from last time when you went vendor to vendor. Yeah, badass, dude. Chris was there. Yeah, they oh, need yeah. to start doing that shit everywhere. It's like I Texas, know, California. That's it. I wish. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to try it. And that place is fucking awesome, dude. Derek, uh, if they did that in Rhode yeah, Island, I'd drive up, man. man. They, they yeah. did that for free, right? I, I think they for should, too, you know. Well, Worcester, it's at least, free. you know. They, like, I would Ralph drive to Worcester Steiner. for that. It's three hours. It ain't shit, yep. man. I can do that. You're Ralph no, Steiner. That, that, that Moon Tower place in, 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 in Houston is badass. Oh, Lord, bad. Yeah, and you get to eat oh, good. I'm Dude, about. that food. That fucking food there, huh, Chris? Fuck yeah, it's good, what? man. Wild game hot dogs. Uh... Badass hamburgers. Sick. Just watch out for the rocks. And uh, they got a little dispensary, like a store over from that place. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Forty. What that guy say in the video? Forty-seven different beers on tap or whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's this right guy on, that owns a practice room that we all play at now. It's like one of the last ones that you you know like in this state. Yeah. You go to a fucking brewery next door to a dispensary, and it's a fucking drive-through. 
Oh, ah. like, he's like, he's got a big fucking. You drive down the highway, like going to the main highway to get through Rhode Island, going to Mass. You just see this big building with a fucking pot leaf, and it says "drive through" like Burger King on it, dude. Fucking. Well, it's still, it's still <laughs> we practice. Like I remember, so I was driving, I was driving through Ohio, and I saw a drive-through liquor store. I was like, that is insane. Yeah, we have that. That's common here. Yeah, that, that just that is not common here, dude. That it's is very common, common here. That ain't They're common all over Houston York at all. Hell no, that's, that's all over Houston, through, right, Chris? Michoelanas, man, drive through Michoelanas. Yeah, we got drive through everything, dude. We got drive through weed up here now, bro. That's why I like going through with Flem, bro. We would stop at every fucking liquor store. <laughs> yeah, there's drive drive through everything, dude, in in, in Texas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was the highlight of the truck. trip, fucking getting alcohol at fucking gas stations. What? That's not you. You guys can't get alcohol in gas stations you over there. Back in 1991. No, no, I still can't. Uh, it's all just. I mean, this... yeah. all right. Yeah, I got beer. the track. I got the track. Not it. All right. I found the track. Do it. All right. Cool. Here we go. Heavy, shit. right? Dirty. You ever yeah, hear that? Was, like, I, I butcher. I was playing through a guitar amp with a bass well, pad. Have you ever heard it. that before on here, Derek? Because I played it once before. I think so. I think I might have. I don't. Yeah, I've heard a couple different things. I don't Sounds know. heavy, man. Yeah. I, I, I dig the shit out of that fucking recording. That That's sound. crazy. That logo. I drew that in like eighth grade. <laughs> in my notebook, dude. I was like a big pen. You can see the blue big pen. I just sat there and just. You know, yeah, that was like, like um, oh, that? it was yeah. a pretty impromptu video because like I don't really know how to use Adobe Premiere too well. Yeah. So it was just like that's you know there's no fucking real cover to it you know. No, yeah. that's great, dude. That's sick. I can't believe that that's... logo is still getting released. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. It's time, man. And I'm well, it's just because it's something you do in junior high school. You wouldn't think with me. Yeah. Still. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> you know. Cool, man. It's like. For sure. Yeah, I used to make up logos of bands that I was going to start that I never that yeah. never happened or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. That sounds like some anal cunt shit. Crazy shit, man. When I first that met Seth, though. that's what he would yeah. constantly talk about. Like, bands that weren't even real fucking bands, you know? He'd yeah. be like, yeah, you know, we're going to be like fucking satanic roller skaters or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he would just like make some weird fucking name up, and I was like, are you fucking joking? He's like, I don't know. But apparently I mean, that's what that I used to do. Like if, I, if I'm gonna, yeah, yeah if I'm gonna start a band, if I'm gonna start a band. I was like, I gotta have a logo. And yeah. True. The last that's... time I, the last time I saw Seth and talked to him, I don't remember what I was wearing, but he goes, oh, "That's a cool band logo," but not as cool as my band logo. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he fucking he rolled up his his pant leg and he had, he had an angry hate <laughs> tattoo on his fucking thigh. It was a shamrock with a swastika in it. Angry oh, hate. Fuck. 
I was like, whoa, all right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sadly enough for me, the last time I saw him, he was like fucking, he had just come out of his coma. Wow. And then, like, they played in Albany. Like, they played, they continued to play a fucking show, like, two months after, was after he, he was, like, out of the, whatever, like, the hospital or whatever. And then fucking, um, I remember he was all fucked up, and I was like, oh, this is not what I expected, dude. I thought he would be, like, just trying to, you know, I, I was surprised you were playing, first of all. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to show up. They, they're probably not going to be there, you know? But I show up, and then he's like, my friend Roy Fox, he's like, record an album for us for $5,000. I'm like, I'll do it. <laughs> and then, uh, what's his face? Uh, John was the guitar player or something? Some guy oh, wow. named John. He oh, took shit. me aside. He's like, yo, man, do you even know this guy, dude? <laughs> Because I don't um, really, I knew, I knew Tim and you know what I mean, and Seth and Fred. So I didn't really know like the second hand, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I knew the, Josh. the other guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Josh. No, he's Josh. He's no, it wasn't Josh. It was the John? other guy. Yeah, yeah it was John. John. Yeah, he's yeah. like, yo, do you even know this guy? <laughs> oh, and John met, like At the same show, I met Seth's uh, mom and his aunt because they were there too. <laughs> Live by Crazy. Albany. Yeah, yeah. So like, it was cool, man. It was, it was a pretty. But no, I helped him carry him to the stage, actually. <laughs> it's like he couldn't fucking walk, what? dude. And then well, he yeah. just put a chair on the stage and he played. And then and then yeah. when the show was over, I helped carry him off the stage. I mean, I, there's videos of that, but I can't watch that shit, dude. No. I saw I saw I saw them live when he was on with the camera. Uh, I can't I just can't watch that shit. It's like, yeah, fuck that. I've seen them a bunch, man. I went to go told, and uh, hang out with him. I don't know about the show, but you know what I mean? I was like, holy yeah. shit. He yeah, still gets it's... fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I remember King Valley said, uh... No, I had an opportunity yeah, to do a release, and I, and I regret not doing it, man. I should have done it. Wow. What, 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 how long ago was that? What, like, what, what era was it? Like, later? Probably, later like, on? 01, something 01, like that. Yeah, oh, probably. shit. Oh, yeah, shit. not a while. I wasn't even active. Like oh two, oh three, early on. Yeah, yep. but for me, my 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 label early on. Yeah, yeah. But he said uh, it was like a raw deal. He was like, you can only make a hundred copies, and we get fifty. <laughs> I, like, I can't fucking do that, man. Fuck that. I was like, I'd have to charge so much. I was like, I can't. But I should. have In retrospect, I should have fucking done it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I also gave Seth a bunch of recordings that I recorded on that Houston tour. And I was like, yo, can I put these out? And, like, you know, there was just one we kept honing in on, and it just never fucking happened, you know? I got a bunch of unreleased AC live stuff, man. It's actually some. Um, I, I, sh I should preface this, though. They used my Walkman to record a 7 inch and a, mm -hmm. a split live 7 inch with. So, like, I just didn't put them out. Psychomania put them out. Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, the, the unplugged and then also the AC live is uh, one side is in Houston. Yeah, and one yeah, and it says on there it says recorded with Roy's Walkman son. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, remember, I didn't go uh, with them to the unplugged party, but like that's what the thing is. Like I recorded this unplugged on Paul Ramirez's porch or whatever, and I was yeah. like. I didn't ask him to put that out, but like hindsight, it's like that's actually the fucking gem there, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, they ended up doing one, but it was another show, right? It, no, it was in someone's living room, so they just took the Walkman with them. Oh, okay. But they probably saw, did other ones in the future, you know? This I was, saw, yeah, they. I saw them live on Plugged at the Wetlands. Yeah. It was oh, a really? technical love tour. We were completely <laughs> like crazy. the thing is, like at the time, like the unplugged thing was a fucking big ass joke right. to all of us. So we're, well, like, yeah, it was a whole MTV thing, right? I'm like anal yeah. cunt unplugged on Paul's porch. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, Did you he's like, You tape that? And I was like, Yeah. You know? It's all on a tape too, so I just left the fucking Man. tape on. Fucking like, uh Tim Tim sent me a photo of it and I started laughing because you know that whole Seth and Chris Barnes thing? <laughs> Uh, there was a bunch of shit going yeah. on between them. Oh, yeah. Well, they actually played with Cannibal Corpse, and you can see it's like I think it's a picture of Seth and oh, Tim, and you can see you can see the Cannibal Corpse logo behind fucking Tim's drum set or whatever. It's like I thought that was pretty fucking hilarious, considering all the all the yeah. shit between that was that was said between Seth and Chris Barnes. Yeah. At, at the Unplugged Wetlands show, they came. Seth went around to the whole crowd with a bottle of wine. And he poured everybody a glass of wine. <laughs> 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 oh, 
And they gave everybody dude. cup coasters, cupcakes. That's hilarious. Remember uh, King Fowley? King Fowley. I guess King Fowley saw them after uh, after his coma or whatever. He's like, he said he came up to him. Seth came up to him. He goes, he goes, hey man, I never really liked your fucking band, but you're all right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I mean, that sounds like Seth. Yeah. I don't think they'll ever be one of those again. Or vice like, versa. That act. sounds like King too. Oh yeah, King. Act. King. King's a wild man and was a wild man himself, you know. King and his son, they keep it real a hundred hundred because oh, I, yeah, I was hanging with them and they they kept it a hundred. I was like, yo, Necrovore, and they're like, yo, fuck Necrovore. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so I, I actually respected them after that. I was like, Yeah. He's like, yo, I don't yeah, fuck them, man. Dude, uh King's son sent me uh, an original uh he got from his dad, obviously. He sent me an original that like, Kingdom Come demo that King got from, from, from fucking Trey or whatever. So yeah, yeah super cool. Super cool. He's just like his dad. Super cool. Fucking yeah, dude, we you know? played pool. We hung out when he got older. So like I was a soul seek trader with him on soul seek. Wait, so, like, did, did you get that autopsy shirt from him? Yeah, I got that autopsy shirt. That's from right. Him too. That's and right. Then, um, he was like on soul seek though. That's where I met him. And then yeah. um, we were like trading and he's like, yo, I'm King Fowley's son. I'm like, Oh shit. You know, that's cool. I was like, yeah, you know, I look at your fucking list. You like, you know, <laughs> yeah. you listen to a lot of that fucking, you know, warlock and shit. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, I usually call it. King Fowley heavy metal because there's some <laughs> shit that I don't know what the <laughs> fuck it is, dude. It's like, what is this? Come on, man. Yeah, I mean, I think it's cool that they like different stuff. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, no, no, it's cool, but I'm like, I, I, I don't know who fucking just this. like Chris Gamble. I mean, he likes a certain genre and style and. Uh, it's like it's very unique obviously you know i fuck with him i say you put a, a woman in front of a microphone he's automatically gonna fucking like it you know? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. that's yeah. fucked up <laughs> funny, i mean it's true he needs a good woman and then make a band out of it you know yeah, that would be dope. Chris rules, man. Yeah, oh, of course. Fuck yeah, dude. Chris motherfucking. Chris motherfucking gamble, dude. That dude, Yo, that Chris, dude fucking... You want to know? You want to know a little story that I could throw out there? Like, remember when yeah, we were yeah. talking about live bands winning your ass over? Yeah. James spoke about it. He's like, "Oh, I won't even fuck with a band until I see him live." Yeah. That was me, bro, and seeing Gorophobia basically. So, like, I saw them live before there was any kind of recordings or anything. And I yeah, actually cool. knew some of their fucking songs just from seeing them live alone. So that's yeah. that's some staying power yeah. shit right there. Uh, that's happened to me a couple times. Yeah, uh, that's not rare, that many times. That's fucking rare, man. Dude, when I was yeah. young, so many bands I used to see didn't have anything out. I would take a fucking yeah. like a tape recorder just to get those fucking songs on tape. You know, Same just so deal, I can hear. Yeah, not yeah. even that long ago. Like it used to be like poser shit to fucking like have a demo out before you played a show that was like rich kid yeah. shit that, that was like fucking <laughs> yeah. loser shit it's like you know but now it's like it's it's weird if i see a band that doesn't have something out i'm like fuck i don't know what they sound like what like yeah. it, you know this was just you know fucking 10 20 years ago it was like commonplace but now it's i don't know it's like completely fucking things like everybody's got a demo like a fucking yeah. professional like sick sounding fucking like record quality fucking recording yep. before they ever play their first gig Yep, mm. mastered. It happens. Fucking yeah, out. exactly. It yeah. happens. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that was one thing about the Gorephobia and Chris Gamble and Alex Books and, and and Craig Smilowski was in the band. Oh, so, so like, yeah, you fucking had, like, these guys were murdering it, dude. Yeah. You would leave there knowing the fucking organ donor, you know? Yeah. And then it's like, I didn't even know the name of the fucking song because they were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like <laughs> yeah, when you when you go home humming a riff or whatever, you know that's yeah. It was good, good song. shit, man. It was tight, you know? And yeah. then the shows were you know, like it felt interactive because like I was like fucking two feet away from the fucking band, you know. Dude, Carl's band Pius Levis did that for me, and that was a couple of years ago. I saw them, I never heard of them. I saw them play live. They were playing some show I went to. I was like, these dudes fucking kick ass man uh because they put they were just these old older metal guys had that fucking spikes and playing fucking necrovore riffs and shit and i was like yeah this, this shit rules they were fucking great live and they they sold me right then and there cool man yeah they kicked they kicked ass opening up for the chasm man they were fucking Pius leave us. yeah they're, they're fucking great but live band man great live band fuck yeah man 
I love live experience yeah, band first. Absolutely. The Agreed. only bands I got to experience recently live first for the first time was Force of Darkness and Concrete Winds. Oh yeah, Ooh, I remember yeah. you went to that show. Yeah, that was hard. Concrete man. Winds fucking rule, man. I never heard yeah, either band crazy. before. Too, right? I had not heard one fucking. I can imagine seeing that. that band live before I like like before hearing them. I bet that was fucking crazy. Like they're that's a wild fucking yeah, band. A fucking yeah, especially for, I liked Force of Darkness. I think that's a good band right there live. I've seen them live. Rule, was that man. Vitus Roy? Was that a yeah? It was that Vitus? Yeah, I remember that show came. That was yeah, that Durkata show, right? Durkata, yeah. Well, the Cruelty played that too, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I got there a little late though, because I'm Roy Fox, so. <laughs> yeah, you want to see a good line, right man? Oath of Cruelty, like I mean, just Oath of Cruelty finished. I was like, Ultra <laughs> Cruelty, yeah, they're really good live too. If anybody ever, yeah, I know they're yeah, my dude. friends and everything, but if you ever get to see Oath of Cruelty live, do it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. How come yeah. they're never on the J O A B A? Uh, well, Dave was actually me, Dave, and Ralph, and Ray did a show years, uh, fucking, it's been a long time, and I thought we were gonna yeah, keep doing it, but we never did. He's been no key, man. I gotta hit him up. Yeah, he's around. He's around. He's uh, the electrical man. Yeah, he's busy, and uh, but uh, Matt yeah. Hefner. Hefner has been on. No, he's never been on. He's just he. No, he's not one of them. One of I think, is Dave in Europe right now? Or am I imagining that? I think, uh, I think they yeah, just came back from Spain. Just, just came back. back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. JD's been playing drums with him. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. That's yeah, cool. did you play is that video? Did y'all see that video? Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. You've played not, not yet. a video recently, Dude. right? Like no, well, he JD put up like a uh, like a drum cam kind of video today. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. He posted it, right. Yeah. I think. Dude, I saw it, it is fucking uh, He's a monster, yeah, dude. Better. Yo, thank you for anyone that stuck into this fucking super long thing. I see people from <laughs> Europe rolling in because I know. Uh, good, good morning, morning Europe. Europe. <laughs> Fat Day to Black Meadow, great label and great distro. And this is like why this stream is even on, basically, because like I want people to talk about fucking underground, you know, Blood Harvest. Yeah, that's a badass label too, man. They put out yeah. the first uh, Blasphirian LP. Oh yeah, Blood Harvest, yeah. Yeah. Blood, what what was the, the label that guy ran before Blood Harvest? Regain, um, not regain. Re, oh. um, regain. Was it Regain? Records? Swedish dude. Swedish yeah. dude. I can't, oh, I'm having yeah. a brain fart. Re, uh, like another regain? label, yeah. It's like it was, Regain or something. Yeah, it was more it was like hardcore, like, grindcore focus. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it was like yeah. Regain Records or something. But I, I think it was about that last Dismember record, the last one they did before they. Oh shit! Up. I think it's the same. So made me look for that. <laughs> Pretty yeah, sure I got it. I used to trade with that guy all the fucking time, man. I got him yep. up. Yeah, they put hey, out Derek. my boy's band. This fucking sick Witch King LP, like so oh, good. You ever heard that band? Like, just, they they broke up, but they got back together playing again. They're fucking sick. Or Blood Don't Harvest. Don't have like a, a red cover with the like the devil yeah. from demon shit, dude. I heard that. That bitch is fucking bad. So good, dude. <laughs> it's shred. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're playing again. Re rewind back Ooh. to PLF, man. You got think about this for a minute. Dave has played. You, drummers are hard to fucking find, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Dave has played with three, like legit of best grind drummers I've ever heard, man. Frank, <laughs> sure. Brian, yeah, sure. and now JD. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. what the fuck? What luck, man. Holy well, it's Texas. Shit. Yeah. Why? Everyone's in well, Texas. That's yeah. why. I told JD. I mean, Brian. Brian is a machine, and this and that. He's a great drummer. Bad. But uh, watching JD play with him, it seemed more, more energetic. I guess because Brian is just very technical, and Brian, he's really good at it. Really good at it. Yeah. And Brian he's, makes it look effortless because he's just straight faced the whole fucking. Yeah, the whole he's time. Just, yeah. Well, he count, but, he counts his shit. Like, yeah. he, like all this stuff, and it's fucking crazy and weird, and that's why you just see him like staring off in his face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah. Fuck, dude. But uh, JD, JD fucking kicked ass, dude. With, with yeah, he's that. a machine, dude. JD's a yeah, machine. he's a great drummer, man. Really. And and what the, the what's crazy is, drums are his second instrument. Jeez, he's a guitar player first. I mean, you've heard that's him cool. fucking do those leads and shit. Oh, he's a shredder too. He's fucking solo. Yeah. Dude, yeah, he does all the solos yeah. and Hexaya and all this other shit. Well, that's like Dave Suzuki, bro. Dave Suzuki. Yeah. Oh, oh that he's a master yeah. of drums and fucking guitar, like just taking Vay Malmsteen and just 
move him the fuck over because the dude is is flawless. He's the most fucking amazing player I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, I saw. I think I saw Vital with when when he was in the band, but He's I don't still, know what he was. What did he do in Vital? Was he a guitar he player? Was, he was everything pretty much. Guitar player uh, and drummer. He drummed. He, Maybe played, I... he, he drummed on the albums. Played guitar. Did he drum albums. live? Did he? Oh, okay. Uh, he didn't play. In the beginning, in the beginning, he did, and then he went to. <laughs> Cause I think I saw them with him. I think about who they play with. They toured with. Fuck! It must have been early two thousands. Maybe was he in the band already? Yeah, yeah. Late nineties. He came in like ninety seven or something. Man, I saw. I saw them play at Cardi's one time, man, and that was a long ass time ago. Then I saw them again play at the engine room here in Houston. Yeah. And, yeah. The first time I remember, cause I didn't, I wasn't drinking. I did smoke a lot of pot. The second time <laughs> I. Yeah, well, that was a bit blurry, but uh, yeah. but Derek, dude, I, I, I love the shit out of this fucking band, Church oh, Burner. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, yeah, all right, Um, that Thanks. Cult Nation sh- uh, thing y'all did got me into y'all, man, and Sick, dude. that right shit was on. heavy as fuck, dude. Oh, man, Suzuki's that's... in that, right? Yeah, yeah. that was yeah, the first one that, that too, I did with them. That was the first. I, I did those oh, really? bass tracks in like an hour. It was like. This yeah, dude was so like, fast. Uh, like, it was, like, the fastest studio time I've ever, like, it was, like, <laughs> this dude could type, and he was an engineer on the boards, like, so fast. You never see anything like it. He's done a lot yeah. of records. Like, he does a lot of records, this dude out here, Seth Manchester. Um, mm. He does a lot of shit. You know, yeah, he's done records. He's got he's definitely hurt, you know. Um, but he's the fastest. He's so fast. It's, like hard to keep up with it. <laughs> well, we all you know, want to so. know who the fuck it is, dude, so yeah, we can so go there. I go in there, and he's like, are you ready? Oh, there's a chicken tuna. <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got fucking one, one headphone on, and just had to hurry up. <laughs> and like, I, I didn't did, even I did use the, the whole bathroom thing yet. in like an hour. And I was like, what? Wow. Fucking, it like was done. You know, fucking whole LP in an hour on bass. Mixed track. and mastered. Yeah. He's like, come on, well, Derek, I can, I can do this in 10 minutes. You can do it yeah, in fucking... Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty fucking crazy, but it was, that was a good record. It was cool. That was the first one I ever did with them. You know what I liked about Dave Suzuki? When he played the show, he just took his fucking guitar case and he just threw it in the fucking crowd. It was open. It was just like, fuck you guys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was just fucking brutal. But it's just crazy yeah, that... watching drum and then it's like, what the fuck, you know? You, know, you just you think about how great he is a guitar. Murders it. And you just watch the drum, it. and that's the end. Well, you know who else is good on fucking drums is Roger, artisan. Hey, Roger, yeah, yeah. yeah. Roger. Oh, Roger murders it. I told Roger send me an ad. He's like, if I remember. <laughs> I've seen, I seen Roger drum for a malignancy, man. Yeah, Crazy. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I remember I saw one of the times Mortician came through. He was on drums. I was like, holy shit, dude! He's like, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? I don't know, Roger yeah, played drums. Dude, it's more than the it's drums exactly. with Raj and more the guitar, the riffs, everything, the drum machine, because he's the drum machine there too, obviously. Oh shit. Yeah, and so Yeah, you know, he is. He's fucking like beyond all that shit, he's a fucking wizard, basically. Yeah. So I mean he the shit that comes out of his mouth is just like so fucking far beyond sometimes. Like he talked about Bandcamp seriously before Bandcamp was fucking like five years before Bandcamp existed. So it was, it was like was weird. Cool. Yeah, it was weird to fucking hear that, and then you think about it in hindsight, and you're like, "Holy fuck, dude! This guy was yeah. way ahead of his thought t- thoughts yeah. and time." <laughs> you know, Roger. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. And then, as far as like drum playing, yeah, like I bought all his drums, so I have the whole fucking Mortician set here. It toured with Skinless and Mortician two times through the U.S. and the 15 too, Passenger. Right? Huh? What you yeah, have is only two, right? Which one? Uh, Roger's guitar, don't you have one? I have uh, Will's practice bass. So it's not, oh, I don't know if it was his old bass or what. It might have been like an geez. early mortician bass. Hey, hey Ralph, what, what, was, what was the last time you ran into Will? Um, oh, no, a, few, a few days ago. Oh, you did? Oh, oh shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Not long ago. He He's good. They played. They played at Vitus. And uh, we did a trade right before that. I went, went right up to his house. But he still, you live in the same town still, right? Still? Yeah, yeah. Still mm-hmm. No shit. Wow. Yep. Fucking will. Yeah, I live yeah, like I 10 minutes away from him. Yeah, yeah fucking, uh, cool. Ralph, Ralph is, a, I mean, Yonkers is fucking underground metal fucking yeah. metal, dude. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Fucking Dan Luker? Well, not anymore, but... Immolation? Immolation? Yeah. No. Will? Haunted oh, Hotel? Yeah. Haunted Hotel happy to be now. From my, uh, it's another carny. A city that's <laughs> produced a lot of good shit, man. Definitely. Yeah, dude. I yeah, think so, sure. man. Yeah. Is there some other, like, non-metal shit that we don't know about? Did you, see, oh, did just... you guys see that? Hmm? that What's that? that? There's a news article like posted about Dan Lilker. Oh, he retired. Yeah, he was. And yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah. shop, and he's like, yeah, man, I'm just jamming out here working now. Like, I was like, oh shit, you know? That's funny. Yeah, he lives in Rochester, lives in Rochester yeah. now. Yeah, that's crazy, man. See Dude, that? working for a, an a optical company or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's, it's pretty fucking cool. Hey, good for him, man. You know, it's good to have health insurance, man. Shit. Dude, I, I, you, I, I, you need it. You know? I bitch about winters here, man, but fuck that shit, man. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Rochester's a fucking imagine. crazy. Yeah, it yeah. It's horrible Holy where we shit. live up here. Crapchester? Is that what they call it? Crapchester? Yes. Or I don't even know. I just know the yeah, weather. Well, there. West New York's ass. another planet, dude. That 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 shit is fucking crazy. It's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. Right? It's warm out you get here, the dude. Canadian it's fucking it's Mounties coming through with dogs with <laughs> fucking things on their um, Yeah, you know? it's it's fucking like it hasn't even been snow. That's you know the dog snowing, with the alcohol like, on his neck? You know? Yeah. You probably might see one of those the same, outside. The St. Bernard? Bernard? Yeah. Well, is it? Uh, Wes, are you? <laughs> Save uh, your life. Aren't Michigan? Are, are you in Michigan, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming? No, I, I'm in North Carolina, actually. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, man. Down south, yeah. Oh, are you okay. on the coast, Wes? How far are you from the ocean? Oh. Yeah, here Hello? Hey, okay. Sorry, I lost you guys for a second. Shit. Oh, How far are you from the ocean? Oh, uh, like two and a half, three hours. Oh, like so me, 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 me and Derek are going to be underwater in a fucking year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, it's right down the street. I can look at Dude, the this shit, this weather's been working. <laughs> it's flooding so much out here, man. It's fucking That wild. was weird. Wasn't that I mean, I guess year? I live like right near the lake. I guess I, I assume you're probably talking about the beach, but I mean, I'm like sort of like in the mountains, like. Like I'm probably fucking thirty minutes from the lake, like yeah, yeah, thirty five minutes from the mountains. It's like all right there. Like in New York and like the tri-state area, like the water table is like really fucking high, basically. So like, dude, we're fucked. Yeah, it's like it's really <laughs> fucked, basically. The wasn't whole it last year? Was fucked. Was it last year that massive flood? Dude, it's a like a massive flood ago. every other week now. Yeah, that's man. what I'm saying. Oh, like, fuck. The water table there is completely fucking fucked. <laughs> So, yeah, you're fucked when you live there. Dude, you Derek live is on Rhode Island. That shit's going to be For sure. Well, you know what's fucked up is it's like it feels like spring still. Like, yeah, it, mm. dude, it's fucking it's weird, always man. warm out. Was. Like, there's, there's no what? snow. Like, we well, got cold here in Texas. We got cold it's here. It's never been Good. like that out here, like this long, you know? Usually, dude, there was insects out today. It's yeah, December 30th. There's fucking flies. Yep. Yeah, that doesn't make it's nice around New York. <laughs> it's like forty. It's forty here in, in fucking Texas, right? Now. It's probably warm here. It's forty here. Yeah, it's like forty here. <laughs> I wish That's I had crazy. a 40. <laughs> in Texas, guys. Crazy. It's fucking cold over here, man. It's 40 degrees. Good, you uh, deserve we're gonna, it. We pay, we're going to pay for it, man. It's not yeah. good. Yeah, it usually has a blowback of 15 inch sure. and 30 yep. inch snows. Dude, Whatever. I up. wish it was snow, dude. Snow we can handle. Uh, fucking it's floods really. we can't. Thank you for tuning in for a thousand hours. Yeah, the lemon rules. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. This is like nothing compared to your early streams. Those we, we, we've had fucking twelve like hours. Like how the fuck? Well, oh, I Roy, put Roy's got twenty-four hours, man. Yeah, twenty-four hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like stream to stream on the internet, dude. Right there. I mean, I think yeah, right. those lo-fi beats got me beat out, but um, yeah. Lo-fi beats. <laughs> boom boom. No, I did one very long, but I I ducked out of it for like four hours myself. Uh, uh, some four hours is your longest. That's your longest? No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I beat my record. It was, it was. I was on so long that I literally left for fucking three or four hours to go do shit while other people <laughs> stayed on the stream. Dude, that's great. I, I catch up with these things at work, man. I'm like, yo, this yeah. shit took me a week to listen to. <laughs> yeah, holy yeah. shit! Yeah, that's yeah. cool though. Because I gotta pause, go back. I can't do it all at once, you know. Oh, no, you know, go through a shift, come back. Yeah, pick it up where you left hey, off. Yeah, yeah, but I appreciate it, man. Keep it coming, man. So yeah. yeah. It, I mean, I, I, I think Roy will agree. Well, I usually say, man, okay, I'm going to be on here for an hour and a half, two hours tops, and two then hours. it turn, turns into no, like three right. and a half hours. And I'm like, Fuck. Everything's two hours for me. I'm like, two hours and I'm out. 
No, never, never. <laughs> and then it went to three, and I was like, "All right, three's what." It's up to an extra, to an extra two hours. So in there, two hours. So in yeah. there, like yeah. twelve okay, hours man, later. Let's, let's just go into the new year, man. Fuck it. <laughs> I'll leave it on. Right go to sleep if you guys want to keep going. <laughs> Fuck. New Year's edition, mega stream. I've actually thought about like just leaving it on, like. Right. With nothing happening, see if anybody <laughs> ever just comes by. Like, just leave it. Just leave it on. Everybody yeah. leaves and just leave my camera on and see if Come anybody goes, comes in. Talks in the chat. Yeah, Good night. I just saw this thing the other day. There's this hotel in Japan where like you can stay for free, but the catch is that you have to like sleep in a room that's just fucking live streamed. And mm, evidently, oh, there's like all these people that just like like watching people fucking just like exist and sleep yeah. and like you're, you're live stream the entire time you're in there or whatever i'll do that shit you want to yeah. watch me snore no problem yeah <laughs> yeah no shit or you're there just with do a, like 88 streams opponent. that are like 30 seconds long like somebody in the chat uh hey ralph can you can you uh can you pick up your left leg or something you know some yeah. weird shit i like that Man. I could do that. You know, if people are watching you sleep, they'll be like, hey, uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean, oh, if, if it was Japan. All right. I was like, all right, bro. You, you, you. I'm not going to kink shame you, but all right. Yeah. I mean, it's 2024, man. Fuck. Bro, it's, it's all good. If we could take it that long, I would, but I couldn't. Fuck that. <laughs> I'll leave the camera on and just shut it the fuck off and then yeah. listen to my life if you wanted to. But yeah. but no, I was saying the oh, people that watch people sleep, that's just that's I don't know, that's a, it's a bit yeah, much. Creepy, dude. Yeah, that's fucking creepy, yeah. fucking weird. Yo. That's a Holy weird stream. Shit. You could stay what, there free though. What if you get a boner though? Like, <laughs> I know. You know, like, hey. everybody, gets, everybody, everybody, yeah. everybody sees that fucking morning fucking wood and. <laughs> yeah, it's like how close are the cams? You know, is it just a room of fucking people? Do I get away, a is it close? You get a blanket. blanket. <laughs> just sleep on the floor. Good, you might man. get another baby mama or something. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yo, Japan's expensive, man. <laughs> yeah. Also, don't I'm not fuck with that yen. Also, yeah. don't yeah, you Japanese. Sleep. Don't they have like little sleeper stations near, like, say, like in the roadway? Or, uh, I mean, the subway or whatever, where they have like just a little fucking room you could just go in and fucking sleep and shit. Really? Yeah. Doesn't J Japan has those uh the capsule hotels? You ever seen? Yeah. Those? Like, yeah. The fuck? I've seen them? I've seen them. Yeah. What's that? What's that? Like, you literally over. like stay like. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like um, it's like a shelf. You stay yeah. in a shelf, basically. Yeah, you like shut the thing down as a button, yeah. button control. It's like a shelf with a it's little door. like where <laughs> Robo lived. Todd? Robo lived? It's about on decline of Western civilization? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a Wait, didn't they do that on Seinfeld like where Kramer puts those Asian people in like the, the drawers or some shit like that? Remember that episode? It's kind of like that. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, and then it has like a timer on it, and every one yep. of them has a TV in it too. Yeah, and little with TV. internet yeah. internet access or whatever. So it's like, damn, that's so fucking bogged out. I wish I, like, in a weird way, like I wish they did have those in America, because it would be like, you know what, fuck this fucking trip. I'm going over there to. Yeah, it's cheap. It's like relax. it's like twenty <laughs> yeah. bucks a night or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Why the fuck not? I'd right? be like, yeah. yo, I'm going over there to fucking relax for a yeah. few hours, and then we move along. Huh. Smart, interesting, yeah, yeah. smart technology. That's why man. they live so long there, you know. They Maybe know you two not all of them for that yeah. sake, at least. Well, no, it was fucked up, man. I was watching this documentary about like the whole, you know, uh, bombings in World War II, and every single Japanese person they interviewed on this thing, you look at they had their name and their age on the bottom of the screen, and not one of them was any younger than like 98, and they're like talking like we are. All wow. motive, fucking up walking around, fucking haircut, like. Yes, yeah, statistically, like, they have the longest life expectancy over there. Yeah, yeah. dude. I'm yeah. like, I saw this one dude who's 98 years old. He's talking like fucking. He looked like he was 60. The way so he was fucking cool. nuts. So radiation helps you live longer. I yeah. guess so, man. <laughs> Fuck it, you know. Yeah, crazy. I think it's the pre-radiation. Yeah. They just have I think it's the diet. I think it's you know they, yeah, they eat the good food. Yeah, they eat well. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. I, I remember. Well. Um, I agree. I I had unholy grave stay with me years and years ago. And they're like, 
all right, it's time to eat. Like, what do you want to eat? And, you know, most bands just say whatever, fast food, whatever. They're like, no, take me to the fucking grocery store. And they right. bought healthy shit. They didn't buy no garbage. They bought, right. like, fish, yep. salad. They didn't fucking eat any garbage at all the whole time right. I was with them. They, what, good. they ate good. Amazing. Yeah. They only went to grocery stores. That's wow. smart, though. They knew. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's. I mean, so I, I think that has them. a lot to do with it. For yeah, sure. I think so, too. Yeah. I always, I've always thought that about that culture, you know? It's a yeah. cool fucking culture. I wish I could get to experience it at some points in my life, you know. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd oh, like to go too, there before I'm gone, at least once, you know. For yeah, sure. I wish it was yeah. so expensive. Fuck man. that! I would like to go and live over there for a little while. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, a, lot, a lot of a lot of people here do it. I mean, a lot of Americans go over there. They stay. Yeah. Oh yeah. They don't come back. Oh, they don't come back. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's Isn't a, like a twenty-hour fucking flight to Japan. Yeah. It's yeah. All worth all worth it. Yeah. I don't know, man. No, nah, it's on the bucket list. That's for sure, man. Yeah, I want to go too. Yeah, the day trip Italy. show thing is alluring to me because it would give me something to do during the day. Yeah, go to Beharit, dude. Go fucking last week. But then Beharit. I would have to change my schedule because I usually yeah, work yeah. during the day. You know? we, we need like ten grand. That's like a ten grand weekend right there. Yeah, <laughs> like, they got some, <laughs> some of the dude. Some of the shows they have over there are those lineups are amazing. I, you can't really see these bands are still playing, dude. It's amazing. Uh, I just want to go over uh, and see Gauls. That's one of my favorite fucking bands. Is oh, Gauls. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Gauls. I really? Seeing them in fucking Japan was like a bucket list thing. And then when you know when they oh, broke sorry. up a couple years ago, yep. like, yes, 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 hell yeah, dude. Gauls yeah, rules. Damn. Uh, JD says the shows over there are early and over early in Japan. Like mm-hmm. all the shows will be over by like six or something. Weird. Wow. Crazy. I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm crazy. Sure. Yeah, that yeah, sounds like my shit, shit right there. Nah, exactly. I'm with Roy, man. Keep those shows late, man. Yeah, it seems obscene if you're not there as like a whole fucking. Well, see, the only thing man. I don't like about early shows is if like they're in a, a city away from you and like rush hour traffic. So mm. you basically got to like take a day off just to see the mm. show. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, yeah. Early and shit. Yeah. Five o'clock. Door start at five o'clock. You're not even gonna get like to the next city in time for the show. You're gonna miss. That's why I'm not at the show for early. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I like the fact that they're early for time's sake, but like not for convenience. You know what I mean? Shout out the rules. Shout out the rules. Show that again, Ralph. Yeah, is that going? Okay. Equalizing, cool. equalizing this story. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Sick, Classic. Man. Never seen that. That was just person. that was recently reissued, I think. Okay. Yeah, these are reissues. These are reissues. I'm not gonna front like I got OG copies. <laughs> Hey, I gotta go piss. I'll be back. You got the record. Oh, okay, it's yeah, dude. Gauze rules. Yeah, Gauze yeah. does rule, man. The yeah, guys from Pain Eater had that. told me about them years ago. <laughs> That's hilarious. Fucking Slimer. Yeah, they just were right behind me. I played Zentrex Ghostbusters on the show the other day. I thought that that's such a horrible. Oh song. shit! I got the I got the tape. I got that on tape. <laughs> such a horrible cover. It's dude. bad. Metal Forces, yeah, bad. Yeah, that is bad. Yo, know, Metal Forces had us fucking brainwashed to think that Zentrix and fucking Yes and Rain <laughs> were good. Is that like a, like the worst metal bands ever? Comp Zentrix, Malaya Rage, more Malaya Rage. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, like Galactic Cowboys. Wasn't Galactic Cowboys one of those bands or something like that? Probably Uncle Slam. Oh, Uncle Slam, yeah. What's uh, that? Rat oh, Child America. Rat Child that's one of them. Yeah. Bring that back up, brother. Is that right? Wait, but that that was before. Oh, I was gonna say, had they added the America yet? Oh, the I guess. American. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were Rat Child first. Yeah. Wow. Rat child scatterbrain. Yeah. yeah, the drummer ended up going and playing fucking Godsmack or whatever. Right? What? Really? Yeah. So you know, like all the like big like radio hit records or whatever. Ooh, yeah, that was just like mind, of fame. Mind fuck. Ugh. Mordred, Mordred too. Oh, Mordred, yeah, they brought in the turntables. Woo. Their demo was brutal. Really? Yeah, really? Venner, was it like Venner thrash played it for me. Was it, was it... Yeah, Venner played it for me. It was thrash. Yeah, there's yeah, fucking it blew away, on a fucking comp right there. It definitely a blew fucking away. fucking weird comp. It's like a metal comp, but it's got like fucking Poly Shore, Iron Maiden, <laughs> fucking <laughs> Creator, wow. Motorhead, that like a, fucking Suicidal. Holy that's Shore. A, that's a sick comp. Oh, it's because it's it, Epic Records. That's why. It's a major yeah, it's just, Epic this fucking weird. Yeah. yeah, you were talking about samplers earlier. There's a yep, fucking yep. 
That's like major label sampler. Bands, like My that was funk, like baby. aggression. Uh, how will I laugh tomorrow? Well, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. 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 That, that time. Those are the ones that you can get through uh, through uh, uh, all those tapes. Yeah. Were the ones that you had in Columbia House. Yeah, those yeah. were all the tapes, all the epic tapes you could get them in Atlantic shit like that. They're like get down with the funk or get out. Yeah, dude. fucking. Mordred, just horrendous shit. Oh, the demo absolutely. was good. The demo was good. Just... I saw them play like one of the first bands I seen like out here. You know, I was a kid, and I, and I, I even knew it like I even knew it sucked. Like I, you know, and I was like just getting into bands. You know, I was like this is not good. Right. <laughs> like, you, had it. you had yeah. ears. You knew it sucked. Yeah. We had our version of that too. It was like in a weird way. You like it later because it sucked, but like first order from uh, New York or somewhere. They would play like all the Lamore shows if Biohazard yeah. didn't play, or like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was yeah. like First Order would play, and they were just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, a thrash, like a thrash band of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. plenty of terrible bands that like all those labels try to like capitalize on like popular thrash bands or whatever. Well, Metal so it's like. Metal Forces, yeah, Metal Forces, oh, yeah. Kerrang, and those magazines definitely did. And you only realize yeah. that like years later. I mean, yeah, it's like you buy something, like, ah, yep. this sucks. Yeah. Oh, God. It was like, or uh, you were just confined to one page of the magazine. Did you ever remember right? a band called Matthias Steel? <laughs> no. It was around that time. <laughs> but they're like from here, but they were on a major label, like kind of around the Man of War thing, you know, like. So they had mm-hmm. a little reunion show, and they roll up with these little tiny fucking, like, crate practice amps, dude. And they plug them in on stage. And I was just like, I can't believe this is even happening. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, there's plenty, there's plenty, plenty of terrible, like, like especially like late 80s thrash was just oh, like, yeah. when like death metal was was uh, fairly new, you know? And uh, all these thrash bands were still trying to hang on and doing their... Uh, Throw some turntables in there. Well, that and like <laughs> some, uh, I always laugh because a lot of them try to put like these surf type things in there. Like, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Surf, surf and MOD, Surf yeah, Nicaragua. Surf Nicaragua. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Suicidal has some surf song. Uh, yep. And, and also, they like, the, they did crappy covers, real shitty covers. Yeah. Fucking, yeah, there's the dichotomy right there. Fucking, oh, there yeah. you go. I, I, mean, I, love, I love Join the Army. Join the Army rules. Yeah, Join the Army rules. Both of those I, I can fucking I throw hate, on it. I hate admitting it, but I like the Art of Revolution, man. You guys can crucify Dude. me all you want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it. I don't know. I don't Banger. know necessarily. Banger. It's a, Banger. All right. Never heard it. Never heard or, it. Or those, 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 no, no, don't, 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 don't bother. But it, it, <laughs> it, it, it's, well, um, those bands also did, uh, they did like instru- shitty instrumentals, like a uh, uh, 30, remember Sacred Reich had that 31 Flavors song or whatever, and, uh, mm. Uh, who else? That yeah, just shitty it fucking turned me instrumental. Off on nuclear assault when they did like a Led Zeppelin cover or yeah, something. I was I like, know. no, just uh, no. Wait, when did they do a Led Zeppelin cover? I think what was that? It was on like the second a... album, wasn't it? Like, Later, yeah, during one of the. Like, oh, oh well, they did Good Times, Bad Times, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Like oh, that was like way later though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that was on fucking Survive. Why? <laughs> I mean, Survive had a couple of good songs. It is. So, no, I, that I, song I, was hard. I mean, yeah, there's some good, there's some good songs on that album. Yo, yo, Roy. Yeah. Did you see this got bootlegged? I did actually. Yeah, oh, yeah. I would like to have yo, a copy. I it's did fun, see it. I like it's that. Out, it's out in the wild. Are you, you selling those or anything? No, nah, I, 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 I want for myself, man. Yeah, I wonder what it is. There's part of what you're fucking talking You know talking that's about one of my favorites. Yeah, 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 me too, man. Demo D right there. Crazy. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, Francisco's yeah. record of the week. Yeah, right. I, they used to sell it like the old department stores. They used to no, sell the other one. Shirt. The Surf and MOD. Oh, the Surf and MOD. Yeah, yeah. Like one, I want to yeah, get that. Like, Oh yeah, it's fucking crazy. urban discipline right there. That's a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, you know. the second Biohazard demo that one talks about, or whatever it is, the Master yeah. Race. Not that one. That's the, the one that's self-titled. Building. Yeah, the uh, it's like Actually, a three-song industry about... demo. Yep. They would play it on WSOU in New Jersey, so like we knew the songs, and we taped them just those songs, and we're like, "Yo, these aren't on the demo," you know. 
What's that? There was one other station in Jersey. What was the what the, that band used to play? Uh, um, I mean, the I used to pick. Was, I used to be able to pick it up. I can't. Oh, uh, 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 it was the. Uh, uh, this uh, is right fuck, what was it? Right AOD has a recording off of it. There you yeah, go. Yeah. That's what you need, right? But I got it. I got it. Oh hell yeah! yeah There's the fucking right. the first uh, fucking yeah yeah. Yeah, fucking... was at the re- release party for that and the shows that led up to it. it was sick. Yeah. For, fucking, you know, I had a really you got good this one. They were on everything. Oh, yeah. oh, I do, I do. It, it, it's right here in my fucking reach. I just yo, I fucking... threw it out. <laughs> no, no, no. I gave it to my boy Jeff. Actually, he wanted it. He's like, that's gonna be worth money. That's uh, you. Yeah, that's a very cruel thing to give your friend. Dude, for yeah. sure. Well, he I said, put it up there like Rodney Dangerfield, fucking like. It's a he said at the yeah. time, he said, that's going to be worth some fucking chrome mags. I got some fucking chrome mags. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah that... Imagine some Murphy's that Law. That Murphy's some Law was definitely uh, shit. taken oh, back. Oh, I had to grab it, dude. Oh, Hell yeah, oh that's a record. That's it's a reissue, but I had hey, to Ralph, grab it, dude. You talking about WFMU? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah WFMU. Was that like yeah, a that's... color variant? Some kind of color variant of that? Yeah, it's red. red. Red vinyl. That's cool. That's pretty cool. That's a great fucking album, dude. Old it school. Time. Age of Coral? Age of Coral? Wow. Yeah, Age of yep. Coral. Yeah, I man. got the censored sleeve. That was one of the first records I ever paid over like fucking sixty dollars for. That's yeah, that's the fucking That's a great album. I had a great I couldn't resist. Yeah. I mean that part I'm gonna grab that right up myself. That's a classic right there with fucking yeah. rain and blood, basically. Fucking North Carolina, so this was my fucking like thrash. Oh, like, dude, and, still see, yeah, dude. Yeah, 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 th- this one right here, like that's my favorite yeah. fucking COC record, actually. Yeah, dude. yeah, that eye for an eye, I love. Yeah, I'm an eye for an eye guy now, but I heard him on maybe Technocracy. Or or maybe a little after that. Yep. I just found. That's I just found a copy of uh, that's the demos, demos or whatever. Right? Before yeah, the yeah, horror, that's a right? killer one, man. Yeah, that's, that's a killer shit, fucking too. release, dude. I've yeah, listened yeah. to that multiple last times. Dude, that fucking uh, show Show No Mercy by Chromax. Yeah, that song makes me want to just fucking destroy yeah. everything in sight. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a, that's that's, a, that, that's an OG. Nice. Oh yeah. yeah. And oh, hey, six songs with Mike singing, dude. Well, that yeah. fucking out. Uh, that fucking EP. Yeah, Ooh. A, yeah. I got to see. I got to see the last John Joseph Holly Flanagan show that they ever did. I saw it twice. It was huh. like a two day fest with like breakdown playing one day and Bad Brains the next. No shit. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then oh. again in Worcester was Bad Brains Pro Mags again. What a fucking bunch of dummies! Get it together, yeah, dude! Like, I know it. Fucking it's crazy. Make it work. They had just gotten their name back from Madonna. Bad Brains didn't have their name because Madonna the had Maverick or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, they were called shit. Soul Brains forever, and then they just got their name back, and they did a Chromax reunion thing at that time. To like, I Soul mean, all the Chromax guys are still around, you know, Par- uh, yeah. Paris. And- yeah, they just don't get along. They, they just, don't get along at all. Yep. They fight over that. the name, basically. Yeah. They fucking fight each other. It's like, I'm yeah. Chromax. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's that, too. Drama. Yeah. Yep, there's like two. There was two. Now there's just one. Interesting. I mean, I'm... So the uh, the Chromax jam is no longer around now? I guess not. Yeah, it's like, over? like they hardly brought him to court and won. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a fucking... Put a plug on it. There's like a JM or something. Yeah, they're going to call it Mackie and John Joseph. Yeah. Or something. Uh, yeah. Yeah, John and, and Maggie, then, uh, yeah. Dude took him to court and fucking, that was it. They had to stop it. Snow White and Seven. Oh, that was a bad Uncle Uncle Slam. Slam. Those Uncle are Slam. sad Ooh. moments in fucking Thrash, brother. That was cool. <laughs> Snow White. Very sad. <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. I think there was like what a I was trying to say part. earlier, remember? Remember back in the days, like with Metal Forces, there'd be like one fucking page in there or something that would have like the demolition or whatever? That's kind of where, like, all the juice was extracted, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It would yeah. just be one fucking page in the whole fucking magazine, dude. The rest of the magazine would fucking yeah. suck, dude, yeah. you know? Yeah. Acid rain. Acid rain. I don't think I ever heard acid rain, and I, I'm sure I'm better for it. I think I you're a better man for it. I bought it and was super disappointed. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, pretty disappointing stuff. There was some bad ones. Actually, that, that was my first DRI album was Definition. Really? Was it? Yeah. Okay. And seeing that video, Acid Rain, make me like DRI. And then I heard uh, the, the Dirty Rotten LP. And I was like, oh, man, this is cooler than the, the Definition <laughs> album. <laughs> right. That's cool that you found it that fast. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Dude, DRI, I saw them play like 10, 15 years ago up in Peekskill at this little fucking hole in the wall. There was like a little, little, little fucking spot. Dude, they played over two hours in this yeah, fucking played. hole in the wall. I was yeah. shocked, man. I was it's like, a long time. holy shit. Nice. They can still haul ass too, though. They were yeah. good. They were great. But two fucking hours, man. Was yeah, they, they got their, uh, they got their third drummer back again. Uh, what's his name? Rob? He's in the right. band again. Rob Rampy. I mean, yeah, no, look, I guess feel it. Uh, Felix was the shit. Uh, I like when bands play their whole fucking discography live. That's that, better. Dude, that's exactly what they fucking do. It was relent. It was crazy. <laughs> it's like, hey, hours. don't ask us for any songs because we're gonna play every one of them. All right, yeah. so yeah, yeah, you got your money's worth. That's for sure, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they got to see him once at MDF, and I was working there, so I was like, "Fuck it." Uh, they weren't playing really two hours there. That's fully. Sure. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, they yeah. always play. They were entertaining uh, as fuck, though. Yeah, they're, they're a good live band, dude. It was nice to just see them once because yeah, I've been a fan since fucking like 1986 or yeah, some crazy yeah, shit. 87, I know. Yeah, long dude, time. Dude, I, 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 I went to a garage sale when I was in. This is the 90s, and um, this lady was selling records for 25 cents, and I, I pull out ACDC Fly on the Wall. Hell yeah. I'm like, oh shit, 25 cents. I'll take it. I get it home. I pull the vinyl out. It was DR, but in the in the sleeve was DRI dirt, Dirty Rotten LP. Oh wow! Oh, shit. Yeah. That's cool. So wow. So I need I need a vinyl for Fly on the Wall, and I need a cover for uh, Dirty Rotten. <laughs> <shit. Yeah. laughs> Somebody had some good taste at that fucking garage sale. Yeah, ACDC right. and DRI. Fuck yeah. yeah. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for t- still staying tuned in. It's almost like the same amount of fucking people as it fucking started. Yeah. Well, everybody went to sleep in America and woke up in Europe. Yeah, I yeah. mean, some of my boys, like my boy Philippe is in here. Um, he did an old fanzine. Uh, I saw nice. COC and Crypto Slaughter oh, near cool. Antwerp. So, yeah. yeah that's cool. Oh, oh right hey, hey I- Iron Pegasus is still around? I'm not sure. Well, because I had I had made a I had made a post about about your show or whatever, and somebody put Iron Pegasus uh, for the label that had for label of the year. Really, I didn't know they still around. I don't so, either. I, I think the only person who probably would know about that would probably be Cookie Man. Cookie deals with those guys here. And yeah, there. he used to get some stuff from them, like some vinyls and CDs from Iron Pegasus. Yeah, they had good stuff, man. Yeah, they had cool shit, dude. They put out a. Uh, they put out disaster stuff. They put out uh, Hades Archer too, right? In the uh, Force of Darkness. Oh, that I don't know. I, I I remember them like when they. I guess they started like what was it, mid to late nineties, maybe when Iron Pegasus started, or late nineties. Volker. It was that guy Costas. Oh, Costas. No, that's yeah. a different label. Don't make don't make me get up and look, man. I don't want to get up. And Are you look. talking about Merciless? Oh, you're talking about Iron Pegasus. No, Iron Pegasus. Iron Pegasus. Oh, okay. I'm thinking of Merciless. Costas did that zine. Uh, can't remember what it was called. Side. <coughs> yeah, I like that. Very sick. Your boy here. I saw DRI with Uncle Slim. <laughs> What's up, Richard Santos? It's Talk old. about a fucking mixed show there. Yeah, we went from like talking about 2023 to like talking about, <laughs> but it's oh, all no. good, you know. It happens. It happens. Yeah, it's it, it, review. it happens. No, stop, stop. I remember when I was a little kid, I used to see ads for like Uncle Sam and Metal Maniacs and shit, dude. And I was just yeah. like, "This is a cool cover." And then now I heard, finally heard it, and I was like, "Dude, this is fucking horrible, man." <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, dude. Like, yeah. I don't think I got lured in by that one. I got lured in by something that was junk. I forget what it was. I think it was Grim Reaper that was the first one, I remember. 
That was definitely like I thought. Yeah. I was like, oh shit. See you in hell, my friend. Yeah, I was like, fuck, man. Grim Reaper, dude. Yeah. And then yeah. I got it. I was like, what the fuck? Is, is he boarded? I know a lot of people like him. I never yeah. liked that band. I wasn't, I was never into them either. There was another one, too, though. You know, I just can't fucking remember. What was the label that was putting all that shit out? Uh, all like that Uncle Slam and all that shit? Steam Hammer? No, hey, it was it? It was a Relentless. Caroline? Restless. Restless, right? Restless. 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 Yeah. Had an R, it was all tw- like yeah. twisted up. And shit. Yeah, it was Restless. Restless. Ah. There you go. Restless. Restless. That's not see you in hell, though. Is that the other one? This is Rock You to Hell. This is Rock You. Yo, look at that cover, though. So, like, for me at that time. Yeah, I'd be, I'd do it. I would have got sucked in, too. Yeah. That shit's sick, though. I mean, it was still, it was the tape, too. So, I even thought it was good on the tape. Nah, the the art's sick, dude. I I would definitely got sucked right in, too. Yeah. I did, obviously. uh... Oh. Hey like Ralph, do you ever buy anything about... just because it's metal? Yeah. Who? Yeah. What? Like things oh. that you never heard, and you're just like fuck it. All the time, yeah, yeah. Especially if it's cheap. Okay. <laughs> That's now. Back then, yeah, of course. Like you, you, you just fell for things all the time, man. It, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. I think a lot of shit from back then that wasn't that good that like stayed around and got popular. It's just because people spend money on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's just because like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, I spent $10 on this. I'm going to give this more than one spin and let it grow on me. You know, yeah. I'm not going to let it just go to the yeah. side. Never you thought know? about that. I mean, yeah, I kind well, of felt like that with uh, Riot. I never really liked them before, and then it grew on me. And now, like, I, I can fucking love listening to Riot now, you know? You guys ever, like, Fate's Warning? Really. But, like, if you, if you heard Riot now, like, and you checked them out online for the first time ever, yep. you'd never fucking give them a second chance. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But back sure. then, like, oh, I, I spent money on this. Let me give it a few spins, and it grows on you. Yeah, and then you eventually start liking it. I think a lot of stuff that was kind of like mediocre from back then, yeah, really got in people's heads and blew up because just because people spent money on it. Yeah, yeah. that could be true, yeah. man. I never thought about that because they yeah, spent the full so. they spent the full ten dollar value instead of well, like just probably a even more. Man. Probably probably even more back then, you know. Yeah, and not like tape back dollar. then was at least twelve bucks, ten bucks. Yeah, yeah. 15, yeah. 15, was it eleven ninety eight or something? They had right. on the you know the ten ninety nine. Exactly, man. You know, you know, you know what got me first into buying demos though? It, I always wanted to leave the place with more than one thing. So, like, if the tapes were 10 bucks, I would look behind the counter for the other tapes. And they'd be like, oh, there's two $5 ones over there. So I would buy the fucking two $5 tapes. I would do the same shit. I was definitely a quantity over quality. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Massive sturdy plastic seeds to come. Like, they were like, oh, God. They were like a foot long. This yeah. security plastic. And, and the oh, tapes were stuck. Yeah, I mean, you, could, you could pop the tape out of those fucking <laughs> easy. Bro, back in, my, uh, back in my discount days, yeah. I, would, I would take the whole thing and just <laughs> bash the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Yeah, I, literally yeah, leave the wall. I go right in the fucking staircase. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So it broke. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can you can fucking uh, snap the tapes out of there pretty easy. Those long oh, fucking. Could. We could. Yeah, I yeah. never stole anything, so I don't know what that Feel, means. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, uh, me either. I haven't led a perfect life. I'll admit it, but you know, yeah, hey, yeah, I'm not, I'm not faulting which, you anymore. Which one of you has? Yeah, yeah no. exactly. I think it was like innocent uh, at that time, like you know. Sure, I mean, no, I you it. wanted that I, fucking. I shit. did it for the love of metal, dude. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not saying I didn't steal from the place that had no security tag. I mean, I would just buy it and take the security case and break it for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> just just for the next home, guy. Man. That's for the yeah. I was giving it a better hold. Giving it to the <laughs> next <laughs> man. <laughs> I was saying, nobody gets into the shit we're into because they're well adjusted fucking no, yeah, yeah, exactly. people. No, <laughs> no, never, dude. Yeah. Or never. And you know, also heard? running the streets, like I never was home. Like I was constantly never. at record stores. Never and fucking home, poster dude. stores and at dollar bins and fucking digging in the crates and just like really fucking weird 
you know, bicycle fucking ramps. And, my, you know what I mean? My wife always makes fun of me because it's like, how did you never see that movie? How did you never see this? How did you never see this? I was like, I was never home. Literally, I was never fucking home. I was yeah. out. Yeah. 20 hours a day, man. Out. Never home. Yeah. Wait, what are you going to do at home? Yeah, Sleep. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Just eat the but food. No, yeah, dude. We used, to, we used to take shit. Yeah. Well, there's no, there's no podcast to sit on all night. Right. <laughs> there's no good <laughs> one. Like Dude, no, I, I got yeah. uh, I got so confident in our fucking five finger discounting that I would get like VHS tape sometimes. You know what I yeah. mean? So, oh yeah. So fucking confident I got at one point. Mm. Like <laughs> oh fucking uh, collection. ACDC <laughs> ACDC Let There Be Rock VHS. Yeah, I'll fuck. Mm. Uh, it's mine. No. <laughs> it's when, mine. When, uh, when you guys get a big buzzer and you can yes, black the one, yes, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, that's the one. It's, it's, it's in like super nice shape too. That's the one. That's the one, dude. Yeah. I stole that. Nice. Great fucking tape. That shit rules, dude. When when oh, fucking uh, looks mint, brother. One of my faves. That's oh, the one I, I I I took that from a record store. That's the one my parents would love. There you go, that's so deep. That's one of my fucking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was at that <laughs> show. It was yeah. at the Ritz. Yeah. Is that the one where Billy Milano dives off that fucking PA stack? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the show. Yeah. I think it was what like Agnostic that? Front and fucking... Morbid Angel. So D and... Was it? Yeah. <laughs> it was the stupidest fucking lineup there ever was. I think Dan Loker helped hook it up, actually. Because he just chose three it? fucking bands. And it was SOD, Morbid Angel, and fucking Agnostic Front. Yeah. Oh, that was a Pusshead artwork, wasn't it, on that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that rules. In the drawing of, they call. I don't know why they called it live at Budokan instead of live at the Ritz. Yeah, they. they I don't know. Are they cheap trick fans? I don't know. Yeah, yeah probably a joke. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of live, a lot, a lot of classic live albums are in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Until they start being in Hawaii because of death uh, head split. <laughs> That's gonna be the new mecca for fucking live in Hawaii shit. Oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> Head rot live in Hawaii. Live in Molokai where the leprosy people are. <laughs> yeah. Death to all live. The Hawaii. fucking uh, yeah. dog, the bounty hunter, is gonna be there working security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Is he moving there? That guy. Is he moving to Hawaii? He is in Hawaii. Yeah, I think that's where he lives, right? He is Hawaii. He's yeah. there permanently. Yeah. Oh, well, that... Wait, there's oh, no, a very it... important comment to hear here. Unleashed in the East is the best live album of all time. I mean, I would it's a good definitely album. put it's it right. Killer. I don't know. It, I mean, pretty damn close to that's fucking good. one, two, three. I mean, Iron Maiden, Maiden Japan. I fucking love that. Even though the official release is like. A few songs or whatever, but there's that yeah, one bootleg. Like, there's there's no that bootleg with like a whole set. I think what beats it is the Slayer live at Donimo, obviously. No, I mean, that's the greatest thing ever fucking presented to mankind, right? Yeah. You could argue No Sleep Till Hammersmith, too. You know, like. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, too, you know, with that era, you know? That's it, dude. I fucking love it. Love that album. I have that. I have that artwork on a T-shirt, dude. Yeah, it's pretty dope, dude. First press, dude. Nice. So good. Yeah. Dude, remember man, tomorrow is to like fake like five times tapes. faster. I mean, I love uh, Deep yeah. Purple's Made in Japan too. Fucking great yeah. album. Classic. Scorpios, Scorpions, Tokyo Killer Tape. Yep. Also yeah. in Japan. Yep. Is that Budokan too? Probably the Tokyo Tapes one. Mm. Probably, yeah, I think so. Uh, and, uh, worldwide live from Scorpions for yeah, me, yeah. and live after death. Live oh, after yeah, death, live of course. Death. Yeah, that's really up there too. Uh, you know what's funny? What that, that that Maiden record is actually my son's. The one oh, time he was fucking digging, he bought a fucking first press <laughs> Maiden uh, dope record, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good choice. I got one. I line remember around. eyeballing the tapes of that stuff, and they had like a song called like Charlotte the Harlot or something. Or oh, some that's a fucking song. one of the best main songs, songs ever. I didn't, but it wasn't on the record or whatever. And I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And maybe it was a different song title, but yeah, it was just so it had a song on the tape that wasn't on the record. So I was like, "What is this?" You know? 
Yeah. There's very few records or releases where the bonus shit's on the tape. Yeah. Not many. No. Especially when CDs came out. Yeah, well, CDs would get all the extra songs because they could fit them. Yeah. You know, tape, yeah. unless you had like an extended play. You know, um, some of the tapes, you'd see the X thing on the label and they would yeah. have bonus tracks because it was extended. The only thing I could think of the top of my head is. Uh, you know, digital underground, you know, uh, sex packets. The tape, <laughs> the, the tape has is. all the bonus shit. Yeah, the CD and vinyl don't. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that yeah. Been yeah it's fucking crazy. Like a 120 minute tape. Yeah, it's a long ass tape. Yeah. 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 Huh. yeah. It's like a 90 minute tape. I have to cop that. Yeah, track yeah. that down. Mm-hmm. down. And it's good. Crazy. I still fuck with tapes on the regular, so. My Spotify list at the end of the year, it had all rock and hip hop in it only. I don't so have like, one. Basically, I was busy in the Burger King bathroom. <laughs> so basically, all it had was rap on it, and like all my shit that I listen to that's metal is like fucking cassettes and records and tapes. That's it. So there wasn't no death metal in there. Not that I didn't listen to Pestilence and a couple other things digitally on there. I think I listened to Bandcamp more than I listened to Spotify. Because it was more like honed in on like, oh, these fucking bands, you know? Yeah. I uh, I was listening to a few like Houston rap things a couple weeks ago. Uh, just songs, not entire albums. Uh, Fat Pat. You guys familiar with Fat Pat from I've Houston? Heard no. Uh, I've heard of him. Uh, he had a, yeah, him and then a uh, Devin the Dude, you guys familiar with Devin the Dude? Screw, yeah, I know Devin the Dude. Yeah, nice. Devin the Dude, yeah, DJ Screw, yeah, Houston. DJ Screw. Uh, De- Devin the no. Dude's got that album cover where he's taking a shit reading the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a trip, dude. Yeah, he's 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 he's, he's, he's kind of like uh he's like a just pot smoking chill dude that just. No, there was this fucking dude I was tattooing the other day, and he smoked crack <coughs> days in Providence. The Three fuck? days. Took him to a hotel. He was walking down the street. His DMX, and he was—he wasn't like into hip hop, you know. He was just like a junkie or whatever. You know? He's clean now. So he's mad cool. But like he was like an addict. And uh, DMX was walking out of his show, and he was like, "Yo, you know, I get any drugs and shit." He was like, "Yeah, I know you get drugs." And he ended up buying, bringing him to a hotel and and, and smoked fucking coke with him for three days straight. DMX. Yeah, D- DMX never got clean, man. He—he's Yonkers royalty, man. D- dude, <laughs> dude. It's fucking crazy. DMX. Would like you see DMX of, out on the street? Uh, just out of curiosity. Yeah. Yo, but that, that, that's what I'm getting. The, like, yeah. like his last like year or two alive, he was hanging out at this fucking like shithole bar on Warburton Avenue. It's like, dude, we could have just walked in there at any time and hung out with DMX. We just had no clue he was there. <laughs> he was there the entire fucking time. We had no yeah. clue. We had well, no Ralph, clue. Ralph, Ralph used to run into Africa Bombada and shit. Dude. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. Right. 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 DMX with yeah. a haunted hotel record contract. I wish. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, He's like, like, maybe look at the crack you want. Wait, did you say you were? Did you say you were putting out a hip hop tape, Ralph? I did a oh. few. I've done three so far. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. That's great. The, yeah. um, the Metal Gear Solid type looking. Yeah, that was a, the J Skis. Yeah, the J Skis. That should look cool. Dude, I want to check it out. Man. Actually, it's good if you if you if you like good rap music. Check it out, man. It's on, it's on my Bandcamp. You can listen to it. Oh, right, I cool. want to listen to it. Yeah, well, you, you're getting. Yeah, them, I said right? send oh, the Roy tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you'll get them just wait for that. Yep. The and then I, I did like another one. Consume one more them. tape by this dude, um, Ferris Blusa from uh, New Orleans. Mm. Cool man. <laughs> That's a cool as man. Yeah, bust out of the box. <laughs> yep. You got to do with what moves you, and if you don't release what moves you, then don't even fucking bother releasing shit, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, man. I want to put out stuff I like. Me too. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, man. Stay yeah, man. Yourself, you know. And anyone watching this too, like if you're friends with a death metal band or a rap band or a rock band or a fucking, you know, a fucking lady who plays kazoo, <laughs> is anything gonna make a demo? <laughs> you know, or support them in some way? You know, photos and repost and help. I mean, you know, and anything could be a demo, dude. Put out their shit. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, I never thought I'd make it happen, but uh, 2023, there's no rules, man. The rules are out the window, you know, and everyone's just working with everybody, you know, so. Yeah, that's helpful, too, you know, yeah. like a, building up like a union of like people just helping each other, you know. I yeah. think, like, back to Spotify, I think there's pros and cons with it, but I think the younger generation getting into music via streaming they're listening to lots of other shit that they normally wouldn't be exposed to because they're kind of getting into things on their own. They're not, they don't have like an MTV, MTV forcing shit down their throat. They're kind of left to their own devices. Yeah, right, right, right. So, so they're, they're checking out shit from, you know, all over the fucking genre palette. You know, they're, they're well, checking they're, yeah, the similar the artist section at the bottom of their page is like the equivalent to our fucking like liner notes or like right, right, exactly. t-shirts right. and a fucking you know, band's promo picture right. or whatever. Like they find something and then scroll down to the bottom and it's like, here's eight fucking things that you might yep. like that are at least on the same trip. Mm. Yep. Yeah. It's there's a, that so, and yeah. there's the random play on there too. Yeah. yeah the radio station something. Well, and the trip with the rent, because I don't, I don't pay for it. So the only, I use Spotify. Like if I put something on there, I check it constantly to see, okay, did it get uploaded yet? Did it get uploaded yet? Let me keep, so I can let the band say, hey, it's streaming, it's up. And then I, it'll take me into the random. But then hmm. the random is totally fucked up. It's, it doesn't give me like anything close to. Uh, it what, plays smoke on the water. <laughs> it plays great crazier shit than that man it goes okay. way off the rails so okay. well, dude, that's the that it, it, what, it probably plays stuff that uh gets a lot of hits oh, right. because yeah. i've noticed on youtube dude like if i'm watching like a certain video and if i look down at the next video because you know you can see what's going to play next after this video is over like, let's say i'm watching some comedian or whatever not a very well-known comedian and I look, I'll click down and I see the next video is like some massive yeah. comedian. So the first thing that it's going to play, it's like, no wonder these fucking people get, you know, 500,000 views in, in like a week yeah. or whatever. Because if somebody just lets our YouTube run, it's going to automatically go to that next video that's yeah. up next. And yeah. it's always, it's always something that's some huge thing. And I was oh, like, well, nice. that's fucking, that's fucking weird. Yeah. You know that that you know that that's what they're doing, because it's not gonna go like e even if I'm playing, or like even if it's some just some random fucking stand up comic guy and he's doing his set, it's always gonna go to something like uh, I don't know Bill Burr or some somebody massive. You know yeah, what Shane I mean? Gillis. So, well, Shane Gillis rules. I mean, I, I love Shane Gillis, uh, or like Burt Kreischer. That guy fucking sucks, yeah. uh, <laughs> but. Yeah. But it, it, it's always his shit. Like, and I didn't mention it because I, I didn't know how many of you guys were familiar with the stand up thing or whatever. But uh, it's always his videos that are like next all the time. I was like, what the fuck's going on? You know, why why is that? Or is it because they have a lot of views and YouTube's doing that on their own? Or are they paying for both. that to happen? Probably both. Yeah. I, agree. I think so. I think they pay, yep. and and YouTube says they got a lot of fucking hits, so they're like, you're going to watch this next, because we're making yeah. money off this every fucking time, dude. Yeah, that's, 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 that fucking sucks, dude. You should have sponsored. Yeah. I've got I mean, one video that hit the fucking algorithm on my channel, and that's it. And it's, <laughs> and it's still fucking growing right now. It's got it's up to, like, almost 80,000 views. Uh, it was Mike and Tim just fucking around playing like an old ac song right and people are commenting on that that have no idea what that what that even is because it just hit yeah the algorithm hit it's, it's out there now yeah, that thing's gonna get a hundred thousand yeah. like soon it's that's in the great stories and shit dude i I, mean, I, I, I guess but i mean i'm not I getting did. anything I right. get a table. Well, least, you, know, you know might get some people to check out you know something yeah maybe i did a table in bolt in uh boston years ago and uh Mike and Tim were at the show and they're fucking browsing through my shit. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm pinching myself. I'm like, yo, the, I'm not here <laughs> unless I heard you two guys. Right. And I, I was like, what? And now you guys are browsing and buying. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. What a yeah. fucking weird moment that was. Like they, they are the direct connection. 
Yeah, they're that fuck, like, yeah, yeah. Me getting into this. That's yeah. cool. Well, and and like, I, like, like I always say, if you stick around and you don't go anywhere, cool shit's going to happen. Yeah, that is the absolute yeah. truest course. shit ever spoken, dude. If you stick it out, cool shit happens. That's cool shit happens, happens, dude. Yep. Cool shit happens. Yep. It's fucking it just that's what it is. Uh, I mean, I never thought, speaking of Tim, I never thought I'd be fucking texting him about Tommy Boy 30 fucking something years ago. <laughs> You know, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. what the fuck? Or like talking to Steve-O of Impetigo about baseball in 2023. You know, it's like, it's fucking nuts, dude. You don't think about that shit when you. It's like everybody yeah, that's on that tape, everybody that's on that tape album that you bought when you're a kid is like, they're unreachable when yeah. when you when you when you're looking at it, and it's like, right. yeah, it's like what the fuck, dude? This is this is just weird. But yeah, if you just stick around and. Yeah, you know, if you, and that was like the, the trippiest thing was when like I see Fred Estabi like oh I'm doing your sound, yeah, yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, Wait, yeah. You're like yeah. fuck yeah, he's like oh is that the sound? I'm like what the fuck are you asking me for? You know, it was like crazy cool, like yeah, that's exactly. Insane. That that's fucking wild, right? I mean, yeah, that was I never thought I'd movie. see. I never that's thought cool. I'd meet. I'd never meet Mantis and Abaddon playing in a small club in Houston. Yeah. In 20, 2019 or whatever, I mean, never. Yeah. It's just I was like, dude, Mantis is literally right. I could fucking poke him right now if I wanted to. That's how close yeah. he was. It's like, yeah. it's just yeah, just stick around, and cool shit is gonna happen, man. It, it will. Yeah, man. it will. I mean, you gotta go places too, a little, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, but yeah, you got to keep at it. You got to keep doing shit. But I'm just saying, yeah, it, it, it ain't, it ain't gonna come to you. You got to come at it. You got to go out and get it. You got to yeah, a little it. bit. Yeah. But I mean, but yeah, but the fact but that it's gonna that, happen, like you know, it'll happen if, like, say, you really like some particular recording artist or something. Like, there's a pretty fucking good chance in a small world that you will fucking run down them. Dude, one of the weirdest things ever is. I slept on Scott Peterson from Cryptic Slaughter's couch. What Jeez. the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never thought of that when you were listening well, to... What's whenever, that I, whenever I first like heard Low Life, Low Life, when I first heard Low Life on that fucking compilation tape with like Sodom and, and Celtic Frost, I, I would have never guessed that fucking 30-something years later I'd be sleeping on that dude's couch. What the fuck, man? It's just... Yeah, it's a small fucking world, dude. Weird, dude. Fucking weird. Go twelve hours. No, no, no. no. Oh, we're, we're almost done. <laughs> yeah, I'm about, about, I'm, about, I'm about to get out of here. Yeah, I'm about, I'm about to get out of here, man. It's late. Yo. Yeah, I gotta go to a football game tomorrow, dude. Yeah. All right. I think the beginning episode, like the beginning of this episode, probably encompassed like what the show was about. So if you want, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just checking out the very end. Go back mm. to the beginning, and uh, uh, shout out to Jeff Aid for uh, showing up. Uh, Brian from Noxious Ruin. Also, uh, who else was on here earlier? Evan. James, James from James uh, from Transylvania. Transylvania. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron um, Evan Williams, the, 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 the Evan, the, the the UK guy. What was his yeah, name? Jake's Metal Chat. Jake's Metal okay. Chat. So thank you for everybody for tuning in. Thank you Nick for Ron. you guys. Uh, Wes. Yeah. Wes. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me. Hey, nice to meet you guys, man. I, I, I never, I, I mean, I know, I, I don't know if I've been messing with you or, or yeah, Brian call, on, but, you know, never, yeah, anything yeah, that's like cool, this. So, Dude, Wait, thanks Wes, for coming before, on, man. That was Wes, cool do that... you still have any more of those vomit breath tapes? Uh, so <laughs> I ended up with like, I think I've got like two cassettes with no covers. Ooh. But uh, the everything's like sold. Yeah, yeah, Fuck. that one. I wish I would have done more of that, but. You know, it uh, it, it was a slow burn, but but it did end up. Yeah, great, great going. band, dude. Yeah, well, Sam's got that some new band. stuff coming this year that we're releasing. I heard it, dude. It's dope, dude. Sam, Sam, Sammy's a good dude, man. Sammy's a good yeah. dude, man. What do you Just have? Put a that, uh, label put that cassette. Ruin? Do I? Oh yeah. Are you in a I, band? Or are you in a separate label from Noxious Ruin? As you're talking about. Oh, who released that vomit, bro? Oh, uh, Noxus Ruin released it. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Vomit Breath, oh, we, we released you were it. Marga. Mar- Marga did that cover. Yeah, that artwork. Yeah, Marga did did that, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hey, if you can send me pictures of that, me and my five-year-old kid can do something with some crayons and 
Walker. Hell yeah. For sure. Ralph, I got you, baby. I got you, Ralph. <laughs> Ralph, he got he'll you, bro. Like, come, he'll be like it. Yeah, I'll take what I can get, man. Hey, no, Ralph, he got Ralph you, you, man. Can get, you can get the cassette with no cover and put it in that ACDC. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yo, Ralph, <laughs> limited, bro. <laughs> One are you talking about uh, anything, anything are left, you doing right? that brundle fly uh yeah yeah so i talked to him i think he's going to record some more shit in february so i'm going to do like a, a double session thing like put that that session on uh on one side and put his new session on the other i've been talking to him about that so yeah sam, sam can do no wrong dude that that guy's <laughs> got the magic touch Cool. Yeah, man, everything he's done, the liquid putrefaction yeah. shit, the li- liquefied cadaver ooze, the fucking profane ruination, anything he does is fucking top yeah, notch. We, we, I put a CD out by uh, Your Kids on Fire, a band he was in. Oh, yeah, I got yeah. a couple of those. Those are fucking, yeah, cool, that's, cool, those rule, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's killer shit, dude, yep. Cool, Thanks. man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Didn't, didn't mean to hold up the, uh, the sign off, man. I just wanted to. See, no, no, I, no. I, the thing is, like, I want to spread the information on here. So, like, if anybody else has anything they want to shout out or anything, Francisco has a show coming. We're gonna out. show on Monday. I might yeah. do something tomorrow, like a year end kind of thing, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I wasn't even gonna do this when I after I set it up. I was like, fuck that. Shit. Yeah, that. Tune into that on Monday, seven o'clock oh, Texas yeah. time. Yeah. John yeah. McEntee's fucking playlist. Playlist, yeah. So he's supposed Thank to. Sit you. In- Cannibal Cam that sent in the video and Chris sent in the video and then joined us. So that was cool too, man. Oh yeah. Your video was cool, dude. And then thank you for the people that chatted because you said a lot of bu- bugged out fucking bands ah. and cool labels and all that bullshit. So we're signing out from Death Metal Podcast. Oh, yeah. You guys. Oh, Later. Yeah. Later. Later. Fucking shit.